right. It is Thursday night, which means that we have League of Legends coming your way. We are heading in to the postseason here. We had a bit of a switch of schedules. If you're following on Twitter, you already know what's up. But our first match of the night will be the Jackson Jets sitting at 1-5, going up against the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees, sitting at 3-4 and four in seventh place, one spot above the bottom of qualification for playoffs. Into the picks and bands right away here, folks. Thresh and Aurelia off the board, followed up by the Swain. Man, we did see some Swain last week for what I think was the first time on stream. Very exciting stuff. You're just joining us. Hey, we appreciate you being on time. I know, I know if you're in chat right now, you had that bell rung. You were ready. You had the notifications turned on as Vayne does go off the table as well. Just want to say, if you're in chat right now, look at the... Oh, look, look at the new graphics. Oh, oh. Oh my goodness! Look at absolutely fierce out here. The professionalism is off the roof. Show me, show me the, the collegiate conference that does it the same for esports. You can't do it. You can't find it. As we you see, Sue won't Malphite also taken off the table. Uh, two two co pieces of that wombo combo that we saw try to be assembled a few times last week by a few different teams. Set will be selected with the first pick. I love that so much. We've been talking so much about week to week here the flexibility and early picks that these schools have really shown it's been very impressive uh throughout if i'm going to be completely honest just the amount of ways they're able to maneuver and line up their picks has been so great to see at this level graves is selected great performance out of the jungler multiple multiple occasions on this graves we've seen the necc and it lets you play with your adc slot a little bit in my mind uh you have someone who can dish out the damage from a range zone not uh, it's a marksman, you know, uh, but can fill that role. Doesn't have the attack speed, obviously is um, decapacitated by the reloading on the bolts. You do see Brand locked in, so a whole lot of that damage coming out there. I have a sneaky suspicion that's going to be going support, but could be seeing that head into the mid lane for the Jets. Pantheon is picked up, so we've got some bruisers here for the fighting Bees, they do pick up that Cinder as well. Control Mage in the back line. I really like what they're doing right now. Going to see what this bot lane's looking like.
<laughs> Hold on. All right. We're back. Am I live right away? <laughs> we are back, Chad. I appreciate you keeping it warm in here for me. Uh, <laughs> You know, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes Discord's going to do what Discord wants to do. I don't know how much time the analysis got through there. Hey, yo, dog, I appreciate the Fox Chips in chat, all right? I appreciate it. Um, yeah, as, as I was talking about, I don't know where I got cut off. At, so we're just going to restart the whole thing there. Just going to hit that quick restart button. I think SAU's composition off rip does look like the one that's much easier to execute. There's so many go buttons, left, right, and center, that they can do that are easy to execute, right? Uh, we're talking about a Mumu, Bandage Toss, Curse of Semani, boom! That's it. I said Sad Money. I meant to say Sad Mummy, but you know what? Es essentially the same. Uh, you've got Set. There's so many tools there. Face Breaker. You talk about Showstopper's ultimate ability. Very easy to get through. Ash, Landing Arrow. Boom. That's your go button. So there's so many things you can do. Not even mentioning uh, Syndra, the CC coming through. There's just so, so much. Pa Pantheon, right? Um, there's so many go buttons for SAU that really Jackson has to be on their heels at all points of time because at any given moment... They can hop in, they can engage, and they just have to find the damage to follow up, and it's going to be game over in those team fights. Mm. Matty Ice at the Graves being a marksman. I think if you go in to champions and like sort by marksman, I think Graves is on the marksman list. That's why I gotta say the marksman, you know? <laughs> uh, there's a few other odd choices in there. Like, I think Lux is officially listed to support. There's just some odd, there's some oddities uh, where the meta does not necessarily line up with where champions were initially released to play. Because Graves ADC used to be fine uh, before the whole reworking, before they took away my boy Cigar. Um, but yeah, set top lane, Amumu, Syndra, everything going exactly where we thought it really would. The only question here is, will be the brand, will be the Lux in the mid lane, will be the Lux in the mid lane sending that brand to the bot lane. And I actually have some very mixed feelings about this because it feels like in the bot lane, um, you want your more reliable CC. Brand is the opposite of that, right? Lux has hit Lux has one ability that can CC multiple targets with that light stare. Uh, Brand CC is dependent on you hitting an ability first. It's not just like click it, let's go. It's, okay, let me hit my Pillar of Flame, and then maybe I can land my Q and we can get something going here. But it's not guaranteed with that. Lux CC is absolutely guaranteed no matter what. So, that, that's that's kind of iffy for me. I'm excited to see the AP damage that these, this, these two mages can bring to the table. But I would much prefer the Lux support rather than the brand support. If we're just talking about if these two could have been flipped around. Just because the reliability of CC is so, so important in my mind um, that, that you need it. You absolutely do need it. Uh, however, with that said, uh, Jin can also CC off of, like, the Pillar of Flame if, if Trent can land that first one on the brand. So, there that is kind of a backup. You could say, ah, oh, well, we have an ADC that a CC built into the kit, but... I'm telling you, it just feels so much better when your support can do it all, bringing down the CC. Going on the other side, looking at that bot lane, the Pantheon Ash, I really, really enjoy it. It feels very strong in many stages of the game. That Pantheon can be an absolute bully early on, especially if you can get a kill under your belt right away, get some gold under your belt right away, get a little something in the back pocket, build an item. That Pantheon will be an absolute bully. You can just walk toward the enemy bot lane, and there's not much they can do about it, especially... If you can sidestep that brand CC, because if you miss it, uh, there's nothing else in the kit, right? Because you have to invest two abilities into getting that lockdown. So if they sidestep the Q after you have E, which is a point and click, cool, fine, you literally can't miss. Or after they've hit the Pillar of Flame, they've invested two abilities into not slowing you down at all. And it's just not going to work out unless they have like a Rylai's or something of, of that nature built. But... Outside of that, it just really feels like, in my mind, Lux is the champ I would be wanting in the bot lane. No, keep, keep, just keep my tabs on chat. All right, all right. I, I, we see chat. Seeing see the people got banned out. I like it. I like it. Uh, we're just going to go roll by roll here. Compare teams starting off with SAU, the fighting 
Bees in the top lane. We do have Set going up against Yo Yo Dog. Uh, playing Sai on the top lane. I, I like Set a lot in this matchup. Set is so much more dynamic. Just so much more can be done on this set. So that's exactly where I am going with that one. I mean, not saying the sign can't do anything, but you can definitely stack up that HP from sign and be a threat late game. But set's kit is just so much more dynamic than Scions. Every stage of the game, toss it over to set. A Mumu going up against Graves there in the jungle. Nate Mac playing Starbucks. I really enjoy the Graves. Um, a Mumu solid. As we said, it's, it's easy to get going. But once again, I'm looking at who can be more dynamic on their champion. Amumu may be able to start fights easier, but Graves is someone who can end fights easier. So that's that's exactly where I'm looking. Graves can pour out the damage, can gank so well, can just be absolutely dominant. Amumu's relying on the teammates. Sure, you can hit a nice bandage toss into a curse of the sand mummy, but it's not going to matter if the rest of the team doesn't roll up with the damage. Graves brings it all themselves. Plus, we have seen Starbucks play Graves before. Very solid. Moving down the list, Syndra taking on Lux. Battle of the Control Mages in the mid lane. I like Peckles in this one. On the Cinder, the CC, the damage coming through all of it. But this one is the biggest toss-up, in my mind, out of the solo lanes between the two. I really think Seth's going to take it handily. But Cinder Lux, bit of a toss-up, I think. Uh, if, if Lux can keep the distance, might have no problem with the lane, with the, with the Binding of Lights. But... If Cinder gets in range uh, and just drops payload, there's nothing that you can do. Lux has almost no innate resistances. I mean, you have the shield, but there's not much that's going to be done. Down to the bot lane, Ash Pantheon taking on Jin and Bran. An interesting cast of characters in the bot lane. I really like the Ash Pantheon over the course of the game. However, this Jin Bran combo, if they get going, can be absolutely deadly. There's so much damage potential between those two champions that if they get going, if they get that first blood, if they get up and farm, it will get ugly in a hurry. As I said, give, give the advantage to Ash Pantheon, but if uh, Mr. Spraco and Trent can get that first blood, get something going, uh, do not be surprised to see them turn into an absolute wrecking ball of a lane. Hmm. Mm. Thank you to all 28 people in chat. We very much appreciate you guys being here. So much good stuff happening here on the NECC. We've got esports action, esports coverage five days a week. There has been a postseason schedule, I believe, posted on Twitter, so you can go check that out. But usually in the regular season, uh, it's five days a week. It's going to be a little different with the postseason coming up, but we've got everything from Madden to Valorant to League of Legends to Rocket League to Overwatch being played. So much stuff going on. Uh, the NECC is powered by is powered. Woo! Is powered by HyperX, who sent me this this nice new pair of headphones. So let's let's HyperX. Snap, snap, snap. Uh, sponsored by HyperX. No matter who you are, how you play, we're all gamers. And by ESTV, the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities. I have loaded into game here. We are going to do a little customary pause at five seconds. So once we do get there, we will be resuming uh, just to make sure just to make sure that everything is synced up. You know, we're going to wait on our directors sitting back here. The people behind the scenes make it get done. And like I said, the people behind the scenes who make it get done. Look at the new graphics. Oh, they look so good. They look so fresh. They look so clean. Very excited to get this game underway. If you're just joining us, we got the Jackson Jets sitting at 1-5 and five in ninth place. And the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees sitting at 3-4 and four in seventh place. Top eight teams in the Champions Division do make the playoffs. Fighting Bees fighting for their lives here. Uh, very excited to get this one rolling. Are we uh, are we good to go? All right, we're having we're having some video issues, so we just appreciate everyone in chat sticking around with us, staying patient. We promise this game will be on the way here in short order. Very excited. Of course, we are here in League of Legends patch 10.22. Seraphine dropped recently. Actually, was that yesterday? Oh. Um, he will not be in the lobby. Mm. 
Hmm, don't think so. You may be able to reconnect to the same match, but I'm not 100% certain. I don't... My gut reaction would be to say... <laughs> oh, this is difficult. Absolutely. I'm still paused to five seconds. Oh, <laughs> I definitely thought we were not live chat for a minute there. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, it would not be an esports production if it wasn't a little bit of scuff. Um, I also appreciate no one in no. I was like, is this, is this dude? Um, I totally thought uh, we were not live for a minute there, chat, but... Appreciate you guys sticking with us during the technical difficulties. Uh, if you're just joining us, we've got the Jackson Jets at one and five, taking on the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees at three and four, in ninth and seventh place respectively. The top eight teams do make the playoffs here in the Champions Division. So the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees fighting for their playoff lives. Playoffs getting under here very shortly, and I think we're ready to go here. Both paused at five seconds, so we're gonna get in in three. Two, one, and go! We have some League of Legends here. On the left-hand side of your screen, on the blue side, will be the SAU Fighting Bees led by It's Nico TV, Nate Max 17, Peckles, Al Beezy, and Balloon Pants on the right-hand side of this. Representing the red team will be the Jackson Jets. And they are led out by Yo-Yo Dog in the top lane, playing Scion Starbucks in the jungle, Jinxon, in the mid lane, Mr. Spareko in the bot lane alongside Trent. Very excited to get this one going. Let me know in chat who you do think will walk away the big winners in this one. As we do see SAU pathing aggressively here early on. They're five manning bot lane. And the bot jungle, excuse me, balloon pants looking for some CCP in the Spareko. They will drop the ward over the wall. Counter ward is dropped. Just getting some information. Doesn't look like either team is going to make much of this early action right now. Just going to fall back to their respective buffs. So all of that smoke, but there's no fire uh, early on. Both just going to disperse as said. Back to their respective sides of the jungle. It's Nico TV running to the top lane. Uh, I'm surprised Yo Yo Dog didn't try to cross the river there and drop a ward just for visibility sake. You know, you know you have the free time. You have the set spotted out on the bottom side of the map. There's no reason to not go for it there, but they won't do it. Graves starting on the top side of their jungle, and Nate Mac will be starting on the bot side of their own jungle. So opposite clearing paths right here to start. Keep an eye on that as Peckles does get a little bit of poke here in on the mid lane. Gonna keep an eye on this one. As I said, this feels like the bigger toss-up between the two solo lanes. I fully expect it's Nico TV to put in some work on Yo-Yo Dog in the top lane. That set is just so dynamic compared to the Scion that Yo-Yo Dog would pile in. And Jinx is gonna take a little bit more damage there from Peckles. Trent and Spareko trying to push this wave. They are the aggressors early on. Looking for them to hit level two first, which is absolutely massive when you're playing that brand. We talked a lot about the very conditional CC that brand brings to the table. How I probably prefer the Lux in the bot lane as they do hit level two there first. See if they can bully under tower. But now, 
that Brand has much more of the kit available, right? You can start to combo off, chain those abilities together. Action CC is the other side will hit level two now. So SAU catching up in the bot lane, only trailing one CS down there. Jinx continues to take some damage in the mid lane. Peckles managing the way very well. You notice the positioning right there. And the positioning is what we talked about what would determine this toss-up of a matchup. If Jinxon can keep the range, we see some damage dropped in the bot lane. Nate Mac, will they catch it in time? Looks like they will. Starbucks may be in a whole lot of trouble here. Nate Mac pursuing is a level down, though. It's Dico TV flashing over the wall here at level two. Peckles, the cleanup crew. I didn't know it was garbage pickup day. Peckles, first blood, stumbles into a free one in the river. And that is how it will get going for SAU. The Fighting Bees now have the ball rolling. And Peckles runs right back in the middle and says, hey, watch out. I've already been bullying. I've now got a kill under my belt. You better put some respect on my name. We do see Trent and Mr. Sprigo continuing to push in that mid lane. Nate Mack going to invade the jungle here in a, a play that I like a lot. You know you just got the kill out of the graves. They're going to be back for some time. Oh, hopping in here. Balloon Pants going in on the Trent. CC will be avoided from Balloon Pants. Very good there. Trent trying to pursue. Does hit the Pillar of Flame. Will land the CC, but there's no damage follow-up. Spareko in no position to step forward there, just considering where Al BZ was in lane. Continuing to try to push this one in, not going to go far. We do see a lot of pings in the river. Starbucks trying to pick up this blue buff will do so, but at the cost of losing out on the scuttle crab, Albizi can take some damage. There's CC coming through. Can't trip, follow up the layer. Balloon Pants going in, dropping it, and getting out. Good play by Balloon Pants to really put a body in the way of the ADC, letting their own survive. Jinxin going to be CC'd right there, taking a decent amount of damage. Peckles with the kill under the belt, as we said, might be a threat here early on. Jinxon taking a decent amount of damage. You've got to keep your distance from this Syndra. If you get in range, the damage is absolutely unbearable. It's Eagle TV. Good piece of footwork there to get around Yo Yo's dog. Face Breaker going to get a little bit of damage. And Peckles doing so much right now. Sidestep as well. Got to love how Peckles is playing this mid lane matchup. Trent on the bot side. That ward will get out of the bush right there. Hits the flame pillar. Not going to mind anything else to follow up with. As I said, it feels like in that situation, you would just much rather have the Lux there in the bot lane, right? Starbucks trying to go to farm here in the mid lane. Probably more importantly, not allow Peckles to push and get a plate. Already has the kill. Is going to back right now. We'll see what Peckles is able to buy with that first blood money securely in their back left pocket. 41 CS, more than double their lane opponent. So an absolutely massive start coming through for this Syndra. Pants. So it's been a it's been a tough lane right here early on for balloon pants. Just the range coming through. Something that I guess I underestimated coming from Trent Mr. Spreko. You know that gin range is so phenomenal. You know the brand is as well. And may have just got in my head overvalued a little bit the importance of the ease ability that sees the land damage is so massive either way. Duking it out here in the mid lane. Peckles actually take a lot of damage. Not gonna win that trade out. So Jason walking back to lane. Despite being items down, you see that Lost Shafter picked up by the Syndra. As that thought's gonna hold on for a second. Starbucks coming in, looking for a little bit of revenge on It's Eagle TV, who helps up that kill early on. It's Eagle TV! Oh, 2v1 situation, side step! Yo, yo, dog going to pick up the first kill in that match. All they come through, final spark. Peckles! Jing! The full. Oh my goodness, this one is getting a little hot. TP coming through. Starbucks got to be careful. Nate Mac maneuvering around that side. Starbucks will just get out of here. Yeah, Nate Mac and uh, It's Nico TV did not plan that out very well. Teleport coming into the mid lane. Starbucks might be the single here. CC does come through. Peckles, a lot of damage. Looking for the return kill. But in comes Starbucks to the mid lane. Peckles got to run. You don't want to die back to back times for absolutely nothing. He's going to avoid the rest of the damage there. Well, holding out of the ulti was something big to note that Unleashed Power just did so much damage. He's got to be very, very careful. As we said, Unleashed Power is just going to rip through a Lux. Doesn't have really any innate resistances. Does have the shield if you can time it well, but it's not going to do a whole, whole top heck, you know, push in here. 
The bait not going to be successful. Snip out by Peckles. Starbucks going to go back to farming. Another channel there, trying to get the recall. Peckles checking for wards on the top side of that river. He's going to pick up the boob up in the jungle there. It's Nico TV, despite being down a kill on top lane right now, has such a large farm lane right there. You saw why. That's going to typify the rest of this late phase of this game. One of the Yo-Yo Dogs sitting back and not being able to approach It's Nico TV. Uh, it, it just feels like such a tough matchup. And the lane's just going to keep pushing you under tower. You're not going to be able to farm super well. It's Nico TV is always going to be able to face breaker you at will. You do see right here going back in. Getting some damage in, but yeah, Yo Dog's just gonna continuously lose out on farm here. It does come through. Good spot on the ward right there, but Peckles will be able to take it out. Trent rotating over, still not quite level six. In fact, nobody in the bot lane is just yet. Yeah, Yo Yo Dog still just sitting there trying to sneak some CS. Yeah, gonna hop through the back pit. Unfortunate timing. Off the Oracle. Coming through there. It's the all of the oh my gosh, deleted. Starbucks picks up Peckles, they back got a run. 4v1 situation, have to get out of Dodge right there. First drag of the game will be handed over to Jackson. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you what, coming into this game at one and five with the fighting bees at three and four, you have to think that Jackson, what we're going to very clearly not be able to win this game, but they are playing with such heart right now. They are down gold, but they are playing so, so well. Scooping up the dragons, scooping up some kills across the map. They just have to even out this CS differential a little bit, and they could very well be in the driver's seat for the first game of best of three series. Moreko running back with Trent. They're retreating a little bit. We do see a move on the bottom half of the map, so keep your eyes peeled for some bot lane action. Trent walking up. Trying to find the DC, and they do just that. The movement's going pretty low. Trent may have been able to alt there and maybe not get the kill. Force two backs, pushing in, getting a plate. We'll hold on to it. Face breaker up here in the top lane. It's Nico TV putting in some work on Yo-Yo Dog. Going back off a little bit, maybe anticipating a gank, but Starbucks is on the bottom half of the map. Alties available for all four members that are hovering the bot lane here. The only one who does not have it available is Starbucks right there. Balloon Pants does trigger that trap. Not going to find any recalls to interrupt. <laughs> Tough time in the top lane for Yo-Yo Dog. Tough time to be laning against a set. It's Nico TV playing the set very well, which just kind of adds a little to the top of that issue. Up 79 farm to 64. I really expect you're only going to see that lead grow. There's a face breaker coming through. A lot of damage. Don't see the Haymaker just yet holding on to it. There it will go. Doing a solid amount of damage. Ward's being cleared in the bot lane, but it's just so hard for Yo-Yo Dog to approach. It's Nico TV right now. We'll need to get some items under their belt do something if they really want to get back in this lane because right now it's looking like all set all of the time Peckles CC does drop the airborne in the mid lane oh good sidestep from Peckles wow really earned that kill but he's going to have to retreat in a hurry here two man gank coming in Trent and Starbucks trying to find an angle not going to happen it's Steel TV collapsing can they flip the script and dip the chip here? Doesn't look like they'll be able to get around in the back end of that gank. Starbucks escaping to the top side of the map. Spareko trying to hold 2v1 here in the bottom side. Woo! Massive play by Peckles. That sidestep was, wow. Absolutely beautiful right there. Predicting that one. Like to see that 1v1 unfold a little more as the game goes on. So those who've been absolutely going at it. But Peckles does have a very commanding farm lead. What is that? A 38 CS right now. 11. Top. Drifter. Arm. Opportunity. Not be any seal opportunity. Does use the E to get out of there. Dropping the smoke. Yo Yo Dog responding here on the backside. Do they want to pick a 2v3? I don't think they do, but they will. Vision 2 that they have there. Lux hovering on the bottom side down there. Woo. Pops the blast going. Doesn't want any piece of Starbucks who just had happened to hop right over the wall. Starbucks will be reward there on the back side of that engage. And for the top laners, back to the grind of CSing or for Yo-Yo Dog. Back to the grind of watching someone CS. Pe might be in a little bit of trouble here. The flash. Oh, the damn it. And throw from Jason. Woo! You got him. Aggression. CC all the bada bing bada put it in a bag, wrap it up. I don't care what you gotta say, just know that Jinx and Gus 
another kill set up right there. Absolutely beautiful. Nate Mac coming through just trying to defend the plates. Will hold some CC on the back end, but is successful in not allowing a plate to be given up to the Lux right there. Scareco, Trent in the bot side still holding a very large CS lead. I believe it's the only lane on the map that is holding a CS lead right now for the Jets. And yes, that is true. Although a six CS lead in the jungle for Starbucks right now is holding as well. Continuing to push in this bot side, making some more farm to be lost. Just gotta be careful because Blue Mets can get on top of you. Something might be done here. At least he just doesn't have any mana to get him this fight. And Graves is getting on the top side. Balloon pen. Tick, tick, tick. Burton call. Ooh, side step. Not going to matter. LB's going to hit with the last one. Probably should have just left the area. Is going to burn the flash. Starbucks pursuing. Not going to find anything else. But all of a sudden, the Jets are starting to run away with this game a little bit. Face break of the top lane. It's Nico TV. Is someone I'm looking to to get them back in this game. Once they can crack open the map a little bit, they really got to focus in my mind on trying to get this first tower down. But Yo-Yo Dog is going to catch him with some CC. It's Eagle TV. There's the ulti coming through. Yo-Yo Dog might be in trouble. Showstopper, face breaker. Oh, doesn't have the haymaker for the shield. Yo-Yo Dog going to kill going to kill the top side. And this is going to be a 4 view situation in the mid lane. Dang that. Not going to be CC there. Peckle is the side step trying to turn this one around. Ash Arrow. Not going to find its target. Peckle walking up boldly into the 1v3 right there. Balloon Pants responding over. Spareko in between right there. Dragon is up. Both teams playing around that right now. Peckle's looking for it. Bandage toss over the wall. This is going to kill on the Lux. That's absolutely massive. Do they have time to get over on the Dragon? No, they do not. Graves will smite that one. So they trade the mid lane for the drag right there. Up two neutral objectives. Woo! What a sequence that was. Gotta feel good for both sides. If you're San Ambrose, you finally got yourself another kill. Something you've been looking for for quite some time. And if you are Jackson, you did secure that second neutral objective, the second dragon. Blue Pen right here with Nate Max. Really going to find the kill. CC come through. There's the bandage toss. They should have enough damage to get it done. And there is the shutdown gold. And it's been given to exactly what you want to give to. On top of that, they're going to get the tower. Look at the top side. It's Eco TV. So we were talking about Jackson was building and building and building and slowly getting this lead everywhere. But the CS totals. And all of the sudden, the fighting bees are right back in it. We and they have take, they take the gold lead once again. I mean, this game is splitting hairs on who is in the lead. No one's obviously in the driver's seat, but SAU is here for the long haul. They just showed it in the past two minutes. Your dog trying to find the knock. Dead of Bandage toss coming through, flashing preemptively. Auto's going to get done. Balloon Pants trying to get in the action. Turns around in a hurry. Albizi rotating up. Scouting arrow. Nothing more is going to come of that. We see a collapse in the mid lane. Trent coming through. This is Franco. CC does land for Peckles. Watch out. The hash arrow comes through. They layer the CC. There's the brand ulti. Flashing away. They do pick up the kill, but Peckles goes so low. Curtain call. Balloon pants. Not long for this world. Oh, the last shot's going to get it done. Franco does pick it up for just a second. I thought maybe there's a chance, but Peckles and LB will be left to themselves in the mid lane and their wave clear is pretty massive so they will be able to get that done right there starbucks on the backside trying to find peckles bandage toss comes through curse to the sad mummy out easy get in the action gold picks up another six three and oh right now a bag of 300 gold on their head peckles having themselves a game Lux ulti down main street not gonna find peckles does over find out easy for a solid chunk of damage Mm. And TV sidestep, face breaker right there, getting some autos in. Yo-Yo Dog has kind of flipped the momentum of this game with that last kill. Now sitting at 2-0, does have that Sunfire game. Do you see Moomoo on the top side of the map? So watch out for a gank there as a scouting arrow will be sent to the bot lane. Pants, pops the Scryer's Orb. They're not going to do anything with this advantage they have on the top side numbers wise. It doesn't look like it. It's even be turning into Yo-Yo Dog. Some player gives you massive right here on this extended engage, but here it is. And then all the top lane. Yo-Yo Dog has to flash. Oh my god! Is that this 
it's Nico Dini with the big brain. Flash is in front of a train. Wow. Yo, yo, dog. Pops the ulti to get out of there. And what does it's Nico TV do but lays down on the track to stop the train. What a bold play to scoop up the kill. I love it. The bees are climbing back into this game and they are now up about 1K goal. What a play by it's Nico TV. Good dish. The reaction time to realize what's happening and flashing and front. But it does look like this neutral objective on the top side. This Shelly will be taken by Jackson. They do scoop it up, get a little bit of gold in the process. More importantly, grabbing that Shelly to drop somewhere on the map. Teleport to the bot lane. Yo-Yo Dog trying to get some farm, trying to hold on to that tower. See if they can hold off against Syndra. In the mid lane, we got something ruined. The up is preheated. Heckle putting some damage on the Yo-Yo Dog in the bot lane right there. Not going to be able to find any scout the rim dragon spotted it was no like hey you, you're on far behind there in the box you gotta keep moving heckles just clearing out some vision you feel like something is brewing here on the bottom half of the map next dragon will be up in a little bit can do the cc yo yo dog's in a lot of trouble does not have the ulti to escape this time didn't even get him out last time 20 seconds till Dragon, Yo-Yo Dog will go down. That's gonna be a sizable loss, it feels like. So you don't even get to the gray screen until after the match is over. So it pushes back your respawn time. Uh, gonna be able to clear out some minions, but not up for half a minute. And this Dragon's gonna be up in five seconds. Balloon fans, you just have to not, you see this numbers, man. It's a five four. there's no reason to give up this Dragon in my mind if you're SAU. Let's see what does happen. Starbucks super angle. There is the current call right on the pants. This is it. Starbucks trying to go in. Who gets the dragon? And it looks like SAU does pick it up with the smite. Trying to get out to the left-hand side of the screen here. And it looks like they may just escape with zero losses. Starbucks dropping the smoke. Using the E, but they're not going to find anything. SAU does scoop it up with the smite. They use the 5v4. They use it well. Starbucks. I don't I'm not sure that's where you want to be. Cyan, Aldi coming right down Main Street. Tekla does jump the CC on the side. Sporeco putting some damage. Nate Mac going very, very low. Trent there, but not able to find anything else. Albizi left to hang out on their own, but might be able to get out just for the virtue of running Yo Yo Dog. Don't want to run into anything. The channel, Peckle's got to run. Very fortunate to be alive in that situation. The Scion E did not connect right there. Balloon fans clear mid lane with its Nico TV. They do scoop it up. Notorious and Chaps there's so much fighting. Oh yeah, both of these teams are trying to scoop up. Limited. Look at this top side. Shelly should be able to take care of this tower in no time at all. Force its Nico TV to rotate up. You have Yo-Yo Dog pushing. Excuse me, you have Yo-Yo Dog pushing with it. It's Neo TV should be able to stop the Shelly though, but they do claim a tower on the top side. Applying some pressure across. Nate Max rotating up. They just find a Graves here. Okay. Trying to go over Blasco. Won't be able to stop the Graves escape right there. So Starbucks does get out on the backside into River. Balloon Pants clearing wards there in the river as well on the bottom half of the map. We do see this dedicated push from Peckle on the bot side, but Yo-Yo Dog finally responding. The wave is stacked up. Yo-Yo Dog may not be able to stop it. The wave clear is looking very, very solid. Plays it well. Peckles doesn't have an opportunity to really stop that at all. Nothing's going to happen there in the mid lane. We've got something brewing. As I said earlier, it feels like the oven is preheating the 350 right now. We're not quite there, but we are right at that boiling point. Both teams are ready. They're restless. Uh, someone noted in the chat that there's a lot of fighting. Yeah, there's been a lot of skirmishes, but not a lot of full-on team fights. Both teams going all out. And I think we're headed there before the next Dragon in two and a half minutes. We'll see if I'm right as the, as the tower will fall in the mid lane at the hands of Jason. Good push there. Going out the tempo of the game. Feeling out the waves. Getting it done. Claiming some gold. More importantly, claiming some pressure before this next Dragon very, very important to understand pressure on all sides of the map before neutral objectives happen because you're not focusing on the waves during that point in time. Also very important is vision before the objective. We will see both of them try to go for the scuttle here, but Nate Mac does secure it. 
Aaron is up. No one should be thinking about this. Just kind of a place to fight. Plus an objective. Peckles will take a new dog here in the bot lane. Ooh, a CC's not gonna come through from Scion. Peckles just does not have enough damage, simply put, to eat through that Spectre's cowl right now. So much MR, it's not even going to matter. 22 minutes into this game, and it is looking very neck and neck. The Jets early on, hailing from Jackson, had a solid lead. They're up two Dragons down. They're up a handful of kills. They're up some gold. But slowly and surely, these fighting bees have gotten right back into the game. We're going to see if they do have the longevity to finish this one out. It's a marathon, not a sprint after all. Close to this 23 minute mark, and here is a play on this. He's keeping the top lane. Side only coming through. It's Eagle TV. Oh my goodness. The fancy footwork like an over-caffeinated ballerina just twirls right out of their Starbucks. Oh no, Peckles waiting in the wings. One more auto should do it. The flash comes through. Peckles flashing in response to pick it up. That's no jungler. Dragon in a minute, so Starbucks will be back up, so it shouldn't matter for the drag, but it will give them some priority having that numbers advantage. Just dropping wards, creating some space leading up to it. Ooh, that Ash Arrow nearly connecting. That would have been one dead Lux and putting him an even greater numbers advantage before this objective. It will not come through. We do see Moomoo backing. You want to be full strength for this next objective. We really feel like this fight's coming. And we see how being each other. Hey, 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 29 seconds. Do not forget, everyone needs to be around Dragon Pit right now. Yo Yo Dog and Insigo TV both do have teleports available, as does Peckle. So. They don't necessarily have to be right there, but I have a feeling given the state of the game, they're going to try to secure the front side of this pit, drop a lot of vision, uh, just so they have the best shot they have first did. They don't want to take a 50-50, if possible, at this objective of Jet Soul. Goals out of here. That's easy what it came through. Peckles would have not been doing their team a service right there. Starbucks trying to find something. Not connecting with the ulti, going wide left. First call coming through. There's almost no win. Dragon played so well by SAU right here. But there's the ulti. Oh, good hey, Look at that. We'll pick it up. And now the fight goes on. The set goes down early on. It's Super TV fighting the dust. Style ulti coming through. Balloon pan. Heckles up the side, dropping a lot of damage. Let's be very careful. Split off from the rest of the team. This is probably a dead tag. Look at the damage coming through. Not enough to finish. There's one. There's two. Goes against the world. Try to find a little more. The third. It allows them back to go on the backside and take on Starbucks. Oh my gosh. Who needs to dance like a butter when he can stick like a bee? SAU cleaning up that fight off the back end of Peckles. Absolutely insane damage. Woo! 11, 3, and 1 is the stat sheet for Peckles. 700 gold is the price on their head. Second drag picked up for the Fighting Bees. They are halfway to a soul of their own. Now on equal footing on neutral objectives. Their gold lead is growing, nearing three and a half. It closed on 4K. They're up a tower. SAU has to feel very good about the position that they're in. Oh my goodness. Peckles. What, what an just insane album right there. All on their own. Getting it done. Through the back of here. It's equal TV. Taking a little bit of damage from and actually a dark harvest is gonna happen there. Trent going to prosper off that one. So good recognition by Draco and Trent. Going to get some value. Uh, that set may have to back me pretty low just to life steal off for the time being. See if they hand it over to the Moomoo or not. Man. Peckles just turned that whole thing around. Chat showing some major respect. Peckles the man, man putting on a show. Absolutely putting on a show. I hope everyone's got their popcorn at home. Nate back running away from this fight at Baron right here. Just warding it up. If you are Jackson, you have to be cognizant that Baron's probably going to have a 2 yo, yo dog going in on the Peckles. Does have a lot of health. Has a decent amount of MR right now. So Peckles actually just can't deal with yo, -Yo dog. That all he's going to go wide left though. Peckles with the fancy footwork teleport coming through, trying to save Peckles. But here comes Starbucks and Trent. This will be a big move for the for Jackson. Let's all come through. There's the ass all It's not going to matter. Oh my gosh, Darko off the top of this. The delayed reinforcements, they're coming through, but there's no Peckles. Can they find the damage? Down goes Pantheon. Triple kill. But it is payback. 
Trent goes down to the back end to the back of Pit. Albizi left all alone in the 1v3 situation, trying to stay alive. Wait. Still in the run. Albizi, what is the move here? What is the pathing like? Can you survive? They may just give up pursuit. SAU bites off a little more than they can chew. And Jackson takes advantage of the top lane. Jinxon not going to find intended target with the Lux Alti. Final spark not coming through. Whoo! My goodness! The play by Yo Yo Dog to set up and start that fight to engage Peckles in a fight where Peckles just doesn't have the time or the resources to eat through Yo-Yo Dog's health bars. Absolutely genius. The rest of the team comes through and SAU is just a little too slow to respond and they end up paying the price for it. 28 minutes into this game, something to know. No attempt has been made at Baron. I'm not surprised no Baron has been failed yet, but no attempt has been made at Baron. Something that's typified the season so far is team's aggression and their willingness to run at objectives as soon as they're on the table, especially Baron Nasher. But alas, both teams being very patient is what you like to see. Uh, just warding up. They're trying to get as much information as they can before they commit to a plan of action. Yo-Yo Dog right there once again. Ash Alti coming through. They're going to find the target. And there is the bandage off the wall. Trent is going very, very low. But the fight is gathered on one side. Oh, big person of the on me. Peckles coming through to scoop it up. Yo-Yo Dog on the backside. It's Deagle TV putting in so much work right there. Flash, showstopper, responding flash. Not going to CC in the correct direction. Yo-Yo Dog going down. Beautiful team play there starting with Ash Alti. Showstopper? Or Kurt Cole, excuse me. Huh? Oh. <laughs> this is not a... Oh, Peckles trying to rotate down and find something. Jin still safely over the wall. Starbucks, there's the CC coming through. Dropping the damage, dropping the... Oh, shut down, Gold. Peckles, 13, 4, and 2. Mareko clears a ward there. Three of them left. Dragon is on the table, but you do have to keep your eyes on this brand on the bottom side of the map. No small for either team right now. Trent being chased off of Pitts. Mareko only has one shot at this. Fires early on. Peckle will going to be able to secure this with the rest of the team. LVD picking up back to back to back Earth Drags after starting down zero to two on the neutral objective count. Impressive perseverance from the B. Final spark coming through from down a decent amount of damage onto Al Easy. Uh, scoops up a lot of the wave. Actually, feels pretty big. Uh, momentum wise, just making that ash back right there. They will be able to scoop up the scuttle just so they know what's going on right around Baron. Some vision that can't be displaced. Eccles trying to find some CC, trying to find some damage. Not going to get it to go. What a game we've had here in just game number one. It's best to run through Peckles, dropping the ulti to Flash. Not going to find it. Starfall over the top. Nothing to find there as well. Ash Alti just going to sail across the map, but Jinxon may need a bit of trouble here. The collapse is coming in. The Lux action is going to go to the back side of the map. It's Eco TV being pursued. CC drops. Starbucks sliding through. It's Eco TV face breaker. Starbucks going low. Both parties are going to have to back off of that one. Dark Harvest. Dark Souls are harvested there. The thing about falling over to Baron here. They may just fall back to Baron. That's exactly what they're going to do. Spotted out by Blue Wolf. They're committing to plan of action. They don't think that there's time, and they're very. Oh, Backside. What can be done here? A lot of damage, but Baron it picked up five SAU. Very smart play. You push as hard as you can. You get that wave going. Falling right back to the Baron, and that's going to propel them into this stretch of the late game as we have hit 31 minutes and 45 seconds here. All eyes are on the next Earth Drag happening in three minutes and 10 seconds. It will either postpone the Drag Soul or give the Drag Soul to SAU, stacking three straight Earth Drags into an Earth Soul. It's going to be absolutely devastating to the Jets if they do allow that to happen. So. 
We'll see what their plan of action is. When we get about 30 seconds out from the... I expect to see them being very frantic and gaining vision as much as they can, at least on the front side of the pit. Peckle doing that now with balloon pants and Albizi traveling to three. Very, very smart. Don't want to get caught out with the Baron Buff. Pushing together in the mid lane. Trying to apply some pressure across the map. Trent clearing out that vision. Ripping top here. Balloon pants dropping a ward. Pushing in that top wave. SAU feels like they're looking for a fight right now. It's Eagle TV looking for that angle. Jeez, you gotta be careful. It's Eagle TV is this time to strike. And there it is, Agile coming through with the Showstopper. Daymax, that's a lot of damage. Trent picks up a kill. Daymax going low as well. Harvest another soul. Trent looking for some damage. Not going to find it. Will take a lot though from Heckle. B. Oh my. Oh, good stage by Jinx, but it's not going to matter. We'll go down there. Peckle's going to go down as well. Chuck that gold to Sprinkle. being chased under tower. It's Nico TV, the face breaker to finish it off. Talk about two links trying to find a kill to Nate Mac and will do so, but also going to find themselves six feet deep as it's Nico TV puts on the janitorial outfit and goes to town. Cleaning up yet another kill. It's Nico TV and Albizi. How far can these two push given all the time in the world? Nine seconds for Yo-Yo to be up. Five seconds for Trent to be up. But absolutely massive amount of damage in that last fight on this brand. It looks like the inhibitor will be taken down. So I know they're coming right through. They're trying to find a kill with Zach. They do get the flash coming for you, Face Breaker. It's Nico TV, maybe the new target here. Stun comes through, is a lot of CC applied. It's Nico TV running. There's the pillar. Ooh, the flash. Follow up flash from Fred. Haymaker gonna get the shield, knock him down the dot. Damn it! It's Nico TV survives with their life. Good. It looked like they had a plan, the Ash. That didn't come through. It looked like they had a plan, it's Nico TV. That didn't come through. Nothing is coming through right now for the Jets. And they really need this dragon to come through. Coming up in 20 seconds here. They do have it lit up like a Christmas tree, which is absolutely what you need. But where is the execution? Yo-Yo Dog running through. This looks like the beginning of the fight. They're retreating. Day back. CC, that is the month you gotta kill. Ooh, Hurt Call coming through. They're just trying to create a lot of distance. Will they be able to burst down this dragon? We're going to see. Starbucks on it. Nate Mac trying to find an angle to enter. Oh my gosh, Jackson playing this so well right now. Nate Mac, oh, gonna go and fly. Too little, too late. Curse of the Sad Mummy is dropped, but no one is in the vicinity to do anything else. They give up. The Dragon, Nate Mack and the rest of the team just not quite on the same page as they really only committed just the jungler's life for that. They do push top lane a little bit and they should be able to get this tower just given they have three members of the team in the vicinity. But now both teams on soul point. It makes this next Dragon oh so important. This soul is going to be massive one way or another. Yo, yo, dog. You know, when you set the trap, that's the last person you want setting it off. Uh, when you set the trap, you don't want that to even walk in. There's the Ash Arrow. It does connect. It's Eagle TV coming in. Trent going to go down right there. It's Eagle TV picking up the kill. How easy. Got to run. As does Peck. There's a lot of damage coming out from this brand right now. But they do find the kill off the back end of an How easy snipe. Ash arrows have led to a multitude of plays tonight. Al easy to see 2 0 13. First of all, perfect KDA. Second of all, 13 assists from the ADC. And as I said, a decent amount of those being set up with the Ash arrow coming through. Uh, phenomenal accuracy, phenomenal predictions. Really just some great teamwork coming out from both squads right now as this game remains pretty tight. It really felt like SEU starting to run away with it. And then the last dragon, Jackson just set up so impressively. They used all their abilities to create space, and they put their trust fully in Starbucks' ability to burst the dragon. And look what happened. Starbucks got it done. It really wasn't even 50-50. Uh, they got the whole objective done before 
Nate Mac was even able to get the pick. CC comes through, Pecos dropping a lot of damage. Going to avoid the CC right there. Does well to do that. Balloon Pants coming up as is Nate Mac. They may finally get the kill on the Scion they've been looking for, but ultimate is Pop getting out of there in a hurry. Trent in the area as is Starbucks just fighting for vision control here of the Tribush. Next Baron is on the table spawning here in three seconds and they are securing vision are the bees right now on the back end of the pit. This game is reaching its end. We can feel it. 37 minutes and 36 seconds in. And oh, there's CC. They back looking for the first of that. He finds the three. The axe arrow over the top, layering the CC. Trent, what can be done? Oh, the no stopper out of the back line is absolutely ruthless. Starbucks running away. Yo-Yo and Starbucks, the last two alive. Yo-Yo just spawning in base. They're saying, you know what? Let's forego the Baron. We don't need it. Just give us the Nexus Towers. Yo-Yo trying to hold with Starbucks. What can they do? It doesn't look like much at this point. Trying to hold off Starbucks. Dropping some damage. It's new PD making trouble. But the CC comes through. Starbucks go down. Yo-Yo dog baby next on the chopping loop. Yes, there is a Texas Towers will fall. The Nexus is next to go, say you. Brings it home. The bees battle back in game number one. And this best two out of three trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. S-A-U. Looked so impressive at the end there, but let's start off by giving credit to the Jets. I think that Dragon play may have been the best piece of teamwork, the most well-coordinated play I have seen in the NECC yet. I know that's a bold claim. Uh, we've, we've cast a lot of games here. We've looked at a lot of games. We've reviewed some odds. I think that might be the best work of teamwork. The way they were so effectively able to zone and put trust in their jungler was really, really a beautiful thing to behold. If you like League of Legends, if you enjoy watching the strategy as it gets down another level, it was just beautiful. The way the way they did that. So big props to them. That when you review that VOD, they're going to look at that point in time. Sorry, I hit my mic there. I'm not used to the microphone being attached to my face yet. Um when you when they review that VOD, it's going to be so great. They're going to look at them and be like, yeah, that was it. We could not have executed that any better. They got the objective. They got out. Uh, but moving over to the eventual victors, victors, SAU, they started hot, and they had this lull in the mid game, and that always makes you worry in a game like League of Legends because that mental game is just oh so important. But when they needed them most, Peckle stepped up to the plate and dropped an absolutely amazing performance. Yeah, uh, just absolutely amazing. And from minute one to the end, Peckles was that, just that player for them. Absolutely unstoppable. The well, as I like to say, just keep going back. You need something? All right, cool. Let's withdraw. Keep going. Keep going. There's water to be had, baby. There's kills to be had. There's plays to be had. Peckles, absolutely insane that game. Excited to see more in game number two. I better see that Cinder banned. Jackson, that Cinder better be banned. There's no way that should be allowed to slide through once again. Uh, just doing so much on a control mage. I mean, can you imagine on something aggressive? Uh, Katarina, something of that nature. I mean, the Cinder does a lot of damage. If you're caught out, the positioning is everything, but... Whew. Uh, something a little bit more dynamic. I'd be so scared to see what Peckles brings to the table. Syndra better be gone. You need a better game plan to deal with this menace in the mid lane. Because otherwise we're going to see the game get out of control once again. Because once that ball starts rolling, it's awful, awful tough to stop. I'm going to take a drink quick. Whoa. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's going to be a good night. If you're just joining us, we have a best two out of three series cooking here. The Jackson Jets sitting at one and five, going up against the San Ambrose Fighting Bees sitting at three and four. San Ambrose has their eyes in the playoffs. They just have to keep on winning here in the last week of the regular season. 
This is the Champions Bracket game for the night at 8 p.m. in our Challengers division. We've got the Hood Blazers taking on the Rio Grande Red Storm. Rio Grande still looking for the first one of the year. Hood looking to force a tiebreaker, I do believe, at the bottom half of the playoff qualifiers. So you got to keep your eyes on that one. See what Hood is able to get done in that respect. The NECC is, of course, sponsored by HyperX. No matter who you are or how you play, we're all gamers. And by ESTV, the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities. And I can personally attest to that HyperX uh, sponsorship. Got a nice pair on right now that they ship me out. Absolutely phenomenal. Like, this sounds weird, but the ear feel. Mwah. Mwah. Just so good. So, so good. Uh, if you just missed us, game number one, SAU did end, end up taking home the W over Jackson. Very contentious game. Very close right down to the end. So I'm very excited to see what game number two brings. I'm just waiting for the invite into that private lobby. Uh, then we will get it going. We appreciate everyone's patient home. We appreciate everybody in chat. We, we see the woos from SAU. Uh, some big, big performances, especially the Amumu at the end of that game. The Curse of the Sad Mummy catching all three of them. Absolutely massive. Uh, but once again, it's a contentious game. You definitely have to give your respect over to Jackson. Trent. Whew. Man, that brand is, is something I question a lot, right? I will, I will, I will bear the burden. I will admit it. I question a lot whether or not Brand and Lux should, should switch. Maybe that still should have been the case, but the damage that came through from the brand was absolutely a game changer and allowed them to stay in that game as long as they did. The positioning was just so good. Allowing yourself to do that much damage while never truly being in danger was just massive. So I'd be surprised to see the brand actually banned here by SAU. Uh, if that does come through, we will see. Uh, but yeah, once again, we do have the Jackson Jets taking on the SAU Fighting Bees. SAU trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. They curr currently sit in seventh place, I do believe, at three and four. Trying to get it done and get on into the playoffs, which will be starting up here soon. If you don't know the playoff schedule, I believe it's been tweeted out, and that's at NECC underscore games. Let's just let's just look at the Twitter. Make sure we're not we're not capping on stream, but I'm pretty sure it's NECC underscore games. Yes, that is what it looks like. NECC underscore games. Oh, no underscore. Just NECC games. Uh, all information that is relevant to the playoffs will be put up there, as well as other scheduling information. Uh, we will have announcements at some point about the next season here. Very exciting stuff. If you haven't been following along, first of all, hit that follow button. Smack that bell. Drop something hype in chat as I have received the invite. Let's get it. Things are moving. Uh, but yeah, just just really, there's so much production out here. I mean, you can just see from the overlay. I mean, you can see from, you know, I brought in that professional talent. Um, there's so much going on here. And the from what I've seen of the conference, so dedicated to providing the best product possible, not only for the viewers, but that the students involved are generally having a good time. The system makes sense. So just some massive props to the NECC for getting it done and getting it done in the right way which is a bit of a rarity in the space as we're getting ready here to hop into match number two. But we've got five games being played here competitively in the NECC. Overwatch, Rocket League, League of Legends, Madden, and Valorant. All five titles have the same level of production value. Uh, they're all phenomenal to watch. They're really, really a hoot and a holler. And as I said, uh, the graphics are getting gorgeous. Unveil the new... New graphics this week, as you saw in game, they're gorgeous. This right here is what you got the, the moving background. Someone put in some time and after effects on that, all right? So, some big props to the production crew that makes this all happen. You know, I just, I just get up here, I just talk, I just, I just put a button up on with the glasses. But there are so many people working hard, and I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for making it happen. Uh, of course, since SAU did win the first game, side selection will be falling on to. The Jackson Jets, and Jackson is going to choose the red side here, so they're going to run it back exactly how they had it before they were on the red side there in game number one. Pro Draft will be up here in just a minute, folks. I say you saying dollar number one in chat. Hey, 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 come on, come on, come on. Don't inflate the ego. Series going to three. Notorious Pat's calling it. All right. I like the energy, Notorious. I like it. 
Three game series here. We will see. I believe we've only had two three game series, and actually, SAU was involved in one last last week. If memory serves, against Valparaiso, started up 1-0, and Valpo stormed back an absolutely insane game number two, forcing game three. Truly great performance. I think that this team has learned a lot, this SAU team, from that game. And I think we're going to see them continue to play strongly, but Jackson is so very much in the conversation of walking home from the series as a winner after that strong game one performance. That was one of the closer game ones I think we've seen. And it's so good to see competition that is equally matched, equally yoked. You know, let iron sharpen iron, baby. Uh, these two are really going at it. And it produces the greatest sparks on screen, the greatest sparks for the stream. As uh, we are going to have a little delay. Um... <laughs> You know, classic top laner in the bathroom situation. Everyone, Everyone's been there. Every League of Legends team's been there. You know, even to the top. I'm sure Cloud9. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> Lic Licorice got to use the bathroom too. Uh, but yeah, very excited here for this game number two. Things that I would like to see. I'd like to see the Cinder ban come out from Jackson. Honestly, I think I say you should probably ban the brand. It was so effective last match. Or last game, excuse me. Uh, so much dot damage coming through. So much OE, AOE damage coming through. And they just couldn't seem to track down the brand in, before fights. Uh, the positioning was so phenomenal coming through. So we'll see if that happens. I'd also like to see SAU get that Ash again. I think Albizi's greatest strength in this Ash was not the carry potential that you usually see from ADCs. But just that arrow. Woo! Albizi was... Scott Notching them, boys. Oh, my gosh. Back to back to back. Honestly, full CDR for the Alti LBZ. That's what I want. <laughs> That's exactly what I want. Um, but, no, I'd like to see that run back. I think the Ash was very, very potent. Uh, I think I would like to see a ban for the set in the top lane as well. It's Nico TV was just way too dominant. So, Cinder a set, and then one of the bans you had last game that you found in your initial scouting because... Both those pieces were just so key to the success of the Fighting Bees. And I don't know if they'll be able to repeat in the same manner if they don't have those champions available. I mean, we saw how close the Jets were. We're talking about that one team fight goes different at the end of that game. Completely different outcome. And you know that's something that's A, the Jets have to think about because that game went late. B, you know SAU's thinking about it because that series that they lost to Valparaiso still has to sting. Being up 1-0, being up so much in game number two, and just letting it all crumble, still stings. So I'm excited to see what the energy that SCU comes out of because they have been here a few times before, at least one time before, and they didn't come through. So I'm looking for SAU to duct tape their foot to the gas pedal and not stop until the job is done. That's the growth that I want to see from this team. We will see if it comes through as we have gotten to pick some bands here. SAU will do the deeds on the blue side. Starting us off with our first band of the game that will be Thresh taken off the table. See what the Jets do with it right now. Interesting to see the Thresh go once again. There is the set. I would be shocked if Syndra was not the very next ban. I think SAU's probably going to stick to their guns. I would say outside of the brand. They do ban the Swain, so same bans right now. Taking picks away from the sport. Taking picks away from Trent. Final ban of the first round of bans for SAU. Zisuo is taken off the table once again by the Jackson Jets. SAU thinking about the last ban. They will take Graves away. So Graves played to pretty solid effect by Starbucks last game, but... Still somewhat a surprise, in my, in my opinion. Uh, you're going to commit two bans to Trent, but you're going to leave open the brand, which is so potent last game. We'll see. Cinder taken off the table. Got to expect that one. There's the Lucian locked in. Hoping to see some more solo lane Lucian, but we will see how that does turn out. The burden is now on the Jets to make their first selection of the game in 3-2. One there, they won the shot clock run. Yorick in the house. Woo! We got some new stuff. I don't think we've seen Yorick played yet. And Hecarim locked in right after. I like it. Oh, Yorick is Hecarim. Okay, okay, no Yorick. Just curb my enthusiasm, why don't you? All right. <laughs> 
All right. So the Yorick is actually Hecarim. Let's keep that in mind. And so they will pick whoever they want instead of Hecarim here for their second pick. Just think about it once again. Let that shot clock drip, and they're going to grab Hecarim. Wait. Hecarim is Misfortune. Yorick is Hecarim. All right. So Hecarim, Misfortune start like that. A Misfortune is a champion that can keep you in any game just because Bolt Time is such a potent ulti. Same thing can be said for Hecarim, just because the scaling's so good. The mobility in the late game is so, so good. Uh, as Pantheon selected once again, that's no doubt going to be played by Balloon Pants in the bot lane. Like to see that going right back to what is working. So yeah, MF, Hecarim, Lucian, Pantheon on the other side. Next pick for SAU, their last pick before the second round of bans. I'm interested to see if they'll grab a mid laner. Uh, only two mid laners banned right now. Will they decide to go all in on Peckles and grab someone that can carry them? And they're going to grab the Olaf. They're going to put the focus on the Nate Mac in the jungle right there. Very interesting. Alistar is picked up for Trent there as the support role. Pairing with the MF. I like that a lot. There's a lot of potential there with the bullet time in a team fight to do a whole lot. We're going to see if their positioning. We're going to see if their teamwork is on point because it will be put to the test with this specific combination. Second round of bands coming through here. The Jets will take out. Ash? It, it turned into a no ban, but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be an Ash ban. <laughs> Flicked for a second. That is an Ash ban. I say you, I said that I wanted them to prioritize that Ash pick. There's why. Going to be gone on the second round of banning right there. Next ban coming in for SAU. They're going to have them back to back here to end it off. Malphite taken off the table. Back over to the Jets. I, I want to see a mid laner ban, I guess. Um, you've taken the Cinder off the table. SAU's bans have not surprised me. SAU's pick order has surprised me. They had the opportunity to take Ash. They had the opportunity to scoop a priority mid laner, and they just didn't do either. As Cassiopeia will be on another mid laner that I would have loved to see another very solid control mage. So, ah, a bit of a head scratcher for me coming out here for the bees. But of course, it doesn't matter what you do in picks and bands. It matters what you do on the rift. Obviously, picks and bands affect that in a massive way. But if you get it done, you get it done, and that's all you could ask for. A wise man once told me a dub is a dub. Orn taken off the table. Back-to-back -back games now. We are now into our final four picks before game number two here. If you're just joining us in game number one, SAU won a hard, hard fought game against this Jet Squad. Ari locked in in the mid lane, getting some mobility in there. Something that I really like to see. Jinx in last game was very mobile on a Lux, as mobile as you could be. All right, we saw a few flash engages, a few flash engages that led to kills. So some very solid stuff coming through. But, but we're going to see if that Ari can elevate it, play a little bit more to the play style of Jinxon, allow them to scoot and boot at a little bit more free will. Mordekaiser locked in for the top lane. Final pick for SAU waiting in the wings now. What will it be? Looking at most likely selecting mid laner unless they want to do something very spicy and put Lucian in mid lane on Peckles. Not the worst decision in the world. As I said, we're going to see 10 seconds. The bees taking their sweet, sweet time on this final pick. Three to go. Drip, drip that shot clock. Ezreal locked in. Lucian's going to the mid lane. Oh, boy. I'm excited to see what Peckles has in store for us this time. Final pick of the pro draft here coming through on the side of the Jets. Both teams just love to drip it. They they love to use that clock. Gnosis. <gasps> okay. All right. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. They see the Mordekaiser, an absolute team fight beast. They say, you know what? We are going to be patient. This Jets composition is patient. Gnosis wants to stack. Hecarim is so cool going late. So cool going to late game. Absolutely perfect with it. So, I, I like what the Jets are doing. The Jets are saying, you know what? We lost in the late game last game. 
we know we can hang with you mechanically. We know we can hang with you um, macro game. The macro play on that dragon, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to talk about that for the rest of my life. I'm going to tell my kids the day that I saw the Jets fend off dragon absolutely perfectly. But they just couldn't hang with them in the late game. They pick a late game composition. I really like what they've done here. We're going to see if it pays off in dividends or not for them. We're, we, we're just simply going to find out on the riff. But I really like what's done. Last game I talked about how SAU's composition was just easier to pull off, right? Easier to execute. They had more go buttons. Scaling compositions are relatively easy to pull off if you can just survive. If you can survive, there will be a point in the game where this Hecarim is just dumb to deal with. There will be a point in the game where this Gnosis is dumb to deal with. These are just kind of facts. Like, they will happen. They will come to fruition. Whether or not they can hang in the early game is the question, but it looks like the easier composition to execute, and oftentimes that has been our winner here in the NECC. Not necessarily the better comp, not the more clever, not the trickier one, uh, not the big brain comps, but the compositions that are easier to execute which comp has more go buttons? Sometimes that's all there is to it as we are in actual picks and bands. Right now we're going to see what that shakes out. I mean, the only thing that I could see happening that's a little weird, a little wacky, is Lucian bot Ezreal mid. Like, that would be dumb hot. I don't think that's going to come through, but that would be stupid hot. Um, I'm glad I, I, I might need to change these to some sunglasses if that is the case. That's just a little, that's a little too much for me. But yeah, we, we will see as our bands are coming through. We know it's exactly going to be banned here. Graves next on the chopping block. Following that will be the Syndra. Very smart band coming through. Once again, looking back at the picks and bands, I'm very surprised SAU did not put more priority on that Ash. They had it available. Right, but they just decided not to go with that avenue. Interesting decision. We will see how it pans out. As I said, it doesn't matter as long as you get the dub. A dub is a dub. You can do whatever you want on picks and bands. You, we saw five tanks picked. Uh, was that two weeks ago? Last week? It was two weeks ago when we had coach on. I, if you win, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want. Uh, if, if you win, like have a have a theme composition. I don't know. I don't know. You know, just pick, like, the five most attractive dudes in League of Legends as as your strategy. And if it works, it works. That's all that really matters. We will see, we will see the Lucian going mid. So Peckles about to show us something. Pulling something out of the bag tonight. Uh, I'm excited to see what Peckles is able to do here on this Lucian. Uh, it's a very interesting mid lane champion. You talk about the mid lane build, even. Building so much mana coming through on that. Going up against the Ari as well. I mean, the two very mobile champions. I mean, Lucian has that slip and slide. Uh, Ari, Alti is just three flashes. I mean, it's, it's pretty strong. Uh, so I'm excited to see these two duel. Obviously, you're going to pick the Lucian to get the edge early on, but Ari's no slouch in the early game either. Charm is absolutely devastating in situations where the jungler's nearby, especially that 2v2 if you could land the Charm. Uh, it's just such a good form of CC because not only does it stop movement, stops everything, it also uh, lessens the gap between you and the opponent. So something to keep your eye on there in the mid lane is the mid jungle 2v2. Olaf, obviously a bigger beast in the early game than Hecarim is. So once again, um, we have the scaling comp. We have this composition that is very, very confident in the mid game if they can get that early game jump. So I've got my eyes on Nate Mac. I've got my eyes on Peckles here for SAU, whether or not they can stem the tide. And on the other side, that kind of affects how I'm looking at the Jets because I've definitely got my eyes on Jinxon, how they can hold back the Lucian played by Peckles. And I've got my eyes on Yo-Yo Dog. How can you manage this early game? Because Mordekaiser can be a lane bully at times, especially when you are playing this Gnosis, right? You are playing a champion that's just supposed to scale, stack up, and do something in the late game. So we're going to see how that does pan out. We got a let's go bees in chat. Chat, let me know who you have winning in game number two, whether or not the Jets can pull this off, and we'll be headed to a full three-game series. That can be exciting. No better way to start a Thursday night 
then with a three-game series, of course, we will be having our 8 o'clock game later on. That's going to be our Challengers division. Hood College Blazers trying to force a tie at the bottom of the playoff standings going up against the Rio Grande Red Storm. Still looking for their first win on the season. We'll see if they're able to secure the bag in that aspect. Talking about this current game, we're going to break it down position by position, as we always do here on stream. Mordekaiser, piloted by It's Nico TV, had a solid game last game, going up against Yo-Yo Dog, piloting that Gnosis. I'm giving the advantage early on to Mordekaiser, absolute lame bully. We talked about this a little bit. Yo-Yo Dog's going to have to put in the work, mechanically, positioning. Micro game's going to be on point. If they want to stay in this lane early on, I'm, I'm, as that, that's just where it sits. Early Mordekaiser, late Gnosis. Moving forward, it's the same story across the board. It's what it sort of feels like. Olaf Heckram, Olaf can be an absolute beast early on. And can transfer that late game. You just need to get a jump start. You need to get some items under your belt. Nate Mac early. Heckram, Heckram late. Once again, that's, that's all there is to it. I think that... I'm going to slide the way of Starbucks just because we saw Starbucks had such a great game last game on that Graves. And I really feel like there's something about this Hecarim that's going to cater towards the play style even a little bit more. Peckles going up to Zingshin in the mid lane. Ari against Lucian. I don't know much about this matchup. Ari going up against Lucian. But I'm putting my money on Peckles to win this lane just because of how dominant Peckles was last game. B, if you're pulling out a pocket pick like Lucian mid, you have to be pretty darn confident. The build path is completely different than Lucian bot. Uh, the itemization is completely different than, than Lucian bot. You're building a lot of mana. I think that mana mute might be the first item. So, or second? I, mana mute's in the build. I'm almost 100% I'm almost certain. So, there's a lot going on in that build. And you have to be pretty confident to bust it out here on this stage. Trying to keep your playoff hopes alive. Trying to put away the Jets in a quick 2-0 sweep. We're going to see how Peckles does fare, but I've got my money on them right now. Bot lane, Ezreal and Pantheon played by Albizi and Balloon Pants respectively going up against Misfortune, piloted by Sparacco, and Alistar being played by Trent, who had a very solid game last game. I'm giving this advantage to Misfortune, Alistar in the bot lane. The Jets, it feels like such an easier lane to execute. Uh, the Ezreal's got a lot of mobility going on, a lot of options. Pantheon is just... I mean, it's kind of off meta support, right? Putting that bruiser in the bot lane. There's a lot of positives that go with it, but Alistar Misfortune just feels right. Feels like a peanut butter jelly sandwich and a cold glass of milk on a hot day. It's just a classic combo. Uh, those two together just feel right, as I said. Putting my money on them in the bot lane. Obviously, that's why they play the game to find out, and this comes to fruition. Chat, how are we feeling? Who are we rocking? Bracket, Dosso Sosso, loving the energy. At NECC Games on Twitter, we'll have all of the playoff information in addition to the websites there in the bio um, that will give you the uh, the records and how many qualifying each. We've got two divisions going on. So you can absolutely check that out for all of the information. Thank you for stopping by. It's always a good time on Thursday nights here in the NECC. Loading into this game, number two in our best two out of three. The SAUBs trying to complete the sweep and keep the playoff dreams alive. Look good heading into the playoffs. But the Jackson Jets attempting to play a little bit of spoilers. I have now loaded into the game. I'm paused at five seconds. Waiting for the go-ahead for my producer. Are we all good? All right, we're going to start the game in three, two, one, and go! Game number two, the SAUBs coming out on the blue side of the map once again. Led out by It's Nico TV in the top lane. Nate Mac in the jungle. Peckles in the mid lane. Playing an off meta Lucian. Al Beasy and Balloon Pants rounding out the bot lane. Yo Yo Dog in the top lane coming out for the Jets on the red side of the map. Followed by Starbucks, Jinxon, Sparacco, and Trent. We are getting ready to go here. Five minutes top side. Yo, your dog got to be very cognizant. Balloon pants. I would not be super surprised to see Flash CC here. These bees like to play a little bit loose. Oh, and they're trying to back. Peckles, Peckles wants it. They might be able to get this gold in the ward, and they will hand that over to Peckles. Oh, look at that strong. One CS lead. Just, uh, just right off of the sunset now. One CS lead. 
You know that, you know that kid that brought the ball to the playground that always changed the rules as soon as they started winning? They just they just left, said they got the dub? That's Peckles right now. Peckles just wants to go home. Say, yeah, I got that CS. I got that CS under my belt, though. Oh, my goodness. One minute and 17 seconds into this game. Doesn't look like we're going to get any level one action. We do see... Alistar pinging up that there is exhaust on Balloon Pants. Very good note. They're not going to have quite as much damage there in the bot lane. Jinx is going to get it going with a little bit of damage there. Did not fare super well against Peckles last game when we got to the late game. But early on, Jinx has played so well on that Lux. As I said, about as mobile as a Lux can be, using the flash in such an aggressive manner. It's Nico TV. Bullying just a little bit. It's what we expect to see in the top lane that Nasus is not going to be able to do much early. And look at that. Peckles getting that wave of farm and just pushing under tower. Jinx had got two once he has that whole wave. Just scooped up their second. It's going to be a struggle if that is the norm. Oh my goodness. If you see the same in the top lane. It's Nico TV going in, doubling the CS here early on for Yo Yo Dog. Just being an absolute bully. Trent and Spareko. Both bot lanes just trying to hit level 2 first, especially if there's Alistar. You're not doing much, and you do hit level 2 there. Trent does get the opportunity. CC onto the Ezreal. Abizi taking a bit of damage. Solid trade off there from Trent. Hitting level 2, forcing the issue right there, just like it's Nico TV forcing the issue on the top side of the map. Both these teams want a decent amount of time. Memory serves in game number one for first blood, which ended up being Starbucks being caught out by Peckles, who rotated up from the mid lane. We'll see how long first blood does take right here in game number two. As I said, the bees feel like they're playing loose right here. That charm's not gonna connect to the flag coming through. Peckles doing a decent amount of damage right there. Yo-Yo Dog already gonna start losing the farm tower. Gonna take a lot of damage on the tower as well. It's Nico TV just bullying. Give me your lunch money, Yo-Yo Dog. Oh my gosh, and the next wave just pushing out a tower once again. Yo-Yo Dog not having a lot of fun here early on. Missing out, yes, missing out on stacks under this tower. It's Nico TV knows exactly what they're doing. And we might see a gank here from Starbucks just trying to help out, but it smelled out. Look at this, Peckles rotating up. Went back a little too early. It's Nico TV running. Here comes Peckles. The bait of the 2v2 situation. Turning to a 3v2. Nate Mac is here. Starbucks going low. Flash is coming through. First blood to Nate Mac. The bees spill it here a little bit earlier than they did in the last game. Trent going in. CC drops. Moreko dropping some damage. LPZ has the phase shift out of there. They do win that trade. Trent does take a brunt of the damage with Spareko coming out very healthy. Great play by Peckles and Nate Mac rotating up to the top side. So instinctual just to sniff out that gank and get it done. Looking at this bot lane right now, it does look very, very close. Just about even on CS. No real event being given here early on. But once again, I just feel like this Alistar MF combo, as we've seen the engages already, just feels so potent in so many different ways. Uh, in lane, especially team fight. You've seen with, uh, the gauge here. Namek got a... This is that... We... Uh, so, about rotating up just to sure that they do secure that vision. And Yo-Yo Dog flipping the momentum here on the top side. Now pushing the wave under the tower of its Nico TV. And it's Nico TV now has the Farmer Tower up 10 CS. Uh, is the result of Yo-Yo Dog backing on though, like has the sap, still has to control towards the inventory, does have the biscuits coming in, so stabilizing in a solid place. It's gonna drop a ward there. Look at the look at the top side of your mini map there. Pink ward has been dropped, so they will see a counter game coming next time. Good play by Yo Yo Dog, being very cognizant of not wanting to fall behind even further, but is a level behind there. Was not cognizant of that disadvantage. Does make it TV fighting way, so we'll take a decent amount of damage on the crackback, but Yo Yo Dog's still not going to win on the trade. It's TV with the grab. A lot of damage coming through. Pop the Omni. Just hit six. Yo Yo Dog. Nowhere to run, but six feet deep. Oh, trying to get out with the wave, right? No. Yo Yo Dog escapes. Houdini in the flesh. 
It's Nico TV not quite able to finish off what seemed like an easy kill there on the top side. Yo Yo Dog sticking around very dangerously. Gets hit with the one two punch, but Hecarim is in the vicinity. They may prefer, oh my gosh, Peckles. Woo! Gunned down in the mid lane. Oh my gosh. Line him up and knock him down. The culling comes through. Yo Yo Dog so low. Nate back here with the counter gang to Starbucks. It's Nico TV going to fall to the tower after Nate Max does too. Oh my gosh, a double kill for Starbucks in the top lane. Peckle saying, hold on, just hit it. Oops. They're one of the what the garbage pickup day, and Peckles just happens to be driving the dump truck today. Gets a free kill at the top side, 2 0 and 1. Peckles already with a bag on their head, worth 150 gold right now. Seven minutes into this game, first dragon is on the table. Sporaco and Trent going to stay in the bot lane. They're going to have time to do this dragon. So good recognition, side back. They're going to be able to do it. Namak would get in there. They want to sacrifice the life for it, but they don't even know dragons will be taken. Pantheon is starting to make blue man. And hey, 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 lane is Mia. It's not going to matter. Too little to play. First neutral objective of the game. Once again, handed over to the Jackson Jets. Yo, yo, dog. Has stabilized a little bit in this lane. A very much of a back and forth in there, but does have the sheen, which is going to feel good for being able to spam those abilities a little bit more. A little bit more regularity, trying to get in and going to help the CS there. But it's Nico TV is going to put out a decent amount of damage, especially with that haunted guys. You deal percentage damage for each second in combat with enemy champions. Yo, your dog's going to always be in combat just because your melee champ going up against a melee champ. Both of you are going to be very, very close to each other. And yo, your dog, whoo, putting it in, just not able. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Another ulti, the charm comes through, good enough, kicks in, slip and slide, tick, tick, tick. Oh, the flash coming through, Jinxin, gonna go down, but they do end up scooping up the kill onto Peckles. Very aggressive play from Jinxin, Jinxin. very reminiscent of the Lux play we saw in game number one. Does set up a kill for the juggler there. Starbucks at three and two right now. We've talked about how this Hecarim is such a danger in the late game and might be a danger as soon as the early mid game here, considering they already have three kills under their belt. Ezio TV continuing to bully this top lane matchup, pushing waves under tower. Everyone is six at a minimum across the board right now. All these available. Nate Mac proxy farming. They're trying to starve Yo Yo Dog out under this tower. Nate Mac comes through, pops the Ragnarok. Bada bang, bada boom, scoops up the kill. Good teamwork, and they may be able to put some work on these plates. Hecarim now responding to the top side. We'll see what it's Nico TV, excuse me, what Starbucks can do, and does look pretty successful. Will ward off the onslaught there, going to keep the rest of those plates intact. Trent looking for an opening here. You can kind of, you can see it. You can tell the path they have a support when they're really trying to go. And as a support main, I'm, 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 allowed, to, I'm allowed to point out the tendency. Uh, you see Trent hovering on the top side of that wave, just looking to force them into that CC, force them into a bad position. I like the position of Trent. They just haven't been able to find an open window as of yet. As I say that, going in here, balloon pants. Build. Trent just has to hit one more auto. They are going to back off Sparacco, not going to lose that trade. And here comes Peckles rotating down. Starfall coming through. Exhaust is dropped. Great exhaust from Trent there. Turns around to drop the two. Not going to get anyone on that. Sparacco will burn the heal on the back side of that engage. Rift Herald on the table now. Next dragon will be up in just about two minutes and ten seconds. Peckles! Fancy footwork gets the kill. Trent may be next, but here comes Starbucks. Has a solid amount of items we've been talking about. Has a solid amount of kill. Trent gets out of the backside. Peckles will not share the same fate. Starbucks in the 1v3. The double kill. Starbucks, oh my gosh, the triple kill. A Fenty cup of damage coming out from Starbucks right there. Ooh, does not have the guts to take on Nate Mac, and rightfully so. It was three and one coming in, but Starbucks six, two, and zero oh right now. Goodness, a game.
dominated by the junglers right now. Peckles put in a strong performance, but 6-2-0 and oh is just what was needed from the Jets last game. They didn't have that move. They didn't have that person they could turn to that could be the well for them. And they found it here. Starbucks maybe in a bit of trouble. Turns it around now. Oh, the Ragnarok has been pop. Nate Mac trying to maneuver here. Oh, just gonna find the Ari! The flash. Ari Alti following on the backside. Put some damage into the back. Autos come through. That will be a kill on the top side of the map. Yo-Yo Dog gonna go down here most likely. Alti is pop. Trading. Alti's flashing. It's Nico TV stuck under tower. Should be able to walk out the backside and does just that. A one for one trade across the map. The top lane fall. Fall. Next up and no one been made for this first rip trail. They had no vision even place. Starbucks going on Instinct TV. This is gonna be ugly for the TV most likely. Oh my gosh. The finesse. Instinct TV going to be able to escape right there. Good usage of the pole. Who? A cutting out attack, says SAU Sports. I will down. A tiny bit. Uh, the excitement, the peaking of Starbucks over the wall here. Peckles going in. Oh, yo, yo, trying to fight Peckles. Peckles, 1v1 situation. Hops out the backside wall. Got to find the bottom side of the map. Alti coming through from the Ezreal. Think it's, think it's internet? All right, I will leave the mic exactly where it's at. You got to love, got to love the Discord, the musty internet. Uh, <laughs> And Comcast we trust for this stream <laughs> and moving forward. So we'll see if, uh, if Comcast's on our side today is up. Dragon is picked up by SAU right there. Nate Max scooping up some of those honey fruits in the river, getting in tip top shape, trying to invade the jungle a little bit. Hecarim not even in the same zip code right now as where they want to be, but running in at full speed. We're going to see a collapse right here. Ari should be coming down. They could have had a 4v3 numbers advantage if Jinxon had decided to take that opportunity, but they are just going to let the bees walk out of the jungle unharmed right there. It's Neo TV continuing to push here against Yo-Yo Dog, trying to get a little bit of CS there in the back end, trying to stack it up. Yo-Yo Dog, let's just check and see how many stacks they've got really quickly here. 156, not a bad amount, but I mean, <laughs> that's uh, not a great amount. Not a great amount. Only at 70 CS right now. Uh, it's the OT. Kind of have a pop game. It's going to have to be in the late game. You're just going to have to AFK farm in the top lane. It's honestly what it is. It's the OT. Maybe we'll find a kill here under tower. Does have the ultimate available. We'll see what happens. But Realm is up right now. Heckle is coming up. And here comes the Calvary to the top side, though. Hold on just a May see a fight on the top side of the map in two or three v four situation, but they st out nothing. It looks like it will come to this. Maybe the Rift Herald will, but they're going to trade a bot side tower for it. Peckles in the vicinity. We'll see what Peckles can do as the push continues on the bottom half of the map. Peckles going to take the blast home through the wall. They may find a kill the OU dog here. Extending just by virtue of the team being around. Peckles not going to find the damage here. They do scoop the kill out of the Rift Herald. They poke an eye of the arrow to get 2MF right there. Now moving to the top side, looking for a kill at worst. Probably just going to take this wave, start pushing the tower a little bit. They don't end up giving that tower on the bottom half of the map. That will remain for the time being at least. Going down right now. First tower gold handed over to the SAU Beast. Starbucks going in. Oh no. Oh no! Starbucks, what is that damage? It's the black got exactly what they needed and got right out looking like a Taco Bell drive through Oh my goodness. Beat, beat. Where are you going? Nate Mac does not have the feet to catch right there. 15 minutes in this game. And once again, just like game number one, it is looking very close. Spareko and Trent getting back into the bot lane here. They are going to start pushing this in. As I said, 15 minutes and 40 seconds into this game. If you're just joining us, this is series number one. Best two out of three out of our out of our two series tonight. Later on, we will have Rio Grande winless on the year, trying to walk away with their first dub tonight, going up against the Hood College Blazers. 
who may still have a shot to make the playoffs, depending on how things shake out. They force the tiebreaker at the bottom of the standings here. Neymar coming in. There's the sky ball coming from the preview team situation. Good coordination to come here from the bees. Flashing coming from the back end. Heckles trying to catch up. Will get some assists from there. Nate back continuing on to Trent. No tower here. Trent flashing, but it's not going to be enough with no tower. Does get another flash return, turn. And here comes Starbucks. Should probably not jump in and won't decide to do so. But Starbucks is still coming in from the city there at the very end. And now may find out easy out. Starbucks isolated here in River. They, they may be able to find a play onto it. Uh, but you also don't want to forget the Starbucks there and run back. OT, CS, OYO Dog just backing up a little bit. Pushing in this tower. This top tower is holding strong right now. And OYO Dog absolutely needs it. Some rest. Oh my gosh, Beckles. Oh, the slip and slide coming through. Look at the boom. The boom work is not going to matter. Going down, there's just too much damage. Balloon pants. Running for their life. Here comes the Calvary. Uh, Ezra Alzi not going to find his intended target. Namak running the back end. The flash axe not quite enough. Alistar coming through with the headbutt. Ooh, and he's Yo Yo Dog fighting his OP. There's the grab on the top side. Ultimate is a goal for both players. It's Pico TV trying to find an entry point of Yo Yo Dog and has been trying to find a tower for quite some time. Only able to prosper and getting kills when ganked, but up so much farmer now. 34 CS advantage on the top side, looking so good. It's Nico TV right now on this board. Guys, the dog trying to find the CS, will get grabbed. It's Nico TV has alt available. Decides not to pop that pump that thing. It might have yielded a kill. Holding on to be very, very patient. You do have to commend the patience of the TV. And both these teams in general are very patient tonight. As this dragon will fall in favor of SAU. Two situations back in the past, trying to put some damage there. But you really just can't fight with Hecker. Trap picks up the kill, but Hecker provided all of the damage there. It's TV trying to finally get this tower down. Doing a lot of damage to him, pushing in very successfully. As we see a bit of a counter push develop in the mid lane. They scooped up the dragon that they wanted. Now they're trying to scoop up the tower that they want. Albizi, Starbucks moving in, shifts out under tower, going to take the tower shots. It's just nothing can be done. Starbucks eight, three, and two right now. Massive KDA coming through. Six, four, and two. The next week is KDA. That'll be in the mid lane coming through from Peckles. It's Nico TV trying to track down Yo Yo Dog. Does have ultimate level still. I probably call Yo Yo Dog here. Right, trying some sort of. Ooh, holds on to it. It's Nico TV so, so patient. Four members hovering around the top side of the map right now. So you still have to be very, very careful. MF making rain right there. Backing up. Just gonna clear out this vision. Both teams that said hovering around the top side. Baron Nasher will spawn in 41 seconds. Balloon Pan clearing out some. And we saw both teams dance around Baron Pit for quite some time last game. Not really making the first move, neither wanting to make that first move. We'll see if that's different here, but vision is being applied very diligently from both sides. It's something they like to see. A showcase of strong macro fundamentals from both teams right now. I'm excited to see how SE approaches this for the rest of the game. This heck of the game. As Nate Mac is getting gone in on. Ooh, Charm will not go through Ragnarok right there. It's Nico TV will scoop up that power. In a bit of trouble here, but here comes Balloon Pants. Yo Yo Dog may actually be the one in trouble. And what an odd fight. Look at this sandwich here. SAU between two lines of Jets. And Yo Yo Dog will turn this fight around. I don't think the Bees are going to get any kills on this. They pack. Next one in line. Oh, they don't find anything else. The Bees somehow still alive. They are just thriving in the hive. Oh, Yo Yo Dog eventually going to finally pick up a kill. Trent somehow. Not going to die right there. Oh my gosh, the Jets find a kill under tower, getting it done. Sticking around in this game, and they actually are enjoying what is close on for that. 
SAU has to feel like they're in familiar territory right now. They blew the 1-0 lead the last time we saw them on stream. You got to think their mind's in the same place. What is their mental fortitude like right now? Can they do it? Can they stick around? I mean, we saw them pick up early game composition. They accept it, right? When you have the solution, uh, a little bit less so in the mid lane because you do build the man immune. You're much more remote late game, but Olaf is really just kind of peaks early on. I mean, Ragnarok is just through the whole game uh, for engaging and getting things done, but it's just not the same animal you are in the early game. Rubba Dub Dub and Chet asking, how did the Jets survive that dive? I have absolutely no idea. So well coordinated, bouncing tower aggro. I think you really have to give a lot of props to Trent right there, getting it done. Uh, seemed to be coordinating things, allowed the rest of the team to wait up, drew that tower aggro, and got in there and got it done. Starfall coming through on the Yo-Yo Dog. Do they finally find the kick here? Maybe so, Yo-Yo Dog. Going to get the ulti right to the back. Yo-Yo Dog may actually survive. Yo-Yo Dog's ult was so fast in there, flashing out reinforcements coming through. Ezra ult is going to be nothing but a bit of a tickle. Jinxin, Trent, Mr. Sporko in the area, responding. Orb has been popped right there. We've got to go Jets and at all right, momentum building. They're not going to actually try this bear right now, right? They are down gold, and here comes the engage. Elmo coming through. CT, there it is. Bullet time from the MF. Not going to do a whole lot. It's Nico not able to find the map right there. They will just clear the vision. Clearing some more vision there. Trent getting right in the middle. Look at the game. Blue Ben's going to start the fight. But so will Trent. Oh, Trent! The back side! Houdini! Once again! Oh my god! What other things are up to sleeve? Peckles taking some damage. Jinxin going to miss the charm over the wall. Oh my. Trent right now is absolutely flirting with death. Tapping it off shoulder, making an advance, making a move. Oh my. Starbucks trying to find out Namak. Absolutely deleted like a stick of butter in the furnace. Starbucks going to go down the front that though. Peckles will scoop up the shutdown gold. Keep your eyes on what Peckles is able to buy with that. Trent going to escape death once again. Moreko popping out on the backside. Trent looking to engage, trying to see Jinxon. Headbutt will escape once again. They do scoop up the drag, the third one for them. Jinxon going low. Gold. Trying yet another SAU's hero last game. Getting it done once again. It's Nico TV from their life. Peckles trying to drop some damage. Balloon pants there as well. Dropping CC. Yo Yo Dog finally picks it up. Trent finally going lay in the grave that was dug for them about 20 minutes ago. Just their second death of the game. Sitting at one, two, and eight. Balloon pants going to pop. Cryer's orb. That whole sequence was so big for the bees. Once again, like last game, we saw a similar sequence. They were losing it, losing it, losing it. It felt like the Jets were going to be able to get it done. But SAU sticking around. The only thing is there's a lot more pressure on them to do something this game. They can't just sit around. They can't just stick around. Staying in this game isn't enough. You have to be more proactive given the compositions, given how fed Starbucks is right now. I, I thought Starbucks was gonna start soloing Baron. I'm not gonna lie. Breath was being had. Uh, honestly, Triforce has the Steris Gauge, Ninja Tabi, maybe on that next item. Once that Aegis item is completed, oh, this is gonna be ugly. Peckles, I'm not sure you have the damage to deal with this. Yeah, the fear comes through, interrupting all the Another kill pick up full time onto Nate Max. Ooh, Ranger on top of the backside. Trent, Yo Yo Dog, scrapping it out right now. Ooh. Will go down there in the Pantheon, but as will Trent and the Nauseus. Starbucks finally responded, but taking a lot of damage. There's the grab. It's Nico TV trying to get the kill to Aldi. Will do so with the swing of the club. Wow. So they finally get another kill on to that Hecarim, and SAU winning a team fight for once. Keep your eyes on the bottom side of the map. Being pushed in by Jinxon right now, but it looks like it's mid tower. May not be long for the world. We'll see what Sparacco has on their sleeve, but no bullet time available. It's very hard to do anything without the bullet time. They will take down that tower. Nate Mac, Albizi rotating up. 
They're talking about the red buff. They're talking about the Baron right now. Mm. Talking about this Baron. We're going to see if they really go for it. If they're just warning it, they're going for it. SAU put it on the line. They have a shot right here. Sparacco has no bullet time over the back side of the wall. Yo-Yo Dog coming in. Shrek coming in. Can they do it? They just have to hit the spike. Hector will not be this drag, or this not, excuse me, not the drag, but it's very mid time. Here it is. Shrek only has the nap. The spike comes through. Hector's on the front side. So much damage being laid down. The B! And Dingle TV stays alive. Double kill for Peckles. Oh, man. Big stuff from them right there, being so decisive, claiming the Baron. Wow, SAU is playing with some gut. They're playing with some grit, and right now it's rewarding them in the latter half of this game. Looking at what the map looks like post Baron here, getting our bearings, a minute and some change, minute and a half, about to be exact. Uh, for this next dragon, which will be sold for the side of SAU. They already have the Baron buff. Things are just kind of turning. It's turning up all bees right now. All bees all the time. But once again, their composition isn't as well equipped to stay into the late game. So we're going to see if they start falling off at all or not. It's Yo Yo Dog taking on Yo Dog on the top lane. And Yo Yo Dog getting the best in. This is it right here. Talking about getting towards that late game that Nasa starts to stack up, has the Triforce, has the Spirit Massage, is starting to become a real threat. And that's only going to become more apparent the later we get in the game. SAU has to start making their move. They make and put some on to Jackson. Spareko pinging that the ult is ready. We're going to try to make a move. Watch the Jets be aggressive off the engage of Trent. If Jinxon can land a charm, oh, Peckle just, just sending it right there. Ezra Alti, oh, Jinxon goes low. Jinxon probably going to have to back off the back end. He's going to open up some time in the mid lane, and they will get the tower. Doss is collapsing. Peckles might be in a little bit of trouble, but uses the E to get out the backside. Oh, look at Trent just going in, trying to get opportunities, but there's no follow up. The team is not there. Is it just a bait? Trent taking some damage, retreats into the bush, and here's Starbucks coming through. Teleport into mid lane. Keep your eye on that one. That's going to be more guys are joining the fight a little bit late. It's Nico TV coming through, not going to find the grab. Peckles, yo yo jog, drop CC. Oh my. Marengo with the early fire there. Yo-Yo Dog stay the line. The Ezreal, not quite enough, but they will find the goal. The Trent Yo-Yo Dog escapes death again. Peckles here on the front line. A serious threat. Starbucks lurking on the right-hand side of your screen right there. Trying to run out right now. Pushing that mid and Nasus move off the back. And they do scoop up the soul. With all that was happening, Cloud Soul is attained by the bees, and what's more massive is they stack three cloud drags into it. The ultimate speed is going to be big. The movement speed is going to be massive. On Nate Mac, Ragnarok, plus Cloud Soul. Oh, so dirty. I'm going to have to take a shower after just thinking about it. Peckles running away from Starbucks right now, dropping some damage, trying to hold that dude over the wall. Jinxon right there. Hops in the pit. We'll be able to scoop up the kill. So despite Baron is spiking up the drag soul. They do find a big, big kill onto this Lucian, who's now sitting at 10, 7, and 4. The slow drop on the balloon pan. Running. Aggressive positioning, but it's not going to be punishable here. The B staying relatively healthy on the front end. Committing to a mid lane push right here. Ari going to the bot side to farm a little bit. And so much farther. This is very important. If Jinx is able to catch back up the course of this game, who will engage here on the backside. Ragnarok is dropped. There's a full of time. Trent can get a decent amount of damage. Blue Pants running the backside. Has to flash out right there. Yo Yo Dog and Star going in. Blue Pants will escape. The only death right now. Peckles out of grace, but should be joining soon. Yo Yo Dog pops to all the illegal TV. Running, running. Will go down. Marengo kills that. Kills. Scoop that kill, excuse me. Now on a good street, but here comes the loot, and enjoy the fight. Peckles, fuck out. It's a massacre. It's a massacre. The Jets cannot escape the fear of Peckles. Oh, the quick.
Quadra kill! Spawns into the game, runs right down mid lane, and just lights everybody on fire! Woo! Peckles, you are a madman! Running it right down mid lane, waiting for the wave. That Quadra had to feel cathartic, had to feel so, so good. And that might just be enough to propel them to the win here. Nate back going so low. The fight was so good for the Jets, but Peckles joining it late just absolutely annihilates the competition. 31 minutes and 26 seconds into this one, and a lot has changed, but a lot feels the same from last game. A tight contest in which Peckles really feels like the MVP. About since right now, inhibitor has been cracked for the Bees. Problem is that the next team fight, if the Bees can win, would end the game. You have an opportunity to get to the Nexus right now. Happy, very cognizant of that. Keep that at the front of your mind if you are Jackson. Next Baron will be on the map in five seconds here. Two minutes and 50 seconds until that next Elder Dragon. We're going to see how this one unfolds. Be very surprised if we didn't see it about 30 seconds to Elder Drake spawn. Both teams just kind of hung around pit. That is the way that I want to end the game if I'm SAU. Give me the Elder Dragon at the same time. That's the way I get back into the game with a steal. They may have put Yo-Yo Dog out here. Fancy footwork going to escape. Good micro game there. Continue Starbucks turning it around. Trying to find some damage. Starbucks. Caught in the all the TV on the front line. Look at Trent, the bullet time. But it's not gonna get what they would like, but it does pick up Nico TV off the charm. Trent still alive. Houdini back for a third act. Yo yo dog probably gonna go down here. Peckles picks up the kill. The act's not gonna come through. Spareko staying alive with Trent. Oh, so they don't come out the victors of that fight, losing a two for one trade, but three members stay alive, and that should be enough for them to clean up the waves, but they will have to give up this Baron, putting SAU just that much closer to putting the finishing touches on this game. Tower will go down the bot side. Good push there by Peckles. Being very, very intentional with the time they're spending on the map. Scooting down the bottom side, getting pressure. And gets until drag. And that is going to be like the game if SAU can pick it up. On the other hand, with the scaling comp, how everything's going, if it can be stolen away, it'd be absolutely massive. Jinxon running down the bot side of the map here. And here's what I said. At about 30 seconds, expect both teams really try to contest the front side of this pit. You don't want a 50-50 if you're SAU. You want to be able to secure it very, very safely. On the other side, obviously, if you are Jackson, if you are the Jets, if you're trying to find an entry point onto this drag pit, we're going to see the zoning ability. Jackson did it so well last game. If SAU could find a solid amount of zoning here. Oh, Jinxon gets caught out in the all team. He's gonna hop over the wall and perish right there. They may find two more kills in here. This might just be the game. Trent running, can it find the heal? Starbucks, unstoppable, stays alive, but we'll go down to Pekka. Trent next on the chopping block, that's a lot of beat. They get three kills for nothing, and the Jackson Jets have been grounded here in game number two. Gonna hit the 35 minute mark, and this one looks like it's all in the books. Yo-Yo Dog, Sparaco, the last one's alive. They need a match for full of time, but Yo-Yo Dog's gonna go down in a hurry, and Sparaco gonna go down as well. One more act there at the eight. The Jets have been grounded. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. The Bees are looking good heading into the playoffs. SAU with the clean two to zero sweep. What a series we just saw unfold before our eyes. SAU 
bit of a tune-up before the playoffs, and they are looking good. I believe that win, they do secure their playoff dream, so we will be seeing them moving forward here in the NECC. Playoffs happening very, very soon. We have a second match of League of Legends coming towards us. I need a little break. I know your eardrums need a little break. I'm a loud dude, all right? I, I understand it, so... Game plan, everyone in chat. We're going to be back here in a little bit for our next matchup between the Hood College Blazers and the Rio Grande Red Storm. Looking for their first win on the year. Get some snacks. Give the eardrums a break. We'll be right back here before you know it.
and welcome. Am I good? <laughs> Am I good? All right, we are. We are live. You know, we're just we're, we're getting it done, making sure we're all on the same page here after having a game number one. We appreciate everyone sticking around here. We have joined after the first round of bands here. We've got Hood College on the left hand side of your screen going up against Rio Grande, the Red Storm on the right hand side. Hood College trying to force a tiebreaker here. Uh, at the bottom half of the playoffs, Rio Grande is still looking for the first one of the season. This feels much more like a we-can-do-it outing for Rio Grande. They need this. Uh, so we're going to see how it comes through. And I really like how Rio Grande started picking Mordekaiser, Graves, two strong picks. On the other side, we see this Kaisa coming out. Rek'Sai could be hot. All right, Rek'Sai is locked in. And Slink going to lock in that Ari right away as well. We have followed this team closely, Hood. We've had them on stream a number of times. And every time it feels like they're very close. Their record, in my opinion, is not indicative of how good this team is. I, think, I believe they're one win, uh, but like I said, still have a shot to sneak in the bottom half of that playoff bracket. They are so close to putting the pieces together. If this team could see us a little bit better per minute, I think that they can really compete, really punch up out of their weight class. A lot of other teams. We're going to see how that comes through right here. Uh, the assumption is that we are we are picking LCS order, so that Kaisa is probably not going top, but will be traded out. That's just what happens. We're not using Pro Draft. And he locked in there in the mid lane for Jedi King. Had an okay week last week. Said that name a solid amount. As the Thresh will be taken off the table right there as was the set in our second round of bands. And I said, I really appreciate everyone sticking around and chat between the games. Uh, you're watching the NECC, sponsored by HyperX. No matter who you are or how you play, we're all gamers. And by ESTV, the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities. Last two bands there were going to be the Lux and Shaco. We had a no band to start it off. Or, oh, no, that was no bad. That, it's right to left on the left side. Okay, <laughs> that that threw me for a loop for a second as we do see the Lucian go. Uh, they, they must have been paying attention to that last game to ban that Lucian out. I will say, Hood has a strong matching color scheme right now. We've got these dark purple hues. It's a very nice vibe. I'm going to be disappointed if they, if they mess it up. I'm writing hood pause. <laughs> okay, Orkin. All right, chat. Uh, what? They've still got these deep vibes going. These cold vibes. Come on. Come on. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right. Hood's losing. They, they betrayed the color scheme. What can I say? <laughs> Jin picked up there for ASAP. We're going to see what Daggett picks in the bot lane. Or support, excuse me, to round out this team. I really like what I'm seeing from both sides. Some feels like some smart picking right now. Dag it, as I said, the last one to lock in. We will see the Braum. Just switch the Braum and Leona. What's the harm? <laughs> Bolivar going to be sent to the top lane there to be played by King Basher. Leona sent to the bot lane, played by Broncliff. Or Bolivar to the top lane there. Kaisa was sent down to Sherido. If I'm not 100% mistaken, was Sherido not playing mid? Last time we saw Hood, is this a switch between Slink and Sherino? Someone in chat may be a big Hood fan. They may know. Also, producers, how long ago did we hit affiliate? I see custom emotes now. This was not here last stream. Hello. Hello. I Okay, maybe I just have never noticed the custom emotes before, but... That's hot. I, I'll i be dropping a sub. Y'all should drop a sub yesterday. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Let me let me spam up chat real quick. Let me spam up chat. I know, I know I'm know. i getting paid to be an analyst and talk, but let me spam up chat with emotes real quick. Oh, yes. Yes, let's go. The emotes are fresh. Okay, let's take a position by position during the spectator delay. Fala Bear going up against Mordecai in the top lane, King Basher and Danny Boy, respectively. We saw a phenomenal Mordecai game last game. I don't think that's the case here in this next series. I'm going Fala Bear, King Basher. There's just something about the aggression that Volley Bear brings, especially when talking about diving towers. I think about the 2v2 situation on the top side and how aggressive you can play with Volley Bear. Mm, so 
good. Opens up so many opportunities. I'm here for it. Rek'Sai going up against Graves. That's Rainbow Madness up against Phobos Marcius. I like the Graves in this situation. This, this is a real toss for me. I love both these junglers uh, right now especially. I think I'm going to lean towards the Graves, but I'm very excited to see what Rainbow Madness can do in Rek'Sai. Rainbow Madness also... Uh, someone to watch out for, in my opinion, on Hood. Like I said, this team is so close to just popping off. They just need to learn to see us a little bit better. We haven't seen them in a week or two, so it'll be nice to see if they've taken the time to watch the VODs, review a little bit, and if they can come back stronger. Down in the mid lane, we got Slink playing Ari going up against Annie. I'm going with the Ari out of mobility. However, you've got to keep your eyes on this Annie. Just because in team fights, if you don't know where Annie is at all points in time, Tibbers will get dropped in the middle of your squad and just blow it up. Just blow it up. Absolutely. Uh, if you get the CC on the Tibbers spellcast, just 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 pack it up. You're not winning that team fight, most likely. I'm going with sling landing phase, but Jedi King can make a massive, massive impact once we get team fights. Kaisa and Leona going up against Jin Braum. This is tough. Because it's going to be feast or famine in this bot lane. One, that's my prediction. Is one side will either will decisively win this matchup. Jin Braum wants to slow down the tempo, right? Jin wants to sit back. Braum wants to put the shield. They just want to farm and let Jin become this monster late game and Braum to peel. Kaisa and Leona are dependent on going in and getting kills. Kaisa needs to stack up. Kaisa needs to level up, get those levels under their belt. These two philosophies just cannot coexist in the bot lane. Feast or Famine, one side will come out on top, but I'm not exactly sure who that's going to be. Someone said they got five bucks. Five bucks on the hood? Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Chat, 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 chat. That is conditioner. That's volumizing conditioner. Get your mind out of the gutter. You see this You see this puff? Unfortunately, that's not natural. I need the volumizing condition. All right, let's, let's, let's pump the brakes. Let's pump the brakes on what you think about me as we head into our first game of this second match. We've got our challengers bracket here, challengers division. Hood College, the Blazers, looking to make some noise and potentially find a way to sneak their way into the playoffs. And going up against the Rio Grande Red Storm. Oh, here is... Oh, Looking for that, this very much feels like a prove-it game for both teams. People would probably say Hood College doesn't deserve to even have a crack at the playoffs, only having one win. They haven't looked the most put together. Rio Grande, on the other hand, a lot of people discounting them. They don't have any wins on the year. It's a prove-it statement game for both teams. Who's going to come out on top? Strap in. Find out. It's going to be a good one. I feel, I can feel it. It's going to be a good one. I'm going to say right now. I'm going to say right now. Keep your eyes on Rainbow Madness. I know I, I I picked the Graves, but the more I think thinking about it, I just got this. There's this feeling deep in my gut, and I'm a big guy, so the, the gut goes pretty deep, deep in my gut. That there's something something about this this it's the Eternum Rex Eye skin. This will change my mind. It's the skin that came through. Uh, I'm excited to see this jungle matchup in general. Phobos going up against Rainbow Madness. That Rex Eye going up against the Graves. Two junglers that are very dynamic, bring a lot of damage to gang gang, and really just mid-jungle 2v2, the top jungle 2v2, are two things that I'm going to really have my eyes on as this game starts to unfold. Hmm. I just realized y'all can't see the skins in the loading screen, so let me let me get the spoiler for you. Is Sharito is coming out with the prestige Kaisa skin? Prestige drop some serious bucks is really about that life as uh, I have loaded in I'm just waiting for the game to actually start up from here to pause at five seconds so We can get on the same page with the production here Small indie company all you know, the servers servers don't always load in right away <laughs> All right, I am now paused at five seconds just wait for the go-ahead from production All right production is there. We're gonna kick it off in three two one and go Go on the blue side coming out here for Hood College. We'll be King Basher in the top lane, Rainbow Madness in the jungle. Old for Ryo. We've got Danny 
boy in the top lane, Phobos in the jungle, Jedi King in the mid lane, ASAP, and dang it, holding down the bot side. And hold on just a second here. Oh, don't want to get charmed. Five man sent to the top lane right away, trying to assert some dominance off Rip is Hood College. I am already know I'm going to say, chat. I'm, I'm going to preemptively, I'm preemptively apologizing. Um, I will say Jedi Knight instead of Jedi King at least eight times. I, there, I just, I can't, I can't not. I like Star Wars. It, it fits better. No, there, Jedi King is, is Jedi Knight. So I'm going to have to apologize. I'm bad about it, genuinely. I hate butchering usernames. It will slip. I, I'm sorry, but now that's out of the way, we can really get out of the game because we do see just some warding here on the boss side. And look at this foreman. They are waiting. Mm. Phobos can rotate around. I like this play a lot. They're not going to find anything, but they will get the end and they will be able to rip up. No vision dropped down by Hood. Not a lick. The drops are going to be moved now, but it's going to be a little too late. Phobos just auto it. Boy, what HP Phobos. <laughs> Phobos played with fire there. Franklin came through and tossed down a Zenith blade and stole that. I may have cried. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. You're now into game here right now. Looking here early on, I'm expecting to see some action from both these junglers. As we said, both very dynamic. Both bring a lot of power into their ganking potential. So we're going to see if that does come through. And not, not if, when and how early. I really want to see Rainbow Madness be activating on in that level two right now. We're going to see if there's any early aggression from Rainbow Madness, Shredo, Franklin doing their thing in the lane as of now, early on in the game, early days. Looking at the items that were bought to start, nothing unusual or out of the ordinary. Both supports did opt to take biscuits. So going to have a decent amount of staying power, that might actually be something to your eye. How long stick around on Here it is. Talk about the aggression. Level three. Trying to find that smoke and hopping over the wall. Dang it, maybe in a decent amount of trouble here. Does pop out. Does get the knock up flash. Coming through CC from the gin. They aren't going to find the kill, but they do get Dagget's flash as well as Jin's heal. So some summoners taken out of the hands of the bottom side of the map could be big. We'll see if Rainbow Madness pays a return visit to the bot side to really take advantage. ASAP Daggett just continuing to CS, trying to push this wave under tower, but the wave currently sitting with Brockwood and Sharito. Danny Boy getting pushed in by King Bash and Rainbow Madness sticking around the bottom half of the map right now. Mid laners not doing much in terms of trading. Annie is destroying this lane right now. Jedi Knight does have all the powers. We do see Slink miss out on a little bit more. CS does get the two minions there. Put it down just four. Graves, keep your eye. Hovering near the middle of the map. Will be working toward the top side of the map here soon. Red buff is on the table. Would not be surprised to see a path such as Red Buff, Krugs, Gank Top. We're going to see it'll be very dependent on how the state of the top lane is, how far pushed up King Basher is on that volley bear. A few things to consider, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them make their first statement, their first attempt at a kill. Oh, nice. Take flash for flash. Oh my goodness, if Phobos goes down, no Raptor. I, I thought for a second that Annie had died, but no. The chicken tenders revenge. <laughs> they do take up down. Phobos died to the rack, getting a little bit too greedy right there. We're going to see what can be done. I mean, that's going to take a lot of time up clear, take a lot of time off the map. If I am Rainbow Madness, my eyes got massive. I am saying, let me invade, let me grab dragon, let me do something. I'm going to be levels up. I'm going to be gold up on this great. Dang it, looking for an opening. Will the Q and hit Sharito with that one. Any boy going to take a little bit of damage under tower. Rek'Sai thinking about this drag, but Dagger responding up with ASAP. Pops over the wall. Rainbow Madness not going to do anything right there. Danny Boy continues to farm just a little bit. Very slow start to this one, but as I said last game, 
I, I like the slow starts because it's very indicative of two teams that aren't going to rush into anything. They're going to take it slow. They're going to play at their pace. They're going to play their game no matter what. Something that you like to see at this level play. It's all too easy to get impatient. We're going to see this gank here. So despite the execution, we still see our first action on the top side. Like I said, we would focus going in, but being only level four, not gonna be able to do a whole ton. King Bash will probably be forced to back off the back end of that but it's gonna be a massive loss. But that gank of the top side. Rainbow Madness taking on the scuttle here in the top side of the river may have their eyes on any or on Graves, who's just been spotted out. Spot the Graves, now going to scoop up those Raptors, still probably looking for angles to Annie, and it's gonna bump into Graves, so the jungle they continue, but will not. Rek'Sai backing out, will not continue that pursuit. So two ganks, no kills have come through, although both ganks have gotten flashes out of hands, so there's a third. We're in the middle lane. Rainbow Man is not going to find anything there. Oh! Timber's strong! Wow! Just came right out with Jedi Knight. A solid amount of damage. Probably going to make Slink back right there. And I like the aggression. Talk about like the patience, like the I like all of it. I'm here for it all. Trito and Brocklip being pushed back on the bot side. And I said it was going to be Feast or Famine. Right now it's Feast for the Shin. Up 10 C S on the Kai'Sa. They are playing exactly what they want to be doing. Their game plan is set up before them, and they are just executing it so well. Timber's putting in some damage on Slink Under Tower, being an absolute bully. Dang it, ASAP. About hit level six. Be careful on the spot side. Once they go in, uh, that curtain call alongside with that Rom ulti coming through with that Glacial Fissure. Could be big. Rek'Sai coming down will be spotted out on the ward, so they do back up. Smart vision play from them. Thousand on hood? Whoa, whoa! I just saw that's from a, that's from a little bit ago. We got a we got a, a one big oh 10k. I can't read. 10k on hood. 10 big ones on hood. Hey man, someone someone look up the Vegas odds for this game. What's the over under? Someone get back to me on that. <laughs> Danny Boy continues just pushing that top side. Volley Bear gonna have to try to salvage that farm under Tower the Wave coming up. We do see the Mordekaiser venturing into the river to drop a ward. A lot of action potentially on the bot side here. Rainbow Madness once again just kind of holding around the vicinity. Trying to bot. Probably close to waste the amount of time that Bobos did for getting executed. So it's all looking like it's going to balance out in the end, in my mind. King Bash, that lightning bolt actually did the massive amount of damage. I was not ready for that. And he's trying to find a little bit of something, something in the mid lane. Rainbow Madness here coming through. Jedi King may have been a little bit far up, but does have Timbers available once again. This is probably going to be a fruitless pursuit, but Molly Bear may be able to collapse down here, close off any exit. We're going to see the Timbers in the veil. He's dropped right there. 2v3 situation. King Basher trying to find Annie. Continues to chase. Probably not what they want. Annie will take a lot of damage to the back there. The charm coming through. Annie will be going to be our first blood game picked up by King Basher. We got some bear on bear combat here. Timbers fight Molly Bear. Oh, the charm comes through. This is some amount of damage. Jedi King. Going to get chunker there. Phobos flashing. Oh my gosh, get out of the way. Drops the, the spite as well. Turns around, puts the strip and dip the chip in that guacamole. Tasted good. Collecting some of that green on the back and a little bit of gold in Rek'Sai's pocket. Wow. Phobos flashing forward so aggressively. Dies for it. Uh, not the greatest look. Teleport back to the top side from Danny Boy after spawning. Dragon is up, but they will be opting for the Rift Herald on the top side of the map. And it should fall here pretty easily. No real chance for anyone to steal the Mordekaiser. But nothing that can hit over that wall. Yep, and then we'll go down. Eye of the Herald will be scooped up by Rainbow Manus, who has yet to back. And is sitting on just about 2k gold right now. 1,950. So, going to be a nice shopping spot. Matt, back a bit right here. 
duck inside. King Danny, or Danny boys, all and King Basher will go down. Sharito just trying to scoop his farm on the bot side. Good play by Danny boy. Teleporting to land, running it right down, popping that realm of death and just getting the kill, getting a bit of a return kill after dying to the gank. Has to feel good, A, and B is good putting the money in your pocket. Solo kill XP is also much more than assisted kill XP. Dang it. ASAP, just sitting in base, having a good time. You know, they're taking slow. Deep breath. Danny Boy will screw up that plate right there. First plate of the game across the map. Put a look at the gold in their pocket. Jedi Knight going to base, take that one. Dragon is on the table. Rainbow Madness looks like they are headed that way. Daggett continues to run it down the bottom side of the map. Slink. Putting in the corner tower. Rainbow Madness right here. Look at this dive. Oh my gosh. What a charm. Going to scoop up the kill. Rainbow Madness. Timmers! Woo! Tibbers gets Annie a little bit of redemption from beyond the grave. Oh my good. This scoop of that up. Rainbow Madness goes down. Daggett trying to clear out some vision around Dragon. Danny boy. King Basher continue to duke it out. Look at the items being built right now. That Spectre Cow is going to feel big against Danny Boy is my prediction considering Amplifying Tome already been bought. The AP damage coming through from that Mordecai to Fat Finger Flash. <laughs> oh, it was not the greatest flash in the world, but it definitely sent a message. That aggression. Un unleashed aggression. Map coordination. Air. Are coming through before Rex Eyes in the vicinity. Exhaust and drop campfires will trigger, and that will be that. Maintaining that CS Lee, although first complete item for the bot lane will be built by Kaisa on that man. Randall Man is staying on the bot side, though. We will see. I mean, you can clearly seen right there, right? When, oh my gosh, the flash coming through from Brooklyn. <laughs> These teams are just going at it with the aggression. Using the flashes like they're absolutely nothing. Here comes the collapse, Brocklin. Rainbow Madness, you gotta be careful. In comes the sandwich, it's the sandwich of damage. Coming through, Brocklin does not care. See the blades right into the middle of four of them and they just walk out. Fat chance now, CC comes through, Phobos picks up the kill. We're all not up three piece. 200 gold separates these two teams. They're now just on the pit. Phobos going in with Jedi King. Charm over the backside of the pit. Ari tries to steal a little bit too soon. Now pulling it. Summoning Rachel to the mid lane. Very good move there by Rainbow Madness. Applying some pressure elsewhere on the map. Going to scoop up a massive amount of gold on the plates right there. Putting their team up for and golden. They should have stayed on the tower. We'll be able to get a little bit more. Oh, Slank going in. One big two situation. Drops the ignite. Jedi King. Tick, tick. Oh, no. Boom. Over the wall. Phobos gets it done. Tower nearly went down. I really think that Rainbow Madness should have stayed on that tower. That would have been first tower. Would have been an absolute massive swing momentum. Your AOK -okay giving up first drag of the game for that. But how it sits, the tower stays on the map. You may have even be able to try to scoop up that kill onto Jedi King. But none of that will come through. They do just settle for getting some of the plates, and they do end up losing Slink and the neutral objective. First drag of the game headed the way of the Red Storm. You know, good footwork there. Not going to get caught up in the CC. Bowl just going to clear some wards in the river. Rek'Sai doing their top side clear, moving to the bottom side right now as is great. So we may have some 3v3 potential here on the bottom side of the map. Provided Bronco doesn't go down, but probably will right here. And ASAP putting in some damage. Solar player is dropping off. Bronco's still probably in a world of trouble right now. ASAP, keep going. Oh, we'll finally pick it up. Shrido going very low as well. Dang it, oh, curtain call. One more will do it. Oh, preeminent blast. Still gonna die. 
double kill right there. Some good accuracy coming through from ASAP. They're gonna be able to push this tower and on the bottom side of the map. If they give up first tower gold, Hood is going to be scratching their head for a minute on that push that came up short in the mid lane. King Basher put in some work there on the top side of the map. Dang it. He made him a shot and claimed his tower. Wave and root. I think they're able to do it. Yeah, Shadow Madness is going to be scratching their head for a while about why they didn't continue that midnight tower. Tabers just dropped Slink, taking a lot of damage right there. Jedi King falling off just to get the farm. We'll take a little bit of damage from Wave. First Tower Gold will be handed over to the Red Storm. Slank goes back into lane, does see the Annie backing. If Annie does back, she should be able to scoop up tower here if they are confident that they know where everyone is on the map. They can just push up and take it. It should be two autos, but just let the minions push it out on their own. Griff Herald. Right there. As a move. Pull. Uh, Putting in some work here, just getting rid of the vision on the bottom side of the map. Still very intriguing. This top lane matchup is very dead even. Not as up at the same KDA. Um, yeah, not up at the same KDA. Farm differential, barely noticeable. Now, now not enough. Very exactly tied. Uh, that, that top matchup is so close, and I really think that it does end up uh, favoring the Volley Bear. Excuse me. In the late game, putting together some sentences got difficult here as the game hit a lull. Uh, Favors the Volibear in the late game. That alternate ability is just so strong. The ability to dive under tower, Stormbringer. You can't play around Stormbringer like you can play around Realm of Death. This QSS will get you out of Realm of Death, so I would not be surprised to see at least Kai'Sa build QSS's Rainbow Madness. We're finally going to see a game in the top side of the map. Stormbringer coming through, maybe a little bit preemptive, but it's not going to matter. They have the damage. They have the meat. They have the kill. Trailing two kills still. Slank in the mid lane will be subjected to a gank right here. Phobos is a flash out. Maybe unnecessary. Maybe predicting a charm coming from Rainbow Bandits. Maybe in a bit of trouble here. Phobos responding up. Vega does hit the Q. Nothing else going to come of that one. Slink just trying to stand her tower. They are going to drop it here right into a gank. Shirito. Oh my goodness. What a timber. Rock was going to be in a lot of trouble. Slink, they did not plan this gank out well at all. But as a matter, Slink does pick up the kill. Rainbow Bandits now coming in. Does get CC'd. Can't find anything, but they do find a charm right there. Braum taking a decent amount of damage, but not the target you want to focus. Shut down gold being handed over to Jin. They have a bag of 200 gold on there right now. Curtain call. 0 for 2. 1 for 3. The. Going. Dang. Not save here, but AF does enough damage to bend them back. They do scoop up the mid tower. Rio Grande looks like they could be the driver's seat for their first win of the year. ASAP pushing in on this mid tower right now. Oh my goodness, the Red Storm in a place they are not familiar with being out so far ahead this game. They're in the driver's seat up 3k gold, up 3 kills, up a dragon. And it looks like they're going to be up 2 dragons here. The objective is on the table. Graves is on it. King Basher in the top lane feels like one of the big out, one of the big hops here. If you are Hood, uh, sitting at a solid 1-1-1, one, one, one. has 100 CS farming well as this dragon is going to go down, hit up by the Red Storm. So get a keep the boot. Bobos get the free one right there over the wall, and they might decide to push with this. Bottom side is pushing in, but alas, they will decide to reset, continue to push that item advantage that they have building all game long off the back of this 3K, closing in on 4K gold lead. To all 31 viewers in chat, once again, appreciate you guys being here for this game. If you aren't already following, if you don't already have notifications on, definitely hit that up. So much quality content coming your way, this channel, by way of this channel. 
especially considering that the playoffs are coming up once again. You can go to at NECC Games on Twitter to find more information about the playoffs, find information in general. The website's in the bio there, so if you're curious, go there as Bash is going in right now on Danny Boy. We might see a response on top of Rexai moving up there, as are Annie and Brahma. They're spotted out, though. We see the Mia Ping. Jin coming up as well. Everyone joining this top lane party. Will they be able to get the kill before the Cavalry comes in time? It looks like they will, but here are Annie and Daggett. Spotted out on that control ward. Not going to be able to do much. So Hood does pick up a much needed kill just to get a little bit of momentum back in their camp. Uh, but they still send the Cavalry top lane. Four top. Just trying to push in this tower. They're going to trade their bot lane tower for it. But perhaps, I guess you don't mind trying to end this game sooner rather than later. You know you have the lead right now. You don't know what the lead's going to look like in one minute, in two minutes, in three minutes. So, not a bad decision to put so many resources on top that map. Charm coming through. Oh, what a bait right there. Bobo going so low. And it's going to be lowered six feet deep when the sling's going to die as well. So they end up trading one for one. Rainbow Madness takes the blast going to escape the grasp of Tibbers right there. Rotating back up to the top side of the map to keep on that tower. But look at the bot side. Two towers deep right now. No one's responding. Mordekaiser, it just clicked. Started to move down the bot side. But Shirito and Brocklin. Put in some serious work on the bottom side of the map. This tier two will fall on the top side, but they are almost at that stage on the bottom side map of the well. So great push on the other side of the street on Brockwood, recognizing that there was an opportunity to do just that. They may catch a kill to the ASAP here. Massive amount of jumps out gold. 500 gold just handed over to King Basher. Oh boy, this is how Hood can get back into the game. They have been persistent. They have stuck around. They are doing all of the right things, and they have, they're have they starting to get rewarded for it. What? Uh, 500 gold is massive. That could not be understated one bit. Bobo's going to pick up that vision off of the Scuttle Crab. Now running out also speed from the Scuttle Crab. Ooh, they do connect, but Leona blowing that ulti right away. Jedi King coming through. Ooh, man. He's gonna trade one for one, but a big tipper. Oh, Jedi King may stay alive for a sec. Jedi King will eventually go down. Sorry. Slink in a whole lot of trouble because this tip is do have Hunter right there if they wish to take it when it's all said and done. It's a one for one trade. Rainbow Madness dying for Jedi King. Obviously, losing Rainbow Madness hurts as the Jedi King. But with Dragon up for a minute and some change, not having the jungler shouldn't be as big of a deal outside of just a numbers advantage. Smite doesn't matter just yet. Danny Boy, flash for flash. Coming through, saving Private Danny. Coming through, Danny, but going together largely unscathed. Clearing waves here in the bot lane. Hood trying to get back into this game. Currently trailing 2k gold and three towers, which is a big one. You can just feel across the map the suffocation that's happening. Uh, they just can't do anything about it. Waves keep pouring in and in and in. They don't have the towers to really defend them off. If the Red Storm just continues at this pace, they are going to win a slow, hard fought game. We're going to see if they're able to keep that up. However, backing out now, they do clear out some waves, pushing out. Next dragon's up in 20 seconds. That would put the Red Storm onto Soul Point. Clearing up mid lane. Looks like they're trying to set up a bit of a trap here. Obos takes some damage. Rainbow Madness trying to find an opening. We're going to see. Taking it very slow. Oh. Not be slow. Try to take some damage. Wow. You can stuff a battery right to mix it. Dropping the ulti. There's the solar flare on top. They're layering their CC. They just don't have the damage. Slink not doing enough. The Volibear not doing enough. The Dragon chipping in a little bit of damage on the side. Close, but there should be no way to lose out. They have Smite available on Phobos right now. That challenging Smite is up. They pull the Dragon. There should be no way to lose out the Dragon. If they don't, that would be putting them right on to Soul Point. Ooh. 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gotta like what the Red Storm are doing in this game. We know they have yet to win all year long, but it's increasingly looking like the curse will be broken tonight. Bobos scooping up that blue buff just after the reset with 25 minutes and 20 seconds into this game once again. Rio Grande, the Red Storm, looking like they're going to walk away if all things continue with at least a game win. We're going to see if that translates into their first match win of the season. Brockliff clearing out some vision there on the bottom side of the map. Got to say, been impressed with the awareness of Brock, Brockliff and Shirito. They're really getting things done. That push on the bottom side of the map was so massive. It really give, giving their team some life. It's Chad the King just going to pick up Slink right there. In the blink of an eye. Dropping down that Tabor, just caught out of position, going to scoop up a freebie for all intents and purposes. Slink going down hurts a lot. That's a lot of your CCs, a bit of your go button, and also a solid amount of the damage that you're relying on. So, looks like there, there might be a Baron call here. Oh, first, uh, they, they have a win in sight. They are not going to let it go. We're seeing a Baron call here. Ryo Grand, the Red Storm, they're putting on the line, and they are not going to see any contention here. Rainbow Madness is back. There's nothing Kai said the rest of the game can do. Give the team a low. So a free Baron off of a free kill. Ryo Grand taking the hand out where they can get him, and it's got them with a pretty solid lead right now. As we said, 26 minutes, 50 seconds in. Next Dragon in three minutes. Next Baron now in a tish over five and a half. Next Dragon is what we're looking at. They have the Baron. How, what can they do with it? How hard can they push? But in my mind, it's what can you do between now and that next Dragon? So what can you do to put yourself in a position between now and the next Dragon? So to finish out the game once you do secure that soul. A, you have to set up a four Dragon so there's no chance of 50-50. B, you have at a one, no one. So we'll see if they can set that up, crack the base a little bit, get their hands on those sweet, sweet inhibitors. Right now they're just having a dedicated push to mid lane. There's a solar flare. They haven't been able to follow up with those million ultis at all this game. Those solar flares being relatively fruitless. They just don't have the damage in this team's current state, in this team's current build to really do much off of that. Bot lane push being pinged out there. Mordekaiser and Graves going. And that's going to require at least a three to four man response. Just considering the strength of those right now. I uh, don't really see it in the KDA, but two item Graves working on a two item Mordekaiser there and having the Hextech Proto Belt absolutely massive. They're going to be able to absolutely melt this tower. Continue the push. I said they need to set four, and here they are. Shadow Man is working. Very low. Bobo is going very low. Going to drop right there. Danny Boy running out. Finds a blast zone. Pops it. Probably not in the best direction. Danny Boy burning up. Dang it. Oh, there's Brockliff popping in. See this blade. The rest of the team in tow. Dang it. Does use the flash. ASAP responding. The cavalry has arrived. The damage is fierce. Trying to find. And charm there, but won't get it to go. So they do end up in the bot side. They lose out of the tower, but they end up scooping up a kill, recouping some value, putting them down 4k gold. As I said, Hood just has to do something. The later this game goes, the more apparent that it comes that maybe they're not playing their best tonight, or that maybe it's just Ryle Grant's night. Because Ryle Grant is playing so well cohesively as a unit, and it just feels like the later this game goes, the more that's going to come into effect, the more teamwork, the more this is going to come into effect. Hood has to try to do something. They have to try to disrupt the flow of this Rio Grande team if they want any opportunity to win this game. Next Dragon in 20 seconds, something else they have to do if they want any opportunity to win this game is to get this miraculous team. And we are looking at Rainbow Madness to get it done. The weight of the game potentially resting on Rainbow Madness's shoulders for this next objective spawning in five seconds. They're gonna have to do it from the back side of hit, front side of hit firmly. Here locked up like Fort Knox. They're going to pull out the dragon a little bit here. Red Storm 
They have started on the dragon. Okay, there's an opportunity here for a skill though. Bit of a they already hit Timbers going to land. First time all game, it feels like the Timbers didn't really hit. They're on the dragon. That just moved down, and they do it too late. They lose the fight the back end. Oh my goodness, Rainbow Man is dead. Sure, no. dead. Who's next to the chopping block? Caught up in the brawl, multi brawl flip. What is it like? Oh, we're beating. First call. Wrong clip, going to go down the second shot there, King Master. Next to go, most likely going very low. Brom Q coming through. They will probably find the kill to Brom under the tower there. Will go, oh, I thought they went out for a second. Will go down, but not looking good for Hood. Can they hold off just Slink for four more seconds? Shirito, the next one is a Dragsel has been a tank. Slink. Does get hit by the Jin there. Not gonna get CC'd though. Charm coming through ASAP. Wants to get to CC'd, but the rest of the team decides to turn around so they do track the base. Do get there on the Nexus. They do get the drag soul, but they do not finish the game just yet, giving Hood a bit of a glimpse of hope. Rainbow Madness. <laughs> Scoot on through. Don't mind me. Absolutely. Banger of a game right now. Did not expect the Red Storm to come out like this. In the back of my mind, I was definitely thinking that Hood was something that would come out on the line. But I think this may just reinforce that the teams, the players, the individuals that have nothing to lose are the players that I don't want to play against. Those aren't the teams I want to see. There's no pressure on Ryo Grand this game. Right? You haven't won all year long. Guess what? People are probably not expecting you to do it for the first time in the last week of the regular season. But they are out here playing well. There's a bit of game here, Bobos. They go down right there. Shrimp does pick it up. Don't oh, let me speak too soon here. Hood may have some life them yet. Going in, dang it. I'm going lightning here. Does so, there's the attraction. Danny Boy, they find the wheel to capitalize on a solar flare here. Going to go down so they find themselves a three piece in the middle of nowhere. And Hood trying to get some momentum of their own here late on in the game. They're trailing about 5k gold. They're trailing five towers, but they feel they're still in it. ASAP picks up that or Jedi action puts it up, but ASAP doing a lot of the damage right there, getting it done. We see Rex I take this opportunity, ward up the jungle a little bit, maybe even steal some of those camps. But solid play by Hood there. They will recoup some value. But on the back end, they now have to get back and defend the base. Super minions reaching. Don't want to lose any of these Nexus Towers preemptively. Blue buff probably picked up here. Oh, will get smited by Rainbow Madness there. Saudi smite. Don't want to let that fall into anyone's hands that aren't your teammates, but especially the mid laner. Jedi King can do a lot with that blue buff right there. Phobos rotating down to the bot side. It looks like they are going to just go for it once again. Once again, they are just seeing a Baron, taking a Baron, and they are not the wiser over here on Hood's side. Rainbow Madness not doing anything about it. Ooh, they may uh, be on this now. Yeah, there's the ward. They now know. Are we going to see them pull off a fight? They've committed to the Baron. No jumper there. It is such a losing fight with Spike. First ball, for the back of the pit. Jump up gold, and he's going down to start the fight. All these in the bottom there, top of everything. ASAP trying to build so much damage to does so. There's the double. Gets another one. Braum pick up the kill as well. Shirito and Slink out the top side of the map. The triple. You're not going anywhere. Gets thrown in ASAP. The quadra kill. Oh me, oh my. You don't even need the Baron. Just run it right down mid. They're gonna, they're gonna do their due diligence and pick it up, but what a pop off there from ASAP. I said it was gonna be the best. It was going to be feast or fan. Oh my goodness, it's gonna live another day because Ryo Grand does not have the killer instinct. They're not used to being in the position and they didn't recognize they probably could have just ended the game right there. Well, guys are now teleporting to the top side, but may not be the move where you're gonna teleport oh teleported very far back not teleported right on tower i was gonna say you don't want to teleport in a one five situation ryo Rand has all the keys to win this game they just have to actually they just have to actually put it in put 
put the put it to practice. That's what I'm trying to say. They put it to practice and they can really win the game. They are up just an astronomical amount. The longer they this is the only way they can throw is if they make this game so long that they make a solid amount of stakes and the playing field just plateaued. Which would be absolutely, absolutely tragic for the team that we know the situation. Um, and definitely one of the downsides of not winning much this year is Riddle Man goes in this four year Daggett situation. They may be able to fight a flashing out there despite having the sole advantage. Flash follows Daggett following around King Basher with the shield. Oh, CC coming through. ASAP having themselves a game. I will tell you that much right now. This is a gym that you do not want to mess with. They really set the push, but ASAP says, I want more. Comes back for second. Thirds on the menu. Bronklip, oh, one shot's gonna do it from the curtain call right there. Double kill, picked up by the Jin. Massive performance, 13 and one KD area now from ASAP with eight assists to move on to the Nexus Towers right now, on to the Nexus itself. And it will fall. Rio Grande, the Red Storm, taking game number one. Wow. Rio Grande getting it done. Game number one. Big shout out to ASAP there. Really, really massive pop off. 13, 1, and 8. 228 farm. Most in the game. 16K gold. Most in the game. Not even close. One item off full build. Big, big game. Rio Grande is in the driver's seat to win their first match of the season. Hey, you know what? Better late than never as we are in the last week of the regular season. Can we get some rest storms in chat? Come on now. We got we, we to gotta show some love to Rio Grande right there. Beautiful performance by them. We're going to see if they'll be able to repeat in game number two. That's the that's exactly the question that we're gonna be asking. And the question I'm asking going to pick some bands and what can be changed here. I'm looking at that gin that ASAP played oh so well. And I think that has to be my first band. Outside of that, I'm maybe not terrified. I mean, Jedi King had a very solid game on that Annie, 7, 3, and 11. The timber placements were on point. Maybe that's something I think about banning out, but it's not my number one priority like ASAP's uh gin is. ASAP's gin has got to go. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, speaking of other things that Hood can change for game two, I mean, we're talking about picks and bands right now, but moving into the game, I want to see them play with the jungle a little bit more. That mid-jungle 2v2, that top jungle 2v2, they were focusing around bot side of the map, and it's just so tough to get on top of a Braum. Jin lane, right? Because Jin already has that range, is already using that to their advantage, standing back, has the campfires, has CC baked into a kid as an ADC, which is not the most common thing, right? On top of that, you've got Braum, literally the shield bearer. Like, that's the whole thing. That's the whole lore. Like, get behind me. That's, that's it. So, very tough to gank a lane like that. And that is where Rainbow Man has put all of their focus. It's still a solid KDA, still a solid game, right? 12k gold, 7-6-6, six, six, 154 farm. No real qualms about it. I think both teams played decently well. Uh, but Rainbow Madness has to put that effort elsewhere because wasted a lot of time on the bot side waiting for ganks that you knew may have come through, but you knew were less likely than... Hey, let me just hit up top lane. Like, Danny Boy is playing a champion that has no mobility, right? Jedi King playing a champion that has no mobility. That Annie, that Mordekaiser aren't going anywhere if you try to gank them in the 2v2 situation, so... That is what I see Orican in chat saying reverse sweep. Ooh. Oh, and Notorious agreeing with the reverse sweep. All right. Bold prediction. I like it, though. I like the bold prediction. Absolutely. As I said, just holding on here, waiting for the lobby to be created for game number two in this best two out of three series. If you are just joining us, we just saw Rio Grande University, the Red Storm, Get a dub in pursuit of their first match win of the season in this best two out of three over Hood College. The Blazers, who looked solid to start but just fell off. They petered out as the game went on. They had opportunities to seize the game, but alas, they just didn't, couldn't take them. So we'll see if that's different here in game number two. Like I said, I want to see them ban out that gin. 
Otherwise, I think picks and bands is solid. It's not where I'm going to focus most of my changing. I want to change in-game. I want to pursue the 2v2 with my jungle and solo laners much more heavily in this second game in this best two out of three series. I'm talking about if you're just joining us, if you are earlier today, you missed a great series in which SAU, the Fighting Bees, took care of business. And honestly, two games that were pretty close. They really punched their ticket into the playoffs. I believe secured that 100% clinched. They are going to be a team to watch out for if they can play as composed as they did today. We saw them get reverse swept by Valparaiso a while ago. That was not the same team that I saw today. They held it together. There was a moment where they were shaky, but the constant in both games was the mid lane power. They understood where, where the resources were. They said, you know what? We need to win through the mid lane. We need to win through the mid lane. That's exactly what they did both games. you got to respect and commend teams that know where their strengths are and play to them. Uh, but yeah, Hood is actually, to my understanding, looking to sneak into the playoffs. They can force a tiebreaker of sorts if they get the dub today, but it's not looking good, especially if they just run back with the team we just saw. Rio Grande looking like a new team out there in game number one. We'll see if that persists into game number two. Of course, heading into game number two, Hood College will have side selection. I don't know if switching up side selection is super, super vital, but we'll see if they decide to do so. It looks like they will not decide to do so. At least from where we are in the lobby right now. We're just waiting for one more. Or it looks like everyone's in. Broncliffe is just in spectate. Um, so, yeah, just, just waiting for all of our players to lock in here. Once again, appreciate you guys sticking around chat. If you haven't already, hit that follow button. Also, just just spam. Spam some of these emotes because uh, I'm, I'm trying to see all the custom emotes, all right? I'm trying to see all the new ones. So hit me with them. Hit me with them. Shredo says they're waiting for their support real quick. A-OK. -okay. Nothing wrong with a little wait. Actually, I'm going to snag my phone charger very quickly here because that's how I'm following along with all the lovely people in chat, and I don't want to lose out on that ability as I've hit 4%. All right. Easy money. Oh, oh, a monk. Okay. Drop drop the emotes. Chat, let me let me know that you're still alive. It's it's getting late. I know it's 9.04. These usually wrap up at around 9.30. If, if the last game's anything to say about that, we'll run a little late tonight, but I really do appreciate everyone sticking around in chat. Such a cool thing that NECC has going on here. Uh, obviously, we're heading into the playoffs, so I won't regurgitate the usual regular season schedule, but just know if you go to at NECC Games on Twitter, you can find all the relevant information. We've got Overwatch. We've got League of Legends. We've got Rocket League. We've got Madden. And we've got Valorant all headed your way over the next two weeks. Playoff action. It's going to be intense. Uh, I'm going to say over, under. I think, I'll, I think I'm going to lose my voice five or more times this, this upcoming week alone. Oh, yeah. It's that real. It's that real. Look at me in the eyes, chat. That's what it's going to be. Uh, I'm very excited. I believe you'll also catch me casting a little bit of Rocket League with Coach Nuclear from SAU, real kindred soul. Got to love having Coach Nuke in the booth. So there's a lot to look forward to. As I said, I would go to at NECC Games on Twitter for the most valuable information, the most relevant, the most up-to-date. Give them a follow. I have their tweet notifications on. I want to know. I need to know. So that's what I would do if I were you and you were interested in keeping up with the whereabouts, the haps, going on in the NECC because I said there's so much good stuff that is coming your way you definitely do not want to miss all the playoff esports that are coming and what we're talking about just how great the NECC is the NECC is sponsored by HyperX no matter who you are or how you play we're all gamers and by ESTV the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities we are in lobby here we're just getting ready for our second game in this best two out of three between Hood and between Rio Grande, the Red Storm, trying to get a sweep and secure their first win of the season. Hood on the other side fighting for their potential playoff hopes. Some miracle tiebreaker situation following this. We'll see if they can get it done. They're going to have to come a lot harder 
than they did last game if they want to. I will tell you that much right now before we even get into it as they're still just waiting on their support to come through right now into the lobby. Feeling good. Feeling good about the second game. First game, we did have a lot of action. Did go down to the wire a little bit. Started off very patient, which you'd like to see in college esports. Games that start a little slow, even that are slow in the mid-game. Because you want to see teams that are patient, and they're taking their time. They're playing to their speed. Especially two teams that aren't in the upper echelon of their respective uh, looks like teams are getting ready, sorry, in, in their respective conferences. Uh, you know, both these teams have had a bit of a struggle this season. Obviously, Hood still has a chance. They need a miracle if they want to scoot in the playoffs. Uh, Rao Grand, zero wins on the year. Could be looking at their first. But A, something to build on. B, I like the patience we saw from that first game. They were playing at their own speed, playing at their own pace. Showed a whole lot of patience. We're sending the R's in chat. We are all Good to go here. So we are going to send it over to Picks and Bands as soon as we load in. <laughs> uh, players hitting us with the R, maybe. Yep, it looks like everybody is good to go here in chat, in league game chat. So we will be heading in. Start them up. Waiting for Danny Boy, the stud top laner, to get it going as we will be in here for game number two. Best two out of three at Slink get more charm strategy. Woo! Yeah, more charms, indeed. Uh, as I said, there's a lot of things that have to change mechanically, and I think it starts on a macro level. You could talk about all these micro changes, like hitting more charms, um, but it starts on a macro level for me. I think there's a lot of things where they didn't properly assess the value of certain objectives or certain fights, and they kind of just went in a little blind. You see Shaco Band coming through, as well as a Zac. Pantheon Band? Come on. They got to ban the Jin, right? Danny Boy banning right now. I'm fully expecting Hood College to ban the Jin. Chat saying they believe in the Hood, the hood comeback. All right, we'll see. We've seen one reverse sweep on stream this year. Next ban will be King Basher. Ooh, Kaisa ban coming through. So, Jin's still on the table. Despite the dis display, the performance that ASAP just put on, Jin left on the table for the ADC of the Red Storm. We're going to see if that selection does indeed come through. Garen will be the final man. I mean, they could first pick it if they're confident. If Shrio can play the Jin, no reason why not if you're on the blue side to just let it through and then scoop it up. As that, that's exactly what they do. So Jin will be played by Sharito this game. Instead, Danny Boy is going to run that Mordekaiser once again. Second pick, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Annie again. Uh, Jedi King played so well. The positioning was just so, so good. I mean, the Tibbers were absolutely on point. Multiple stuns coming through in most instances. The only thing they have to work out is they have a mutual champion to trade. Shen! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Pause, pause, pause. Chat, chat, chat. River Shen? Is this River Shen? Is this Jungle Shen? Is this Support Shen? What is happening? Evelyn Zed locked into the other side. We've got a real squishy comp into some beefy boys is what we're looking at right now to start. Mordekaiser Shen going up against Jin, Evelyn Zed. Jedi King locking in. They got to find some damage here, and no surprise, they will scoop up the Annie. A lot of damage in addition to the CC. We got some River Shen lols in chat. Hey, you know what? The day someone breaks out River Shen on stream is the day I probably have uh, aneurysm induced out of joy. As you do see set taken off the table, very smart band considering you have your top laner locked in. No reason not to limit the pool at this point. Set, in addition, is very, very strong right now, as we've seen earlier today. River Shen, Best Shen. <laughs> Two more bands coming through in the second round. Lucian taking off the table. One more band for each team right now. Danny Boy deciding what that will be for their team. And that will be the Lux coming through as the final ban for the Red Storm. Jin, King Basher, what will it be?
be? What is our last band looking like right now for Hood College, the Blazers? And it's Braum taking off the table. Something that they saw last game, they said, I don't really want to deal with that again. Very fair. Played very well by Daggett last game. Daggett definitely had themselves a game last game. So good to see that taken off. I like the thought process there. Picking here is ASAP. They still need ADC. They still need a support, probably. Like we said, we don't really know where the Shen is going. Probably jungle is what makes sense. A bit of an oddity. We'll see if it does really come through as MF is selected. I really like that pick for ASAP. Uh, take my gin. Let me play someone more dynamic. We'll see what they can do here. Volibear locked in. Undoubtedly going to be ahead of top lane just as we saw last game. King Basher played a pretty mean Volibear. And, uh, yeah, Leona locked in for Bronklyph of support. So similarities coming through there for both compositions. A Daggett will be the last pick of the game. Swain being hovered. Swain being locked and loaded to go. That will be a Swain support. Very aggressive bot lane coming through there. MF Swain. Just want to take a quick look at the champions that are remaining the same from last game. We've got this Volibear run back from King Basher. Like to see uh, who didn't win, but King Basher felt like a bright spot. There were some solid alties as well during team fights. Just didn't quite have the damage from the rest of the team to follow it up. Leona returning from Broncliffe right there on the bot lane. Also had some solid opportunities. There were some great solar flares. Once again, the shortcoming was the rest of the team not quite having enough damage to follow up on. The solar flares were on point. They just need the rest of the team. Uh, next, our only other returning champion will be Annie on the same team. Uh, Jedi King 2000 playing that Annie had some phenomenal position last game, something we can't talk enough about. Just kind of got lost during team fights by the other team, would drop that Annie right, or the Tibbers, excuse me, right in the middle with the stun, drop that CC. Mm, 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 absolutely beautifully played there. Volibear. And Mordekaiser, we're going to go down position by position, starting the top lane instead with Volibear and Mordekaiser, played by King Basher and Danny Boy, respectively. I'm giving the edge to King Basher once again in the top lane of the Volibear. I know Danny Boy played so well. There's still just something about this Volibear that really, really speaks to me in many stages of the game. So we're going to see if that does come through. Moving down to the jungle, Evelyn going up against Shen, Rainbow Madness against Phobos. Uh, <laughs> as much as I think the Shen is funny, I really have to go with Evelyn here. Uh, Evelyn just feels like a so much more natural fit in the jungle. Uh, Shen feels like you're trying to put a square peg into a circular slot. It's just not going to work out super well. You can jam it in. You can try and you know, maybe you will get some give. You will get to work a little bit, but Evelyn just feels so much more at home in the jungle and it just always will be that way Annie Zed in the mid lane going with King Jedi here uh, Zed has that mobility to avoid the CC coming through but Annie just played so well by Jedi King last game and I'm going off the strength of Jedi King's play what we've seen what we know Slink is an unknown commodity onto Zed couldn't hit the charms last game super super well did have a few clutch ones but not enough uh, and Zed's a very mechanically tough champion to play. I mean, obviously the, the famous fake or what was that was on a Zed out play. Right? There's so much you can do in the kit. And if you're not pushing the boundaries of it, you're not really playing Zed to the full potential. So I'm going with Annie on this one. Jin Leona bot lane going up to N MF Swain. I don't like Jin and Leona together, really. Uh, Street on block Brockliffe didn't play poorly last game, but... Jin doesn't want to be in there, and Leona is all about that action, boss trying to just get in there, do some stuff. Jin's trying to sit on the back line, drop some damage. Curtain call, as we saw last game. Feels like a non-bow to me, a non-synergy. On the other hand, Misfortune Swain? This is hot. This is absolutely hot. The amount of engage and range you have is absolutely massive. Uh, MF can make it rain, and Swain has Vision of the Empire. And both those abilities are somewhat long range. They're, they're AOE. You can push people off wave. You can manipulate mobility. Swain's E, Nevermore, 
absolutely massive. That pull, the damage, the CC into MF. Oh, so, so good. And I, I just really love this combo. I think that ASAP and Daggett are going for on a show. We saw ASAP do it last game. I think it's going to happen again. And I think it's an easier lane for them as well. Uh, they had very good synergy last game. As we talked about, Braum Jin are much on the same game plan. So putting them together is just a slam dunk. It just makes sense. It's like peanut butter and jelly. It's like it's like butter in any f feel about the even greater extent. Uh, MF plus Swain, I turn dividends, plus both have skins. So you know they're about that life. Tyrant Swain, Candy Came MF. Y'all can't see it just yet. Actually, full skin squad coming through. Ryo Grant came to play today. We will see here in game number two if Hood College can strike back and force a three-game full series. Uh, the hour is 9.17 at Eastern time. I appreciate everyone sticking through. It's going to be a late night regardless if we go to another or not. So I really appreciate everyone in chat sticking around. Uh, means a lot, guys. As I said, a lot of good stuff happening in ACC. It just got to tune in to see it. So hit that follow button. Hit that bell. Turn those notifications on. So much quality content. There's so many good personalities, casters, players, producers that are putting work to make this happen. Uh, and you can really see it in the content. It's very evident. So just a real joy to see all of this come together here as we're heading into game number two. As we said, the Rio Grand Red Storm up one game to none against the Hood College Blazers in this best two out of three final week of the regular season. I have finally loaded the game. So once we get to five seconds, producer and I will get on the same page and we will be getting everyone else in the game so you can see the wonderfulness that is about to unfold. I paused at five seconds. Are we all good? Starting in three, two, one, and go. Coming out on the blue side, we will be having Hood College, the Blazers, who find themselves in a one game to zero hole. King Basher, Rainbow Madness, Slink, Sharito, and Brockliff heading out the squad coming out on the red side the Rio Grand Red Storm who stand just one singular game win away from winning their first series of the year running it out with Danny Boy Phobos Jedi King ASAP and Daggett keep your eyes on ASAP and Daggett in the bot lane those two are ready to make some noise I just know it ASAP had that massive, massive game number one. We're going to see. We're going to see that number two man speaking in champ daily. <laughs> oh, man, chat. I love that. I love that. Chat has been set to maximum bull. <laughs> All right. Both teams just coming out with a bit of a five point to start right here. Looks like we're going to see both junglers start on the bottom side of the map. I'm very intrigued. Oh, Phobos took Predator? Is, uh, so, I'm sure there are jungle shem builds. It's not very popular. Don't pre does right. Going to see what that does come through. Uh, what what was able to do. I'm very intrigued with the shem pick. That's the other thing I'm going to have my eye on. Whether or not going off meta like this hurts or helps more. Uh, we've been talking about it all night long. There's something to be said about the simplicity of compositions that are easy to pull off, uh, having more go buttons. And the Shen does bring some advantages, right? You have an essential teleport out of the jump with Stand United. Uh, you get some mobility with the e. The ganks aren't awful. It's never more coming through. Sharito going to eat that damage to the face, as I was talking about. That's a dynamic duel in the bot lane. Uh, but yeah, very excited. Oh, that second Evermore almost as well. Mega was looking for it. Cerrito got to be very, very careful. There's so much damage down here. And as we said, don't really have synergy with your support there. Brockliff, Cerrito not really on the same game plan with Jin and Leona right there. One's trying to go in all the time. One's trying to beat out. Brockliff's going to take some damage. Two autos to the back right there. Strong start for MF and Swain to the bot side. Jedi King taking a lot of damage there. Impressed with the mechanics from Slink so far. It's early going, but 
you kind of just know sometimes when you see whether or not someone really has a grasp on a champion. Uh, I mean, the things that they immediately are seeing the Zed popping around. To see the Zoe, uh, people who really know how to use that Q is going to come right away. Definitely looks like Slink has put in some time into this Zed. Danny Boy dropping a little bit of damage there. Daggett looking at Nevermore. I think the big key too with Nevermore is that boom. You just saw it. It goes through waves. Uh, you can't do anything about it but position. And unless you really know where the, the tip that Nevermore is flashed in the top lane there, off the gank, Danny Boy going after that very early on. Phobos, exactly what I said. I wanted to see more jungle 2v2. Uh, it's just on the opposite side. Rainbow Madness needs to help out the solo lanes this game if they want to get the win and reverse their fortunes from game number one. ASAP Daggett, both hitting level three, a little bit behind in the XP despite being up damage-wise in their trading. Oh, CC coming through. Seen in play. Daggett's going to take a solid amount of damage there, but Sharito's still low, so I have my eyes on one solid Nevermore in the rest of it. I, Daggett doesn't have Ignite is the one thing. I wish they would have taken Ignite really gone nuts with this aggressive lane but alas they didn't come through nevermore will connect they may find it right here oh would have liked to see the exhaust drop honestly oh Sharito's dead dead oh the flash coming through unnecessary they will go on leona now nevermore not gonna find its intended target going to grab a minion vision of the empire going to slurp a stack on the top of that one danny boy may be in a, bit of, in a bit of trouble here eats the charm flash under tower king basher but across the going to trade one for one both with the help of the jungle so two gangs yield two kills across the map for both teams exactly what I wanted out of Rainbow Madness this game going to up the soul lanes King Basher scoops that up big first kill keep your eyes on the Volibear snowball over the course of this game, stemming from that first kill. Jedi King is going to get absolutely chunked right there. Good stuff from Slink so far on the set. Uh, Jedi King is sticking around though, does have more farm in lane. He's not winning any of these trades and so tough as a mage because you want to blow your combo right away uh, to get trades, right? To do as much damage as you can. But the issue is we're going up against the Zeds of the world, the Sewers of the world who don't use mana, you can't because you are so dependent on that mana and your combos are so dependent on that mana you can't afford just to be spamming things at all points in time trying to burst down trying to chunk down your opponent whereas slink really can do whatever they want uh, that energy comes back so so quick you rarely feel like you're out of it we do see shen here on the backside in mid lane maybe trying to eye something or maybe heading top lane looking for something that e that Shen possesses is one of the reasons why I does kind of make a little bit of sense out of the jungle. Um, you can hop over walls with it. You can, uh, it's taunt, not detract, it's a taunt with it. So there's so much going on with that E, and it's a versatile ability that really makes me rethink whether or not jungle Shen would be okay. We do see the invade going on right now. On that left-hand side of the mini-map, Phobos going in there and is now going to be heading topside for this gank. No vision from King Basher. Danny Boy just hit level 6, should probably pop the ulti right away. He does pop Predator, he does get the taunt down. Danny Boy should back. This community was going to see a scuffle maybe developing on the bottom side of the map. A lot of pings going down in that bot lane. Jedi King backing off. Yeah, Danny Boy ooh, can't quite get the grab there. Shen still in the city, now moving down to the mid lane. I believe Zed has a. Uh, Anything in that bush, the Seed Blade will barely miss with Rockliff right there. Danny Boy does pop the ulti, King Bash might be in a little bit of trouble. One more smack, oh, responsible ulti thrown. Danny Boy running away. The wave aggro might do a little bit to deter Volibear. It's not going to be enough. Phobos hopping over the wall, oh, not where you want to be right there, Phobos. CC drop, Tibbers his drop, but it's not going to matter. Slim does get yet another kill. This dead may get out of hand right here. Daggett looking for something. Rainbow Madness will drop it. Oh, can't get the charm to go there. Does expend the smite. Won't have it for this next theoretical clear. Still got my eyes on the bot lane. That MF is absolutely massive right now. Look at the farm differential. Has the BS sword after that initial back. Looking very, very strong. Oh, they do with the pull there. 
fighting around Dragon. Dang it, will sidestep. Ooh, ASAP gotta be very, very careful. Does he some punch through Ooh, Shirito? Is out of mana. They might be able to just go in a Shirito. A Nevermore there may have killed Shirito. Dang, dang it has plenty of mana. ASAP is like, what is that, a quarter mana? The, the health is the bigger concern right there in the 4v2 situation, but they do prevent the drag tick for a little bit, wasting some time. We'll see Shen in the vicinity. I don't think she'll go for a steal here. Yeah, they're just gonna see the first drag of the game. Absolutely okay, given where the state of the game is. You're not down by much. You're definitely staying in striking range despite giving up that dragon here in the early game. And I think you're expecting to lose early on with this Shen jungle pick, right? We know that that Evelyn can be potent early on, going invisible, arm, and the and is just trying to tank late game and we have a numbers advantage now with Sand United. So not too too worried about it if you are a fan of the Red Storm. Rio Grande is playing to their strengths, and their strengths are not. Playing. But at the they shouldn't move to objectives like this and just trolls. They first give the dragon, then they ramp right up to the top side. Evelyn going to scoop us up. Rainbow Man is looking to have themselves a game. Maybe more than the utility rolling, you know, doesn't have any kills, but two assists, setting up teammate, has claimed some neutral objectives. Going to be able to scoop up this ward here as well. It's left by the Shen. Scooping up that blue buff should allow them to stay in jungle a little longer. Get that clear, get a little bit more gold in their back pocket. Gold lead, about 600 right now in the favor of Hood. Danny boy on the top side is down 16 CS, and that's got to hurt right now. King Basher, as I said, I gave the advantage to in the top lane, and for good reason. Played pretty well last game despite not being able to get the dub. Dagon on the top side with the Shen. Bit of a 3v2, could be a 3v1. Depending if Volibear pushed up or not, no vision. They just swap places. Evelyn uh, might be in a, for a nasty surprise if they go back through the way of the Tribush, but might be setting the gang onto Annie now. Jedi King got to be very, very careful what happens here. Now rotating down, they're going to be caught out on that uh, scuttle, scuttle war. And yeah, they, they rotate down, but going to be caught out. Dagon, oh, Slink just is not backed up at all. Dagon and Phobos standing in bush. Now be caught out in the Scryer's Orb. They do know that someone's in their jungle now. Phobos running up, does drop the drone a lot. Oh. Yeah. Through, but never more. Gonna find a blind. Oh, here comes the response. Mordecai's are dropping down. Probably not the wisest idea to get right in the middle of that. The Evelyn does feel pretty strong right now. Does have an advanced item in addition to the boots and the refillable potion. And I can just hold in the mid lane. A 600 gold lead will remain the same, but ASAP going to find this free time to push in the bot side, claim a little bit of free gold bridge that gap a little bit so we're now just a 300 gold lead more importantly that gold has been put on to the misfortune who you need to carry this game 3810 gold for the math right now versus not even quite 3k for the gen at 2900 so a solid lead for asap in the bot lane those numbers oh they're just going for it cc is layered okay never more we'll hit up the gen over the vision of the empire ace turning it around Brockleth going low, not quite in bullet time range, but beautifully played there by ASAP and Dega. Turning that fight around, I would like to see Slink head bot lane for a roam to deal with ASAP at some point. Uh, ASAP is getting it done right now in CS, in bullying, I mean, has a plate. Uh, definitely a force that needs to be dealt with at some point. Timbers will be out and about. Rainbow Madness now trying to go down Sunlands. Goes through, ASAP got to be very, very careful. Might want to drop a tap there, makes it rain. Oh my god, Bogo coming in off the ulti to the back line. That was such a big brain play, interrupting the curtain call. They don't find any kills off the back end, but Dagon most likely alive because of it. Wow, Predator is pop though. Phobos may be in a bit of trouble here. Slink responding down, yeah, will go down to Slink's ulti. Three kills, one, two of those kills are on Slink. So watch out, this Zed is getting big. Bob, what a play. I did not even process that Phobos was in route. I didn't see it until it already happened. Great play from Phobos. As I said, 
Most likely, Dagon has Phobos to thank for staying alive during that fight. Danny Boy trying to fight King Bastion right here. Does pop that AoE, King Bastion will drop the ulti on top of everything. But Danny Boy, ooh, winning his fight. Ooh, has to flash away, turns around, drops the hammer. I don't think Danny Boy had to flash. I think Danny Boy had that fight. Uh, really felt like got a little bit past there at the end. Had to burn a summoner and doesn't get the kill in the end either. So still trailing two kills. 800 gold is the red storm from Rio Grande right now. The thing you have to keep in mind that we've been talking about, we're going to continue to talk about, ASAP is slowly building up this giant farm total, building up this lead. Danny Boy going to be in a bit of trouble here. Charm does come. Going at Jedi Knight. I'm looking at Danny Boy. They need to do something productive in the next five minutes if ASAP is looking to have any help of doing something in the mid to early game of this game number two in our best two up three match here. Jedi has to flash under tower. Slink going to take a tower shot there, a little bit of damage. Not really going to matter, dang it. Not going to find a Nevermore there. Turning around, Solar Flares going to connect with ASAP. They're not vicinity to do anything off that. There will be no follow-up. 600 gold lead persist, and they will be able to scoop up Dragon number two of the game. Their second Dragon of the game, provided ASAP doesn't pull some sort of miracle here. Will. So the four members will take that one. Zed back at the base right now. Will be a mountain soul coming through. Dag it. Seems to be never more through the wall. Not going to find an opportunity to do just that. Sherito. Bronklyth. Continue to look for an opportunity. Continue to look for an angle. As is Dag it. Missing the Evermore right there. Uh, but we've seen all these come through from the Zealand. Rainbow Man is coming through. Dag it. Got to be very careful. Charm's probably come down on a Dagon here. Ooh, yeah, Dagon will go down. Oh, bullet time! Rainbow Madness will pop the ulti. Purely as an escape mechanism, not getting any damage down there. Jedi King running down, but Slink waiting in the wings for this very moment. Could be ugly, but Slink doesn't pursue, knowing that ASAP is probably in the area and is way too strong to fight with right now. 1k gold lead now for Hood as they have put themselves in the driver's seat of this game. King Bash are gonna take a little damage from Phobos, but nothing too serious. Top lane CS is all knotted up. The only difference is a kill in the favor of Volley Bear right now. Oh, dive under tower, slain, going for ASAP. And I said they have to do something over ASAP, but ASAP's going to get 300 gold in the back end from Gronk with the Jin going very low. Be careful from Vision of the Empire here. Not enough to kill, but it also slows. Chain into the Nevermore. Who'd have something there? Evelyn's staying around right now. They want to dive tower. Evelyn is very interested in diving tower. Pings it. They're not going to do anything about it. They get left all alone just to clear waves right under tower. They do find that kill into ASAP, which is big on the back end. But as I said, they do give ASAP a kill in the process, allowing the first item to be purchased by this MF Essence Reaver applied. We want to feel that item very, very strong. Very strong. Across was the one A old lead. Favor of putting King Asher going right now again. Boy, it's going to be one of situation with Evelyn is responding from the river. So be very cognizant of that. Danny Boy. Can they get the kill before the Evelyn comes through? Not going to be able to do so. He held on to that ult a little bit longer. Danny Boy should have lived with it. Regardless, yet another kill there. I said I wanted to see more of the jungle soul in 2v2, and I'm getting my wishes. Hood putting in some serious work right now. Look at much from the last game. Oh, there's a death more. Don't let me speak too soon. Ulti coming through from Leona. Not going to find anything real there. Dag it. Vision of the Empire, not going to get anything. Nevermore, going to fall up a little bit short. Pushing the wave in, but they won't miss out on any farm there. Shereel scooping it all up, channeling up a recall here. Oh no, oh not like this. ASAP looking to be caught out right here. Zed popping in, there's the flash over the wall. 
will get rooted. Makes it rain. Nothing more is going to come that Phobos in the 1v2 situation. Very near to the tower. Should be safe. Oh, my gosh. Look at slide. Goes back in. Survives for just a moment, but probably way too aggressive there. Danny Boy does get charmed. 2v2 situation. Both low on the side of Hood. King Basher. Danny does pick up some gold there. Will get the shutdown gold. Actually pretty big. Scooping up 150. Does get the kill in the process. 18 minutes into this game and a 1.1k gold lead being enjoyed by Hood right now. Rainbow scooping up. Very, very smart positioning there. Getting the Gromp, getting the blue buff. Big brain out there. You know, obviously in tune with the jungle pass. Keep your eyes on the bot lane here. Daggett clearing some wards, trying to find an angle maybe on to Jin and Leona. And campfire place will be scooped up immediately. Is that a bait campfire? Lance gonna miss. Broncliff applies the shield. There's no one collapsing, but they're gonna keep going onto Daggett like there is. ASAP rotating up, making it rain. Daggett, ooh, missing that Nevermore is gonna hurt as Phobos running at a Mach 3 right there. Pop the Predator, hop it in. I don't think Predator was the move once again. That feels like a mistake of the Shen. Full time coming through. Rainbow Madness going to survive. Double kill for the Zed. Hood is firmly in the driver's seat after this to win this game. Up 2k gold, dropping the Herald in the mid lane. Should be able to scoop up a tower. Danny Boy backing up right here. Not much there. We're going to see Zed continue to push in that mid wave, though. Oh, goodness. Oh, ASAP able to bear. He's caught in the. Ooh, coming. See the act? Bite here in the flank, tick tick on the slink of the ignite. Not going to be able to find the rest of the damage. Slip and slide getting out of there in a hurry. Vision of the Empire, Phobos. Maybe we'll find it there with the E. Don't chase it, Phobos. Oh no. Hubris. Not like this. Nevermore not going to find his intended target. Brockless may be in trouble, but they've already gotten their money worth with two kills. I doubt they'll be able to catch up and find anything else. Dang it, got to be very careful. Don't walk into a 1v3 situation. Dang it. Oh, on the wall, what is Nevermore? On the sling. ASAP. The shutdown goal, but they're going to get a double kill for Evelyn in the process. What a blind Nevermore. No way. The instinct, but it's not going to matter based on the merit of Hood. They are moving in on their third dragon right now. Chirito, Rainbow Madness, getting it done. Everyone who said reverse speed in chat is looking pretty smart right about now because it definitely looks like Hood is trying to send us to a game number three, playing inspired League of Legends right now. Any boy running it away. I don't think he was lagging. He was waiting for an opportunity to jump over the wall. Uh, just given how low the health bar was, uh, you don't want to hop in preemptively. The blind Nevermore was just absolutely killer. Killer. Rainbow Madness taking care of these wolves right now. Top Riverside. Going to get this ward right there. Phobos. Dang it in the bot side. Looking like... Hood is going to send us game three here. The only hope that I can really see is ASAP comboing with Jedi. Oh, we're going to see a 2 kill situation on the top side. 2v2 with the response. King Basher said going in. King Basher for some kill. A lot of damage coming through right there. The gold lead only grows. Daggett going to be in a whole lot of trouble right here. Flash doesn't even matter. ASAP probably next on the chopping block. Oh, see, this blade misses. Not going to matter right there. Sharito picks it up. Hood looking so strong. Up 11 kills. The gold lead is growing. Just, oh, it's just about 5K. 5K gold lead just about looking so, so good. As we said, definitely not the team we saw in game number one. Definitely not the Rio Grand uh, Ryo Grand team, excuse me, that we saw in game number one either. The Red Storm picking it up in a big, big way here in game number two. Moving in, putting a lot of work in this tower. Sharito doing some serious damage to that bot side tower. Two towers clamped. Matt. The blue. Slink moving around. Drops it in. 
looking for something in the bush. Not going to find anything there. Not going to wait around for it. MF ranked laying around. Maybe should have been a little bit more patient. Would have had a free kill on that MF. You start with the death mark. Ooh, here it is. Gank in the mid lane. Bobos might be cut out. Charm's coming through. Dang, going go down. Hurry. And here's the ultimate about King Bastion. Oh my goodness. Double before this set. Might be a triple on it. Just indeed it. Slink coming through in a big way right now. Pushing in that mid wave just a little bit per and sieging the tower right now. Slink and King Basher. Ooh, ASAP. <laughs> Tosses out an errant solar flare for no real reason. 5k gold lead right now. It's about sending a message sometimes. Very, very tough position to be in if you are a fan of the Red Storm. Ryo Grand not looking the greatest here in game. Number two, 23 minutes in, and they're trailing 13 kills in addition to in the neighborhood of 6K gold. Nimble Man is just farming that jungle up. They're getting some vision, scooping up that scuttle crab. Good play by King Basher. When we look at objectives on the table, Baron is on the map a minute and a half until our next dragon. And that will be putting Ryo Grand on Soul if they are able to take the dragon. And given their massive lead, I don't see any reason why this dragon shouldn't just be a gimme for them. Brock Lip, Shredo, looks like they want to double dip. I think they're going to go for this Baron, yeah. And Red clock or oh, this big brain right here going in. Wow, absolutely deleted. Sling going for it. So much damage with the Zed right now. Kibber's getting in the front line doing a little bit, but it's not going to be enough. Vision of the Empire is dropping. There's King Baxter getting in with the ult. He is pulled up the side. Jedi King raining in some damage, but it's not gonna matter for Rainbow Bat getting it done. Dan Boy has to flash away, but will probably not be able to escape. Pop the ult. He initially said, you're trapped in here with me, but King Basher looks at him and says, nah, -uh, buddy. You are trapped in here with me. 22 to 6 is the kill count. 41.7k to 30, 34.4. Hood is running away with this game in a big way. This performance has been absolutely massive for them. Putting in the work, Slink looking for more. Going to jump the death mark on ASAP. May die for this endeavor. Slink going to go down, chuck it on gold, being given over to the MF. That's who you want it on. You're in a massive hole, but if anyone needs the gold, it's going to be that misfortune back in this game. And wow, popped like a grape in a hydraulic press. Goodness, just absolutely eviscerated. Dang it, running away. May get charmed right here. Misses the Nevermore. Broncliffe looking for something. Good solar flare. They won't find the rest of the follow-up right here. Dang, running away. Trying to find some reprieve here from Sharito. You got to get the Broncliffe as well. Much more uh, active in finding opportunities for the team this game. Shut down gold. Out of the Evelyn. That's big. Dragon is up. Oh, smite here for Hood. Brockliff popping in. Shredo has to flash out to the backside. They will get the double kill here. That's for the Annie. Ooh, some shutdown gold being assigned over. ASAP got to be careful on the tower for King Basher, who does have ulti right now. On to the Dragon. Slink going in. Current call from the back line out of the Dragon. Danny will can this here. Phobos does have smite. Will get it with the smite. Kill is given over to the Jin, though. Shutting down that Annie. Slink does die. Phobos. Going low, can die, Dorito! The triple kill right there. So much damage coming out from this Jin. Wow. Oh my goodness. We're gonna just say it, Alt F4. Not looking too great here for the Red Storm. King Basher overstaying there. Welcome. Shutdown goal being handed over to ASAP. See if ASAP can do something to turn their team's fortunes around. Is two items deep into the build, but not much. This time, member of the Rainbow Madness.
Gonna scoop up that red buff just over with the blast tone. You're gonna be seeing this for the rest of the game as long. Game is last. Clearing wave. Still on this and hope to do point in time. They're trailing in the neighborhood of 10k gold. They're down six towers. They're down two dragons. Things are looking grim for them. We have seen some pretty massive comebacks here in the NECC. We've talked about it today, but that Valpo game comes to mind for sure. Absolutely, Rainbow Madness going in on Phobos here. May find themselves caught out, but the ulti will allow them to escape without an issue right there. Good stuff, Rainbow Madness. The intent to CC come through. Oh, Slink just gonna all right in the middle of half. Absolutely no fear. Dang it, going to miss an F4 and will go down. Jedi King trying to avoid the curtain call. Does so pretty successfully. Will eat the last one, but it's not going to matter. There's no follow-up damage to make it super relevant when it's all said and done. It's a two for zero trade. Phobos and Daggett both going down over the course of that extended skirmish. Mid lane and bot lane being pushed in simultaneously for Hood. Getting it done right now, trying to make steps to end this game. Clearing mid lane the best of their ability. Slink off to the side right there. Keep an eye on Slink. I mean, once Slink does pop that active ability on Yomu's Ghost Blade, once does get that move speed, so tough, near impossible to run away from that Zed. They have to find some CC on the Zed if they want to be successful in any fight. Oh. A lot. Rainbow Matt. That's what he needed to find right there. Daggett looking for something. Not going to have Nevermore available just yet. There it is. Will find the root. They do get the ulti out of the Volley Bear. King Bash does get a kill. Daggett goes into stasis right there. Very smart with the ultimate ability. Jedi King goes into stasis as well. Big multi over the top. Trito's going to pick up the kill. Danny Boy looking for an opening. Timber's going to go down. Daggett. Gotta be careful, Shredo's damage is absolutely massive at this point. And when that fight is over, Phobos will go, Jedi King will go, but they will get the kill and the shutdown goal off of Rainbow Madness's corpse. 30 minutes into this game. Next Baron will be spawned in a minute 18. Next Dragon in a minute 27 ASAP trying to find a kill with the King Basher here. They may just do one more auto and they will find it ASAP, gets yet another. Daggett finding that kill alongside ASAP, funneling more gold into the back pocket of ASAP. But once again, it's feeling like we might be too little too late. Just losing so many towers. The bright side is they don't have any inhibitors down. They haven't given them Dragsoul yet. Dragsoul is up here in 50 seconds though. 50 seconds, they have to find some way to contest this objective. Phobos trying to get on that, and here is Slink, just not going to let that happen. Great bait coming through from Slink. Oh, the pull's actually gonna push Slink out of danger over the wall. Wow. Yeah, not much you can do. It's already gonna be tough to steal, but now it's gonna be really tough. You don't have a smite. They're making the executive call to not even stick on Dragon. They're trying to push out and end this game. Hood is done playing around. Now backing off to the Dragon will be Slink and Broncliffe. So they're going to maintain the presence. Put going back. Jungle will see what does happen here. Dagon going to take a solid amount of damage off of that. Hope. The charm, however, will not come through. Team falling back on a drag for now. There's Nothing that can be done. Uh, the only chance they have is maybe a super lucky vision of the Empire, but that will be the Earth Dregs on Hood Cop is looking pretty unstoppable right now. Uh, it feels like that Earth to most we expect that to just burst down most of the team. They are spotted out. Uh, they they must know they're seen because it's on the scuttle ward. Jedi King, Phobos. Looking for something here. Okay. The fight continues. The rune on the front line. Rainbow Bandit doesn't kill ASAP. Going down. And once ASAP is down, they have no chance in any of these fights. 
Jedi King goes into space. It's not going to. Oh my gosh, Sharito lining it up. They're going to be on this Baron, but in reality, they could just make the house call and finish this game. Dagon has nowhere to run. There is no refuge from Sharito's damage. There is nowhere safe on there. Sharito flashing really wants to kill. It's going to spit up. 9 1 and 12. A fast performance for Sharito right now. And they should really just be able to pull out waves and win the game. They're going to reset just to make sure, play it safe, but there's almost no way in my mind where this goes south for Hood. They are so far ahead. They are so dominant right now. And they are keeping their very minimal playoff hopes alive. Danny Boy to hold against Rutt Sling as you pop that death mark at any moment in time under tower and probably find a kill. If not a solid chunk of damage, the pull is not going to come through. Slink continuing to just push in right here. There's not much that can be done. Danny Boy Phobos just standing under tower, but it's really not anything. But Danny Boy might just die under tower here. Phobos hops back in for no real reason. Put the head scratch point down right there. Oh man, the red storm did not quite have what they were looking for here in game number two in this best two out of the series. And we're going to be heading to a game number three, provided the inevitable does happen. Daggett not going to find that nevermore. Continuing to push in right now. 34 minutes and some change have elapsed in this long game. Nevermore not going to find a target again. Sharito popping that curtain call, trying to find some hits on the Daggett. He'll find the crit as well. First next tower down. Daniel wants to a whole world of pain. Slink goes down there. Bullet time coming through. It's not going to matter. Good takes game number two and we are going to be headed to a game three match deciding very very exciting stuff heading our way it's 9 53 eastern time i appreciate everybody sitting with us staying with us I really have to go to the bathroom so i'm gonna request my producer that we could hit that be right back screen <laughs> Is that all good? <laughs> no no response from the from the producer from management upstairs. So you know what? For the time being, we're gonna stick it out, but it looks like Hood may have found the key to success there uh, in trying to pull this reverse sweep off. And the key to success was A teamwork, but B Sharito and Slink putting in some serious effort, some serious energy. Uh, they were really getting it done. Oh, really, really, really getting it done. So, yeah, exciting, exciting things headed our way here for the third match. We're going to see if that does come to fruition here. Uh, well, the third match will come to fruition. We'll see if the reverse comes through. Ethan, you can go to the bathroom. Turn up. Got, got got the word. We will be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom, grab some water. I uh, appreciate everyone sticking around in chat.
Okay. <clears throat> I am back and good. Oh, I'm in? <laughs> we're, we're live live? All right. <laughs> well, welcome back. I guess I should just welcome myself back, chat. Uh, very excited here for our game number three. I just, I just need a little energy. I'm going to go to the bathroom, get some more water. Uh, we are going to be all good. I'm so excited to deliver this game number three to you guys. Uh, I think it's going to be a barn burner. We've seen two games that told two distinctly different stories. Hood, so dominant in that last one. Uh, from really beginning to end, in game one, Rio Grande, it took them a little bit to get going, but once they did, uh, they looked like just an unstoppable machine. Heading into game number three, which teams are we going to see? Because as I said, we saw different teams, really. Game one Hood and game two Hood were just intrinsically different. Game one Red Storm, game two Red Storm, intrinsically different. Who's going to come through in game number three? We're about to find out. Something that's interesting to note is I think that this series has been the most macro mental dependent. Um, so like, welcome back. Missed you. <laughs> oh, man. And what I mean by that is. Um, what, I, what I mean by that is, is that macro mental dependent is that it doesn't feel like the picks and bans have been the big thing in this game. It doesn't feel like it's been the micro play, although the micro play last game by Slink was absolutely phenomenal in that Zed. Uh, we asked some questions coming in and really just came through in a big way, right? Um, these two teams have been taking it. It's such a inch by inch game that the objectives have mattered so much more. The pressure across the map has mattered so much more than each individual lane. And I look to see that trend continue. And I think that that's going to result in the team that picks the slower composition winning. Both these games have been long by any CC standards. Long, long. Going north of 30 minutes in back-to-back -back games is a long series. So uh, mental fortitude is already going to be a little bit in question. But I think the team that picks the easier to execute later game composition will bear more fruit in this final matchup here. We've reached game three in our best two out of three. If you're just joining us, I appreciate you stopping by for this bit of an all-nighter. Uh, we are in for one exciting conclusion to what has already been an exciting series. Let's just let the picks it. Let's, let's just let the first first couple bands speak for themselves. Let's, let's let it breathe. You know, we got the gin. Shaco taken off the board as well. Danny boy, what is on the mind of these players right now? As we said, we've got two teams that both have something to play for tonight. Whether or not that's actually playoffs is irrelevant. Hood is trying to make a miracle happen by forcing a tiebreaker at the bottom of the playoffs. On the other side, Rio Grande is just trying to secure their first win of the season. We talked about at the top of the hour how maybe the most dangerous team, the most dangerous individual, the most dangerous players to play against are those who have nothing to prove. Nothing to, nothing to lose, but everything to prove. Rio Grande has zero expectation coming into this game from everyone else. It's all coming from in here. Whether or not they can tap into that will be the question. Swain, Shaco, Zach, Evelyn Band, and the Kaisa will go. I'm surprised the Zed remains on the table. We'll see if they do take the Zed first, but they won't. So Zed can be taken here if they want Slink back on the Zed because Sl Zed, Slink's Zed was absolutely amazing last game. So we're going to find out if this is a priority pick for this team right now. Taking their sweet time with the first pick. Hood don't want to make any mistakes here as they try to pull off the miracle comeback. The Volley Bear will be locked in, so a little bit of consistency. We saw that in game one. We saw that in game two. King Basher, it's definitely a bit of a comfort pick here. <sighs> Rainbow Madness. Will they pick the Sh uh Not the Shen, excuse me, the Zed. It's not banned. It's still available. It's on the table. We're going to see because that's my eyes just lit up when I saw that Zed made it through picks and bands. And they're going to go with Pantheon here. 
Rainbow Mana scooping up the Pantheon. Usually that will be headed to the bot lane, but we will see. Uh, you never know between these two teams, as we saw today, that Shen jungle. You never really know. Pantheon can definitely be played out of the jungle. Occasionally other lanes as well, but definitely like it the most right now in the meta, playing in that support role. Graves hovered. Ye. It's going to be the Graves locked in. I like that a lot. A lot of damage. A lot of gank ability. We've talked about Graves a lot today. Uh, we've talked about Graves a lot in general in the NECC. So, a very solid pick. Like to see that come through. Up next will be Jedi King selecting. And, oh, they're going to lock in the Ash. A pick that I really like a lot. I don't know why we haven't seen this Ash more today, particularly in this matchup. I think that's a Mwah. That's an A1 pick. I really enjoy it. Alongside the Graves, there's a lot of damage coming through. This is a big, big start of the picks and bans for both sides. Because you just kill the Zed as well. Uh, and Slink's Zed was unstoppable, as we talked about last game. Absolutely unstoppable. Untouchable. Next ban coming through will be the Braum. Proved very strong when paired up with the, with the Jin in game number one. So good to see that they're really thinking about they're being intentional with how they lost in game one. And it definitely was due to Daggett and ASAP's play out of the bot lane. Next ban will be a Rek'Sai coming through. Something that we have seen earlier today. Awaiting on our last two bans before we get into our final round of picks. And it will be the Annie. That goes. Uh, not a real surprise. They haven't selected a mid laner yet. Annie has been the comfort pick for Jedi King. So we're going to see Jedi King on something that isn't Annie for the first time all night long. What's it going to be here, Danny boy? Last ban of the night. And it will be the Lucian biting the dust right there into our final four picks before we head into our match deciding game number three. Sharito, what is it going to be? Big game last game on the gin. Gonna lock in the Caitlyn. Another long range sniper. Looking good. I really enjoy the pick. ASAP, dang it. Going to have back-to-back -back picks that Ari will be heading in the mid lane. Going to be trading with the Ash right there. What's the support pick going to be, Daggett? What do you got on deck? What's on the playlist, baby? Taking their sweet time with this one. No surprise. It will be the Leona coming through. Once again, we've seen Leona in every single match up of every single game of the second match tonight. Broncliffe. Final pick before we head into our match deciding game number three. It's going to be Echo. At least that's the hover. It's going to be Echo. That's got to be Pantheon heading to support then. Echo in the jungle. Volibear top. Zed obviously going to be played mid by Slink. Yep, there is the swap for a second. I thought they were going to hold us. Echo support. And a game deciding three with playoffs on the line. But uh, they do swap it out. It's not the move. Very, very interesting. Both teams. Let's just talk about, once again, the similarities in comps that we've had. Uh, first, we're going to look at the, the Leona. Leona Mordecai is the only things running back here. Only things. Two out of five. Just about half of the champions remaining the same. Danny Boy's played Mordekaiser in both matchups, I believe, today. Actually, the top lane has been unchanged for everything. Uh, both sides all series long, but Mordekaiser and Leona running back. I really like both of these pickups. Uh, actually, no, Leona's the first time today, so just Mordekaiser. Leona's been played twice by Broncliffe. Uh, Mordekaiser being run back, I like it a lot. Danny Boy has performed well. I think just has to be a little more thoughtful about when to alt. That's the only thing, especially in a 2v1 situation. If you're Mordekaiser, you can take on those 2v1s. You just need to ult early on in the fight, kill someone in the Shadow Realm, Death Realm, whatever your poison is, and then go on to the next. King Bastion on the other side played a phenomenal Volley Bear last game. Uh, played a phenomenal Volley Bear game one. He's been so, so potent on the champion. We do see the Zed returning from Slank. Talk about potent. Had an absolute pop-off. 
Uh, those are our two returners there. So just breaking down position by position, starting the top lane. We got Mordekaiser going up against Volibear. Danny Boy playing King Basher, giving the edge to King Basher. We've seen it two games now. The Volibear is just so, so good. King Basher obviously very confident on it. Nothing else to it. Graves going up against Echo. I'm going with the benefit of the doubt to Graves. Phobos has played well. Uh, the Graves just has a little bit more range for me. Uh, Gank's a little easier. The Echo is phenomenal. It's such a dynamic character. Uh, you know, has a lot of that mobility, and the kid has the shield. There's just so many things going on. Talking about the ulti and survivability. Graves just feels like a more known commodity to me. In the mid lane, you got to go with Zed. Slink was the absolute animal last game. And I love the roaming. Slink found themselves in the bot lane, in the bottom side of the map, through River, multiple, multiple times throughout the course of the match, of the game, excuse me, and that's exactly what I want to see. I want to see my mid laner go out and about. I want to see them affecting the game in very tangible ways, especially when they're playing as dominantly as they were last game in the case of Slink. Jedi King, I like the Ari pick. You're matching Zed's mobility when you hit six, right? You're trying to match that in a very, once again, like a, a tangible way. Uh, you can really go jump for jump once you hit six. It just doesn't feel like it's the kind of champion Jedi King wants to play. Jedi King has shown to be strong on these control mages. I can do a lot of damage without moving a lot. You're adding a whole nother aspect in that Jedi King will be having to think about. And I'm not sure it's exactly what Jedi King wants to do. And being out of your comfort zone in a match deciding game number three is not what you want. Down to the bot lane, Ash and Leona going up against Caitlyn and Pantheon. I'm going Caitlyn and Pantheon. I am enamored with this lane. And it's odd because they don't want to do the same thing. Caitlyn really wants to sit back and Pantheon wants to get in there, but... I just think when you combine what Pantheon CC does with Caitlyn's traps, if you can layer those things together and you can weave them in such a way that the CC is long-lasting, I think you can really have a potent lane here and a big chance to get a lot of kills in an absolute hurry going up against this Ash Leona lane. It's solid, right? You have the engage, especially if you can lead with Leona CC and line up a free Ash arrow. Most of the time you're going to get a kill. We'll see if they do have that synergy. I just think that this this Pantheon lane is going to yield so, so much. Uh, that initial C... The, and if it to get... They will make some big drives in spot lane. The other important thing is talk about both sides can CC together. You can't Ash is CC until Ash is 6. And the cooldown is long. And the mana investment is big. Caitlyn and Pantheon, either they want to change the trap uh, and the jump, are both basic abilities. Uh, so it doesn't really matter at uh, what level. They can really just start going at any time. There's no big investment for them. Uh, and that's what my eyes are really on over the course of this final. Once again, if you're sticking around, I really appreciate you so much. Um, such great content being put out here. Such a great series being put on by these two schools I've loaded in. We're gonna wait for the five to sync everything up. I uh, appreciate you guys sticking around in chat. It's been just an absolutely great night. Uh, two phenomenal series. Going late, wouldn't want it any other way. Uh, maybe maybe I just want it with some coffee in my hand. <laughs> That's all. Get a little something in the system to, to keep me up awake and spry. Uh, but yeah, I've loaded in. It's gonna until we can get to five seconds here to get the go ahead from the producer in this exciting game number three. As I said, appreciate the patience, everyone sticking around. We had some technical difficulties early. We threw them as we always do. Everyone's at five. We're gonna get three, two, one, and go. Welcome to game number three, the proving ground. On the red coming out, King Basher, Rainbow Madness, Slink, Shirito, and Bronklyph represent the Blazers hailing from Hood. On the blue side, Danny Boy, Phobos, Jedi King, ASAP, and Daggett will be putting on for the Rio Grande 
Red Storm. Let's get it. Oh my gosh, Drunk. The flash, the counter flash. They do get the CC right off the bat. They are playing no games. Look at Broadlift going in. Might die for this. Arius, the flash, can't get out. First blood already handed over. Hood, oh no, what are you doing? King Badger. One more auto. The flash, they got it. Wow, two free kills handed over. Hood with a sloppy, sloppy start. And we're going to see what the Red Storm can do with that. Not really understanding the aggression from Broncliffe there. You are coming hot off a game to win. So I guess maybe there's this mantra of do everything you can to, to stay hot. But man, I felt a little bit boneheaded to hop in there like that. We're going to see if they are punished throughout the course of the early game or if they can recover. Because I can tell you right now, two kills off the bat is going to hurt. Panning that right over. Rainbow Madness has a slow start there. Coming out as well off the leash. Not going to have as much help as they would like. Not a phenomenal leash. Slink going up against Jedi Knight. They're in the mid lane. I've got my eyes on Jedi Knight and this Ari pick. We're going to see what will come of that. Because we talked about how dominant Slink was on the set in game number one. But it's two minutes in and they're already down a thousand gold. That's the power of giving up two kills right off the bat. Hood, unjustifiably in a position they would rather not be in. We'll see if they can dig themselves out of this hole as the game continues. I think that we're going to have to look to Rainbow Madness to do a lot over the course of this game. Uh, just ganking to getting your lanes ahead after starting down by this much is going to be so vital, so key as Broncliffe looking for an opportunity here. Dropping some CC, didn't end up well last time they tried it. We're gonna see if it ends up better here. Broncliffe gonna lose on this trade, going pretty low. In the go, it'll, if Flash was up, has the heal available, but just going to leave it where it was, starting off with those two assists. Obviously you wish kills onto your ADC, but got one in the jungle. The ADC did get assist from both, so getting that XP, getting that little bit of gold will still be large. That Broglyph solo. You gotta be so careful. Broglyph has to make up for the poor start, not continue to add to it. Played way too zealously, way too aggressively on that level one move, and it's definitely going to come back to bite them. At least it has right now. Still Selling 1k gold right here at just 3 minutes and 40 seconds in the game. Slink looking for something there. Going to land a solid amount of damage, and that's what I'm looking for as well. Slink and Rainbow Man is half to the people to dig them out of this hole. We saw how well Slink can play. Sunlight's coming through. The Zenith Blade will drop the CC. They can't find anything else. Bobo's going to take a tower shot on the top side. We saw how well Slink has played on this Zed. I was talking about how Rainbow Madness could be a big key into getting back into that gold lead, cutting back into it. But yeah, it all starts with those two. Those are the catalysts to the engine, in my humble opinion. But right now, it's the game is just in the hands of the Red Storm. Being up this much gold so early on is such a massive boon to winning. Uh, these first backs are just going to feel massive across the board, especially in that bot lane where you've got two of the assists and one of the kills. You already see that kill money being put to good use in that Graves has tier two jungle item, has two refill bots, has two control wards. So very, very solid start for that Graves. Can't ask for much better. Sherito and Broncliffe just take level at well, cute some uh, one of the pores for Broncliffe, you know, not the great start of level one ASAP, might be caught out all alone here. They get responding in, not going to find any action there. Slink continuing here, both mid laners closing in on hitting level six. Uh, like I said, I think that means a lot for both, probably a little more for Slink with Deathmark just because of the amount of damage that comes through with it. To note, both mid laners do also have Ignite, so I'm expecting some frequent kills there once both do hit level six. They have a little more tools at their disposal. Rainbow Man is coming through. Danny Boy going to be one step ahead, literally 
getting right out of that sticky situation. Rainbow Madness clearing wards. They're all responding up right now. And this is exactly what you want to see out of the Red Storm is that they got that early lead. What are they going to do with it? And they're turning it into neutral objectives that will continue to propel them. Frostwhip going in. Dega may be, may be being a little bit aggressive here. Could collapse the bot side. Uh, that's what I would do. Bring it down to the bot side. You've got the Graves. You've got the mid laner. They're paying for assistance, but not going to follow up on it. Phobos is in the bush. Oh, no. There's the death mark coming through. Jedi King has nowhere to go, but six feet deep. Pop the blast code. Not going to find anything there. And that's exactly what I said. I said I thought I would predict since both have Ignite, once one hits level six, they're going in. Once they have a few more tools they're disposed, there's so much damage. And just like that, the gold lead has been cut to 300. CS across the board, looking pretty much in the favor of Hood outside of the bot lane. Jungle is up, now in favor of them, yeah. Outside of the bot lane, so that's what they're getting back in. Rainbow Man is rotating up to the top side here. Danny Boy, not going to be able to find for Danny Boy pushed back under tower and not farming well under tower at all. King Bash are playing this matchup extremely well. Just really controlling the tempo of this game, really controlling the pace in the top lane. Daggett looking for something here in the mid lane on the slink. Probably not going to find much considering he is only level four. Trying to contend with some level sixes. Doesn't have that solar flare. If they have solar flare, I might say, yeah, go for it. Try to make something happen. But as it sits, that's not enough CC to really make anything significant happen. Shirito, going to take a little bit of damage there. Ooh, Jedi King, maybe in a little bit of trouble. Rainbow Man is coming through, but not going to find enough damage or a CC to get anything significant done. Phobos, I like the idea. Trying to counter gank there. You see responding in the vicinity. Just not able to find any space, any purchase to actually get anything done. Asa. Just farming. Bot lane about to hit level 6 across the board, which is when I also expect things to kind of pop off, heat up. Talk about the layering of the CC from the Ash, Leon, and the bot lane. Also, just Bronco's mobility comes through. Caitlyn does get a little bit more reach in finishing off fights, but it feels like it's just going to turn this actually on a bot lane into what you envision. I think you play this bot lane for the layering of the ultimate abilities, and that's about it. I mean, there's good CC around. Ash is just an absolute house right now, but those two ultis together just feel so, so good. It's so right when layered. Shirito has just hit six. Daggett leaves to some wards in the back of the dragon pit. Cliff, moving up. Shirito is, six. Like, like you said, probably one of the lesser impactful ultis in this bot lane right now, especially when you consider Bash and Leon are definitely one, two for impactful ultis. Uh, yeah, things like CC, but still solid to have. They get looking for an opportunity to engage there, but Shirito just putting so much damage into them. We're all knotted up 12.4k gold apiece right now. So despite the early game blunders, Hood has really stabilized, and the only re way you can see that early game blunder right now is the fact that they are down one drag to none. Echo coming in the bot lane. Here's Rainbow Madness, and they come through. There's the Larian CC, and down goes Perklip. So Rainbow Madness coming in, but it might be too little too late. 2v2 situation in the bot lane. Dag it. Who does drop some DC on the Rainbow Madness, but going to get out A-OK -okay, and Shirito actually going to take some damage into the back on the crack back. What well, looks like it's going to be a very solid opportunity. Turn sour very quick as they are able to pick up a kill in the Bronklift. And ultimately, Rainbow Madness just not on the same page as the rest of the team. They can't find anything there. Oh, no. Shirito. Shirito. Not like this. Shirito. The Flash. The Umbrella. Oh, dang. It stays alive the whole time. Wow. What play by ASAP and Dag in the spotlight. They were the reason that the Red Storm won in game number one, and they are looking like they could be the reason once again here in game number three, trying to close out this series. 
Slink holding in the mid lane has a very dominant CS lead. Up 20 CS and a kill. Big things coming from Slink in the mid lane. Rainbow Madness trying to come through. Can't quite find the CC. Phobos there on the counter gank. Rainbow Madness, there's the charm. That should be a kill. Pops the ulti. Set responding with the death mark. Slink will get ignited, but won't matter. Deathmark will pick up the kill on to Jedi King, and Slink once again having themselves quite the game. Ooh. Slink waiting for it, looking for something on the Phobos. The last Phobos won't walk in that way. Daggett not quite in the vicinity for them to 2v1. Jedi King going down again has to be frustrated right now, just going up against Slink again on the same champion. It really, in my opinion, felt like they should have banned out that Zed. There's no reason in Pixman's not to see what Slink did last game and say, yeah, all right. Uh, obviously, you had a big pop off. We should take you off. You have all the momentum on the champion. A bit of a head scratcher still to me. We're going to see if Slink continues to be as dominant as they were last game on the champion. Because that was absolutely massive that performance. Rainbow Man is looking for something here. Not going to find it anywhere. Not quite the angle they wanted to get in there. Slank, once again, look at this. Look at, oh my gosh, just the bullying. The electricity proc umbrella not going to find its target there for Daggett that Zenith played. Rainbow Man is popping to the back of the pit onto Phobos. Slank is responding. The ulti is blocked by Daggett. Probably would not have killed. Not doing a ton of damage here early, early on. Slink attempted to go in. CC is dropping. That's exactly what he's got to do. But the Ash Arrow is going to go wide left. Leon is going to fall because it's shut down cold. Slink does go down and they get it onto the Ari. Sharito, Bronklith, all that's left. Ooh, the trap. Solid amount of damage. Sharito, Bronklith. 3v2 situation. Dragon putting in some work. Really a 4v2 with Dragon there. Jedi King does pick up two kills in a row. Phobos gets the next one. And wow, the Red Storm. Okay. They're, they're set of the game. That will reveal what Dragon Soul we will have. And it's going to be an Ocean Soul. But they have figured it out. It looked like they were going to throw away that early lead that they were gifted. But all of a sudden, they're back up north of 1k gold looking they're in the driver's seat looking good ultimately is what i just have to say looking very very strong right now they took that fight very patiently they made sure that they killed slink to start things off because it doesn't work the rest of the fight doesn't work if slink isn't dead we'll see if they can continue to kill slink to start off by some drops him with the starfall ASAP. Oh, the flash coming through. Brocklip has been so aggressive this game and is going to pay ultimate price for it once again. Can they find a kill on the Sharito? Ash Alti is not available. That, that Enchanted Crystal. Enchanted Crystal Arrow just not quite available yet. Barely. That would result in a kill for sure. Sharito had no escape from that outside of an expertly timed net toss. Scouting arrow coming through. Arrow is up now for Ash. ASAP. Will they be able to be the hero and open up a kill here? Ooh, seeing the play not find its target. ASAP. Oh, you can toss arrow right there. Oh, I think the hitbox is big enough that it could have just tossed it between the tower and the wall, and it would have hit no matter what. But they decide not to go for it. Slink now responding. We have a bit of a big team fight brewing here. 4v3 in the bot lane, 2v1 in the top lane. Who will win out on these trades? Daggett has ultimate available as well. You gotta watch out for that. Charm coming through. Jedi King on the roam. And they should be able to move Caitlyn as well. Danny Boy in the top window will die as well. So it's a one for one trade at the moment. Phobos, the fadeaway, gets it done. Two for one trade across the map. They're going to be able to claim first tower gold. The red storm from Rio Grande. Look, Ryo Grant, excuse me, looking so good right now here in game number three. We asked which version of this team we would get, and our questions have been answered. We're getting the game one version of Ryo Grant that we saw here earlier on tonight. Charm over the wall, Rainbow, flashing away as Jedi King. 
tried to find something there, but couldn't quite get the damage to fall. Did the charm. Dang it, coming through. Ooh, has to expend the flash to survive, but will walk out absolutely unscathed. Jedi King looking for some action here in the mid lane. Shirito running to mid lane as well. Daggett trying to find an opening for his Zenith Blade. Probably not the wisest decision considering the personnel that are in the vicinity. Bronklyph maybe collapsed in on here. Daggett, this is your time to shine. Drops the Zenith Blade. They're on to Bronklyph. They should be an easy kill. Rainbow Banner thinks from popping it, but won't do so on the backside. Jedi King will be taken down. ASAP picks it up. Mostly damage done by Sling. And that Deathmark ultimate. Dag it. Trying to find an opportunity once again. Always looking for angles. Oh my gosh, so aggressive. It does get the flash out. So ultimately going to be very, very worth it. For the aggression is absolutely rewarded. Talking in here. Oh! E2 Brute! Nobody blocks the ulti. ASAP picks the kill in retribution, but Shirito's ultimate just weaves right through Daggett and ASAP, neither willing to sacrifice their health bars for Phobos, who will be sitting at a gray screen for 10 more seconds. A minute left until this next dragon, and we've got quite some time till our next Baron, but Rift Herald will be on the board for the time being. Slink, turning around. Danny Boy just clearing a ward here on the top side. We've got a conglomeration of people in the mid lane. Everybody stacking up right here. Oh, just popping the ulti. Cake Master going in. Will get charmed. Slink trying to follow up in the back end. ASAP got to be very, very careful. Scarfall coming through. Brocklin may be in a bit of trouble here. Phobos finally joining the party a little late. Jedi King will pick up the kill on the Brocklin. With that numbers advantage, what will they choose to do? Are they just going to keep running at mid? Or are they going to try to pick up that Rift Herald? For the time being, it looks like they're going to pursue this mid tower. Charm coming through. Slink's going to go down. Jedi King pick up another and is having a massive second half of this game. Oh! The Ash Arrow coming through. Bobos, can they find the damage? Oh! The Mega Tower! Dorito kill for virtually nothing there. The mid tower will end up falling, but some great play from Jedi King and ASAP right now. 6-3-3 three and, three and 5 0 oh and 8 respectively. Perfect KDA for this Ash right now. Dragon is looking pretty, pretty free for them. Bobo's rotating back around. Does have this might just to make sure they can secure it. Something that can smooth locally, but better safe than sorry. Bobo scoops up the dragon for the team. The Red Storm up about 3k gold. They're up three dragons, up two towers, and nine kills. Looking so good. And they're just gonna move out of the top side here. Hood is going to be make a very smart play and claim it into objective of their own. But here comes Danny Boy. Rainbow Manus does have Smite. Oh, but here's Phobos, 50-50, who's gonna get it? Oh, the steal, the Red Storm. They are thieving out here. Oh my gosh, all these are dropped, and Phobos will go down, but they do play the neutral objective. Jedi King coming through, one more Arno's gonna pick up the kill, and there's a dump. Trying to make themselves known with a charm coming through. There's the death mark. Slink, what can be done to try to survive? Death mark is going to put the kill on Leona. Jedi King will probably not be able to catch up with Slink here. Wide right goes arrow. That will probably be the end of the pursuit of Slink. Jedi King still pursuing. ASAP, not going to do much there. Just hide behind the wall. Push on the bottom side of the map. And the mid side as well. So, I mean, they're giving up some mid pressure to continue to push on the bot side. Not sure it's the greatest idea, but if they get the tower 100% worth it, get some gold under your belt, get a little bit of XP, get a little bit of map pressure. Jedi King going to go wide left with the charm, going to pay for that with their life. Shut up when we head over to the Echo Rainbow Madness. Ooh, one more auto. ASAP continues the perfect game. Six. Oh, and eight, 133 farm, very easily the most in game. 650 gold, 
rests on Ash head right now. Oh, but here's a Death Mark coming through. That might be enough to just finish off. Starfall, Chernobyl being handed over to Shirito. That's exactly what you wanted on. Phobos running away. Bronklet putting so much work right now. Phobos trying to continue, but the ulti is not going to be enough damage to get, find the kill. Oh, sticking around here though. Phobos, Slink going low. Shirito. Trying to line up an ulti, make take it uh, at a minimum, block it. But not going to come through. The ult. Ace in the hole was available, just couldn't quite get the vision is the assumption. Shirito going to fall back. That was massive. Shirito got to claim all 550 of that shutdown goal. Absolutely massive. Going to bridge the gap between these two teams immensely. The gold lead, I think, was 4K a couple minutes ago. And now we're looking at under 1K. So Hood has brought some serious fight to the second portion of this game. We're 21 and a half minutes in. That means we do have Baron on the board. Next Dragon will be here in just under two minutes. And this will be sold for the Red Storm hailing from Ryo Grand, and they're going in on Jedi King right now. Gonna have no reprieve, no escape. Rockliff comes through, scoops up the kill. Danny Boy getting pushed under tower once again. But yeah, that will be soul for the Red Storm. So something that's massive for them to think about. This Ocean Soul is just so, so good. That uh, it, it would definitely go a large way for helping to close out the game. Dropping Rip Kill from mid lane here. May have been a little bit early, a little rushed, but it will scoop up the tower. So they do have that going to Phobos. Maybe able to find a kill into King Basher here in the top lane. Not looking super likely. King Basher, health bar just a little bit too big, is able to run on out of there. Oh, Slank gonna walk into a 2v1 situation. They did bait the trap, the flash coming through. Tick, tick. Oh, not enough dot damage. Ash Arrow going wide right, not gonna find it. This Ocean Drake will be spawning in 50 seconds. Think about that carefully as they take a fight here on the top lane. Dang it, just shoot the tower. Going to be able to be saved there. They do get another tower. Shoot the time, reset. Who's going over to at full strength? Two K gold lead now present here for Rio Grand, and they are moving as favors for this drag. They've got to be. They're going to be, be able to have first priority here. Uh, King Basher is still at the gray screen, right? So it's a five v four situation. There's no reason they should get priority on this drag, considering the position they're in. But that's like could lose it. Oh my God, Jedi King could lose it. I'm curious. Oh, look at the damage coming through. Jedi King. Oh my goodness, putting in so much work. How aggressively puts it in. Will eventually go down, but that may be able to just secure it for him. Rainbow Madness is so low. Go, go, go. You can just get onto this dragon. Phobos is low, but you've got Hunter in the river. You've got Smite available. You just have to make sure Ezreal can steal. Oh, this, this, this is it right here. Oh, that comes through. Rainbow Madness has no chance to even get close. Hopping in with the Zenith Blade, putting down the hurt in his dagger and may be able to stay alive as well. Oh my goodness, ASAP. There's the double kill. Dagger stays alive. ASAP with a massive Ash Arrow. Wow. Goodness. I definitely said Ezreal. I meant to say Echo in that fight. Rainbow this. Uh, my mistake, folks at home. You know, they both start with E. They're both from uh, Piltover on, I believe. The, the lore supports it. But there is your Ocean Soul for Rio Grande as they are another step closer to claim their very first match win in NECC history. History, folks. Trying to get that done, and they are a step closer by obtaining that soul. 3K gold lead. Leona looking for some blood. They're not going to find it. You know, you know the finger was on the R button. Getting ready to just slang that baby out there. Did it come through? Rainbow Man is just scooping up those Raptors. Goldie feels so big right now. And they're continuing to look for picks right now. Uh, I would look at the top lane. That Volibear is very overextended. You can see because of the wave, 
where Volley Bear is. Yeah, they're gonna pick this up. They might try to find a kill on the King Basher. Not the smartest to go after tank and target that, but if the overextension is there, there's no reason to not go in. Instead, they're going to send two top and three into this river for a 3v3 potential fight. Oh, what a charm through the point. Jedi King. Oh my god, no, the Ash to follow up. ASAP just can't be stopped right now. These two in tandem have so much CC. Oh, and ASAP wisely goes into stasis to avoid the death mark, killing them. They get running out. Oh my gosh, what a combo there. They don't find the second kill, but that Ash are absolutely on point following that beautiful charm. King Basher is going to be in a whole lot of trouble here. Oh, that charm goes wide left. Here comes Slink responding. Jedi King in the area. Kaelin Ulti will come through. So they actually don't find the kill there, despite it seemed like being hand to him. Keep your eyes on the bottom side of the map. ASAP may be able to just push for free here. Mm, doesn't look like it. The rest of the team is backing, resetting, and actually may be in a bit of trouble. Three responding. Not going to push up wisely. Don't have enough vision. ASAP playing it very smart, very slow. And you like to see that from a team that has not yet to get the win. Is ASAP going to go down here to Slink. Finally did find them out. Did probably went back to the tri bush, uh, but didn't push up. So it's it's tend to uh, by recognize probably back in my vision. Let me go search out their agency. Rainbow here, just moving up. We see a reset from the Zed. We're gonna see what Slink, keep your eyes on Slink's inventory. What is Slink gonna be able to buy on this back? Channel recall right now. Oh, but back in the unfortunate time here. We're going in, good to see by Blue Tower is destroyed. Keep Bash dropping all the way over the top. King Jedi going low, not the fight they wanted, but hold on a second. Bobo's rolling up a little bit late. Yeah, not the fight they wanted. Hood gonna come out on top. That's a very prosperous fight for them as they try to regain control of this game. Gold lead has been cut down to somewhere in the neighborhood of 2k now. Jedi King and Phobos look to roam around in that 2v2. They have the damage, they have the CC, and they're gonna set a trap right here. Let's see if King Basher falls into it. Mm, not quite. Thought about it for just a very brief moment, but won't actually mosey on in. The bear trap is the middle match. You can bear keep your eyes on the bottom side of that Pantheon pushing down there alongside the Caitlyn, Sharito, and Broncos going. No one really capable to respond. No one really in the area to respond right now. So this might just be a free tower. They're actually melting. Dang it. Not gonna do much, just attempt to clear waves, and that will be enough to ward off the onslaught just because they don't have enough vision of players across the map. Slink here dropping a little bit of damage, clearing out the bear pit, moving in on that 30 minute mark, 25 right now. Game is getting long, we're getting to the point where uh, a lost team fight is really just a one or lost game. A once one cracks the base or another. We're getting to that point, especially with Eldrick spawning in a minute. Such a great tool to end the game. Both big neutral objectives will be up. ASAP going to go. Fight here with Rainbow Madness. Might go down here. Has to pop the ult in a flash. Rainbow Madness scooping up a massive kill. What can Hood do off the back of that? Phobos has to run. Rainbow Madness may be able to cut them off right here. Oh no, don't run back. Oh no. Slink picks up the kill. Jedi King's alive with Dagon. I don't know if Dagon is long as World Broncliff looking for CC. Slink re engage from Dagon and luckily does not get punished for it. I mean, it's a 5v2 on the bot side. I don't really know what you're doing. Dragon is up in 15 seconds. Phobos won't be up for another 20, so if they burst it down, they have smite, they have the comments, can't be 50-50, but they will have Caitlyn back, so they're not going to take the close action. Slink pop against the Jedi King. Die to the death mark, which does take a substantial amount of damage. Falling back, Daggett looking for a Zenith Blade. He's going to find it there. Let's get the charge. Jedi King. A, a kill. Get some return on the crack back. Solid. Elder Drag is alive. We do see Phobos picking and picking and picking it up. 
Both teams rotating around it. They're dancing. Who will be making the first move on this Elder Egg? That is the real question right here. Uh, if you're... Ooh, ooh, they inherently miss wide left there with the charm. If you are the Red Storm, I don't think there's a reason to not aggro it right here because it will just start dumping some damage. Like, just, just shoot it once or hit something. Toss off the wall. That builds up over time. It definitely matters over time. Daggett looking for a big ulti here. Could be massive. And here it is. The fight has started. Ulti over the top of the Volibear King. Bass is going to go down to start the fight. Oh, and Ash Arrow right into Slink. Massive, massive start for the Red Storm. They're not done yet. Double kill following the charm. Bobos following up on Bronzlift. Double kill for them as well. Elder Jack should be as good as theirs. ASAP did not start that fight, but was really the one with the most vital part, in my opinion. If Zed presses R, Zed, yeah, if Zed presses R on to Ash, it's over. That's it. Deathmark will probably just kill Ash outright with the rest of the combo. The perfect timing of that Ash ulti, that that crystal arrow, was absolutely amazing. Uh, it, it just really locked down the Zed, allowed Ash to stay alive for a group to fight with the rest of it. They do get the Elder Egg. Here. And oh, Madness. Is there a miracle in you yet? No, it doesn't even exist. Probably wise. I'm gonna get the power recalls here. Quick reset. Rainbow Madness looking for something. Not going to find anybody. All chilling back at the crib, buying items, 6K gold lead, just a little more than a 6K gold lead right now. Crouching in a 7K gold lead. Absolutely massive stuff for Rio Grande. The Red Storm looking so good right now. 32 and a half minutes into this game. Ah, it's, it's gonna be tough for Hood to climb out of this hole, but they are battling. And it is close. They are close on many of these fights. They just have to iron out their positioning, I think, going into the fights. What does your pre-fight look like? And I think they can really make some noise down the stretch here of this game. But they've got to figure it out and figure it out in a hurry. Blue Tower will go down there. And they're just pushing mid. There's no reason not to. Uh, you can't lose a team fight really when you've got both Elder and Baron Buffets. It's, uh, it's a pretty win-win, easy scenario. As long as you don't make a big mistake, and I doubt they will. They've played so well in this game number three. As I said, very much shades of game one for Rio Grande as they continue to see here. Oh, man, something. I think they should be more bold. They just, they really just have to keep persevering. There's not much that will take you down when you are double buffed out, especially considering you have all your ultimate abilities available right now, minus the Graves. Uh, really, Danny Boy should be taking Zed out of the fight, and then just have a heyday with the rest of it. And they're starting to see here on the first inhibitor in the mid lane. They will have it. They have two caddies. No reason to not keep going, at least until those caddies die. Ooh, we'll sleep for something a little more. And the season gun, the Nexus Tower, is this it? Can they finally get their first win? Going in. Back to, oh, what a from the back line. This could be it. Ryo Grand, the Red Storm. Oh, they win the team fight. It looks like they're going to win more than that. Triple kill. Rainbow Madness burning in the base. They're on the final Nexus Tower. ASAP picks it up. Slink is all that's left. And I don't think it'll be enough. The curse is broken. Ryo Grand are winners for the first time in the NECC. Better late than never. Mm. The Red Storm persevere. They get there and they make a little bit of program history getting their first win in the NECC. Their first match win while spoiling some playoff dreams in the process. It's 1046 Eastern time. If you stuck around and chat, first of all, big props to you. Second of all, get some sleep after this, all right? I got homework to do. I can't go to bed for another hour or two, but each and every one of you watching along, definitely get some sleep. 
but go to bed with the knowledge that you witnessed conference history tonight. You witnessed program history as the Red Storm finally, finally summit that last peak. They get the dub in the last week of the regular season, and it's the first of program history. They did it in dramatic fashion as well. Uh, Just all the keys for a great series here. Jedi King got to be the MVP of the day for Rio Grande. 16, 6, and 6 on that last game. Although, do not devalue what ASAP did over the course of those two wins. Two absolutely massive performances. If you aren't already following, drop a follow. Hit that bell. You'll know when we're live. The playoffs are coming up. Head over to at NECC Games. Get all of the information on that. But ultimately, that's all we have time for tonight. Really glad that you guys stuck around to witness that history. Witness the ending of that game. There's so much playoff competition I'm so excited for coming up. And you definitely don't want to miss it. So until next time, I've been Ethan Dolan. Hope you guys have a blessed week.